Hi guys. I would like to invite you to the audiobook service where we upload more than 300 hours of different audiobooks a week, link in details in the video description. Chapter, 1. Um. Where is this? The black-haired boy looked around with confusion on his face. The starry night sky, the brightly lit streets, everything around him was extremely strange to the boy. I don't recognize the place. I clearly remember. I was lying on the bed playing cards before. How did I end up here in the blink of an eye? The young man grabbed his black hair hard and tried hard to recall his previous memories. After thinking hard about his memories, all the boy could remember was that when he was playing YGO cards in bed, he vaguely saw a strange purple light flashing on the screen of his mobile phone. The boy's name is Anji Kuen. He is 17 years old. He comes from an ordinary family. He doesn't smoke, drink, or perm his hair. He doesn't have any special quirks like a certain Mr. Kira. His only hobby is to stay at home and play cards on the YGO software. Could it be that? I have traveled through time. Anji Kuen was silent for a moment, and finally came to a very incredible conclusion, he seemed to have traveled through time. Obviously I wasn't hit by a car or blown up, yet I just traveled through time in such a simple way. But where is this place? Which show did I travel to? Or is it an original world? Too many doubts and puzzlements gave Anji Kuen a headache. But just when Anji Kuen felt very confused, a man with dark blonde hair ran past Anji Kuen. Dark blue clothes, hair that looks like a killer. And a huge silver box in the opponent's hand. Is that? Junuchi Katsuya. Through the opponent's highly identifiable hair, and Shibakuen instantly recognized the opponent's true identity, Junichi Kitsuya, the second male character of Yu-Gi-Oh! DM. And considering that the killer hairstyle is not something that ordinary people can control, and Shibakuen feels that the possibility of the opponent being Junichi Kitsuya is quite high. What if that's Junichi Kitsuya? This is. Dominino City. Is that the area where Dual City takes place? After passing through the city, Anji Kuen seemed to know where his current location was. And the silver box that Junuchi is holding in his hand. It should contain the dual disc, right? This means that. Dual city or the battle for the god card is about to begin. And Shiba Kuen continues to discover more useful information through the details of Junuchi. The DM period of Yu-Gi-Oh! Was a period where banned cards were flying everywhere and various rules were not very perfect. During this period, you could even see such divine cards as the Baoja drop from the sky and the Pot of Desire. Okay. It's great. It's great to travel to the world of Yu-Gi-Oh! I just don't know if there are any systematic benefits for me to travel to this world. Forget it, don't think about it for now. The most urgent thing now is to catch up to Junuchi quickly, see if he is really Junuchi, and let him take another route. This road is full of dangers. With this thought in mind, Anji Kuen, who was full of excitement, stopped wasting time and took steps to pursue the city away from him. In Anshiba Kuen's memory, the reason why Junuchi left in such a hurry seemed to be that his sister was about to undergo surgery. He had to go to the hospital quickly to accompany her, but on the way to the hospital, Junuchi was taken care of by someone from the Guru's group. In the end, in order to get rid of the siege, Junuchi had a duel with him. But Junuchi was eventually defeated by the people of the Guru's group using pirated five corpses of Lao Ai, and the ace in his hand, the red-eyed black dragon, was also taken away. Now, since I, an outsider in the drama, have traveled to this time period and have the ability to change it, I must revise such a not-so-good plot. With this thought in mind, Anji Kuen quickened his pace a little more. Hey! It's indeed within the castle. He's really handsome, but... I'm still late. I'm already surrounded by gurus. Following the direction Junuchi walked in previously, Anji Kuen quickly found Junuchi in the alley at the corner, hiding behind the corner and peeking quietly. At this time, Junuchi was dueling with a man in black robes. Judging from the several monsters that appeared on both sides, and Shiba Kuen estimated that the duel between the two had already started for some time. Now, there are a Black Panther warrior with an attack power of 2000 and a giant axe raider with an attack power of 1700 on the field in the city. 
the basic score remains at 4,000 points, while the opponent's member of the Grus group has only won on the field with a defense power of 2,000. The giant rock soldier only had 600 health points left. In this duel, it looked like Janucci had crushed the opponent, and the opponent's health was already like a candle in the wind. But Ung Shi Kun, who has read the original plot, knows that this duel in the city is on the verge of failure. Because the opponent has collected the four parts of the sealed exodia in his hands. As long as he gets the last part, he can win the game directly because of Exodia's special victory method. And Janucci has no way to stop him, and his next draw is just if you have a full bond with him, you can eliminate the red-eyed black dragon with 2000 anti-rock giant soldiers on the opposite side. Looking at this scene, Janucci should be losing soon. Let me think about it. Is there anything else I can do to help Janucci? Ung Shi Kuen did not blindly choose to intervene directly in the battle between Gurus and Janucci to kill people, but continued to hide around the corner and watch quietly. Sigh. If I had known earlier, I should have put the physical card set I bought on me before I traveled through time. Maybe I could have stayed in this world. I really hope that at this time, I can be given a system plug-in from the sky and give me a set of cards, so that I can help Janucci. Thinking of this, Anji Kuen sighed helplessly. Unexpectedly, as soon as he traveled to this dream world of Yu-Gi-Oh! A tragedy that he was unable to prevent appeared before his eyes. To be honest, this feeling is really not good. As if in response to Anji Kuen, a purple gem suddenly appeared in front of Anji Kuen's neck, but then quickly disappeared. Anji Kuen himself did not notice the sudden appearance and sudden disappearance of his neck. Gem. What's going on? What is this? Ah, uh, wait. Suddenly, Enzhijin was surprised to find that a large area of darkness extended from under his feet, and continued to spread at an alarming speed. Finally, before Anji Kuen could make any more noise, the darkness stretched out like a wild beast and swallowed Anji Kuen whole in one gulp. But from the outside, there are no special changes in Anji Kuen. Has he been swallowed up by the sudden darkness? He still maintains his hiding posture at the corner as before. Eh. Where is this? Anji Kuen, who was swallowed up by the darkness, looked around in a panic. He was surrounded by darkness, like a chaotic and unopened world. There was no sky, no earth, and no sound. There was only darkness, darkness and more darkness. Suddenly, a purple light suddenly appeared in the darkness. The purple light kept flashing at an ultra-high frequency, and every time the purple light flashed, the light it emitted became brighter. Eventually, the entire darkness was illuminated by this purple light. After the light faded, a purple, crystal-like beautiful gem floated quietly in front of Anji Kuen. Is this a gem? Looking at the beautiful gem in front of me gave me an extremely strong sense of attraction. Anji Kuen's fear that originally arose from coming to this dark space has slowly returned to calm. The strong attraction generated by the gem also made Anji Kuen uncontrollably stretch out his hand, slowly reaching towards the gem floating in midair. And placed his hand on the purple on top of gems. Chapter, 2. Is it called a fusion gem? Anji Kuen rubbed his aching head, carefully digesting the information that appeared out of thin air in his mind, and murmured to himself. Just after he put his hand on the gem, the strange purple gem called Fusion Gem in front of him immediately transmitted a large amount of information to him. It turns out that it was you who took me to this Yu-Gi-Oh world. Through the information transmitted to him by the Fusion Gem, Anji Kuen also understood that the culprit that caused him to travel through time was the Fusion Gem in front of him. The dark space he is now in is actually the internal space of the Fusion Gem. The time here is not consistent with the outside. No matter how long he stays here, it is only a moment outside. Moreover, he can also recite silently in his heart. Enter and leave, and freely enter and exit the inner space of the fusion gem at will. In addition to these questions, Anji Kuen also learned some information about this fusion gem. Fusion gems, as the name suggests, are gems that symbolize the fusion summoning method in Yu-Gi-Oh! In addition to fusion gems, there are five gems, Ritual Gems, Synchronic Gems, Super Gems, Pendulum Gems, and Connection Gems. 
These six gems respectively symbolize the six summoning methods in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh. The six gems jointly maintain the existence of each Yu-Gi-Oh world. However, due to some unknown special reason, the six gems suddenly felt a fatal danger, so in order to save their lives, they hid in each Yu-Gi-Oh world. As for what this unknown special reason is, Anji Kuen said helplessly that the fusion gem did not mention it in the message to him, so he didn't know what it was. The reason you took me through time. Is that you think I can protect it? Anji Kuen was actually confused as to why the fusion gem took him through time because he thought he could protect it. He is just an ordinary, ordinary student. Why does this gem feel that he has the ability to protect it? Regarding this question, the fusion gem also flashed and gave Ansigen a confusing and confusing answer, because the miracle of fusion chose you. I admit that I am a person who likes fusion. My main deck used to be the magic toy deck, but... What does it mean that the miracle of fusion chose me? But this time, the fusion gem did not make any reaction or answer, but continued to maintain its floating posture in place. Okay. If you don't answer me, forget it. Then, let's go straight to the topic, fusion gems do you have anything like a novice gift pack? Seeing that there was no reaction from the fusion gem, Anji Kuen had no choice but to bury the doubts and confusion in his heart for the time being, and changed to another very important issue, the deck. After hearing Anji Kuen's words, the fusion gem flashed symbolically a few times, seeming to be thinking about something. Soon, with the purple light of the fusion gem, a thick deck of cards slowly flew out from the fusion gem, and automatically flew towards Anji Kuen. This. This is. It's a predatory plant. Anji Kuen stretched out his hand to catch the deck flying toward him. After seeing the first card at the top of the deck, Anji Kuen couldn't help but exclaimed. The first card that appears in front of Anshiba is the three-pointed hellflower god of the predatory plant Aerily Fine. The novice gift pack is actually a predatory plant. It is indeed a fusion gem. It is different from the treatment given by those systems. The boss is awesome. Anji Kuen carefully looked through each card in the deck. In addition to the original predatory plant cards, there were also several predatory plant cards that appeared in the anime. Several words of unspeakable emotion finally came out. It turned into a simple but majestic word, the boss is grand. Prey Plant, the original controller is the deck series used by Sakaki Yuri, a duelist from the fusion dimension in Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc V. The monsters in this family are basically plant type with dark attributes, and most of their effects are related to prey counters. It is a very flexible and powerful deck. Apart from the magic toy deck, Anji Kuen's second favorite deck is this set of predatory plants. For some reason, it's because the monsters that prey on plants are not only handsome but also very cute. But. Why does this set of predatory plants not have the two cards of the Lusty Poison Fusion Dragon and the Hungry Poison Fusion Dragon? I can understand without the Greenlocked Dragon and Anaconda. After all, it can't be used in the DM era. Is it because. Those two cards are special. I haven't gained their approval yet. However, Anji Kuen also discovered the three predatory plant brothers who disappeared in the entire deck. Considering the performance and background of the Hungry Poison Fusion Dragon in the animation plot, Anji Kuen can only be used as a must to use the Hungry Venom Fusion Dragon. To gain its approval, the same goes for the Lust Poison Fusion Dragon. After all, the Lust Poison Fusion Dragon is the evolution of the Hunger Poison Fusion Dragon. That's all, even without Brother Brother Hunger Poison Fusion Dragon and Brother Brother Desire Venom Fusion Dragon. Predatory plants can still run rampant in the DM era. Okay, thank you to the boss of Fusion Gem for the deck. I'm leaving too. I have to use predatory plants to teach those people in the Grus group how to behave and let them feel the pain. Just slip away. Saying this, Mr. Anji couldn't hold back his excitement, and immediately left silently in his heart, leaving the inner space of the fused gem. After Anji Kuen left the interior of the fusion gem, the originally bright fusion gem suddenly dimmed as if relieved, and the surrounding scene illuminated by the fusion gem fell into deep darkness again. Came back. Anji Kuen seemed to be waking up from a dream, constantly reviewing his surroundings. When he confirmed that the surroundings were no longer the scary darkness, 
but the familiar brightly lit streets, Anjikuen after taking a breath, I silently thought that quitting seemed to be effective. Looking back at Junuchi's side, and Shibakuen discovered that Junuchi had summoned his ace, the Red Ice Black Dragon, and successfully eliminated the giant rock soldiers on Guru's field. After getting rid of the giant rock soldiers, Junuchi immediately ended his turn. The turn came to the opposite side, Guru's. As if he knew what he could hit next, Guru's glanced at Junuchi with a proud smile, then slowly pulled a card from the deck, and showed the drawn card to Junuchi for viewing the right foot of the sealed one. As Gurus placed all five corpses in his hands on the dual plate, Exodia's huge body broke through the seal of the pentagram and appeared on Guru's field out of thin air. Exodia fired a yellow turtle Qigong cannon, and all the monsters on the field in the city were exploded into yellow light particles that filled the sky, and flew away in the wind. The basic points on the dual board in the castle also began to drop rapidly at this time, from the original high number of 4000 to the number zero. Everything that happened here showed a result that was unbelievable for Junuchi, that is. He had lost this duel. Chapter, 3 How is it possible? It's actually Exodia. I didn't expect that besides games. There would be others who would have Lyaka like Exodia. Junuchi looked at the five cards of Exodia displayed in Guru's hand with a face full of shock, and exclaimed in disbelief. He really couldn't believe that a super rare card like Exodia could be used by the other party. We'll have it. In Junuchi's memory, he had only seen a complete set of Lyaka like Exodia in the hands of his good friend Muto Yugi. But. It's a pity that the set of Exodia owned by the game was all thrown into the sea by that hateful bastard Feather Moth. In the end, there were only two left. You haven't realized it yet. That's because the Exodia held by the other party are not real. They are all fake cards copied by the Guru's group. The real one's Exodia is still sleeping at the bottom of the sea. Not only that, if I remember correctly, there should be three sets of Exodia in the opponent's deck. Alas, I won't be afraid of being stuck with three sets of Exodia. Seeing Junuchi's defeat and knowing that Guru's was going to grab Junuchi's jam next, Anjikuen stopped waiting and slowly walked out from the corner with slow steps. Who? The sudden appearance of Anjikuen obviously shocked the people in the city and the Guru's, and the most shocked among them were the three Guru's hunters. How do you know that there are three sets of Exodia in my deck? And you also know our true identities. Who are you? The Gruss hunter looked at Anji Kuen who jumped out of nowhere, his eyes full of vigilance. My true identity? This is not important. I am just an ordinary duelist passing by. And Shiba Kuen scratched his black hair and skillfully used a famous quote from a certain Cayman rider, invisibly showing off his coolness. And you, the hunters of the Guru's group, only need to know one thing. That is, I will defeat you one by one. The red-eyed black dragon in the city cannot be left to you. Unshi Kuen ignored the three gurus, but walked straight to Junuchi, and pulled Junuchi up from the ground who looked confused. Ah, thank you. Although Junuchi didn't know why the other party knew his name, he politely said thank you to Ambakuen for pulling him up from the ground. TSK, it turns out that I am in the same group with this guy. Now that he knows that my strategy is to gather all Exodia, he still dares to challenge me so confidently. How arrogant. Okay. I accept it. That's it. Let me get another rare Leah card. Hearing this, the Gruss Hunter would be really stupid if he didn't understand. This guy who jumped out of nowhere was clearly in the same group as Junuchi, and he came specially to help Junuchi retrieve the true red-eyed black dragon. Of course, Guru's Hunter accepted the challenge from Lord Anji he could get an extra rare Lyaka through the duel. Who wouldn't want to accept such a good thing? As for the possibility of rollover. Joke. I am an Exodia deck. What could he use to fight me? Gurus, who has great confidence in his Exodia deck, does not think that Angshi Kuen, a kid who jumped out of nowhere, can defeat him. Well. Then let's start the duel. Ah. Just when Anji Kuen was firing on all cylinders and was about to take out his deck for an overwhelming duel with Gruss Hunter. 
Anji Kuen suddenly remembered something very important and was about to start from the hand that took out the predatory plant deck in my pocket paused for a moment. The fusion gem. Seems to be only given to the deck, not the dual disc to myself. This wave is really embarrassing. Within the city. Anji Kuen slowly turned his head, looked straight at Junichi, and whispered softly to Junichi. Ah. What, what's wrong? Junichi, who noticed Anshiba Kuen's direct gaze, asked in confusion. Lend me your dual disc for a while and return it to you after the fight. With the attitude that as long as you are not embarrassed, others will be embarrassed. And Shibakuen stretched out his hand to Junichi without blushing and asked for the dual disc. You. Don't even have a dual disc. It seems that I'm overthinking it. You're just a lascivious duelist who's not even qualified to receive a dual disc for free. The guru's hunter breathed a sigh of relief. At first, he thought Anjikuen was some top duelist he didn't recognize, but now he couldn't even take out a dual plate. He was definitely not a great duelist. Don't say much. I'm sure I'll win this one. Oh oh oh, no problem, here it is. After Junichi heard this, although he was very surprised in his heart, he quickly took out his deck from the dual plate, removed the dual plate and handed it to Anshibakuen. Stop talking nonsense, you will know later whether I am a duelist or not. Let's duel. And Shibakuen took the dual plate from Junichi, and after observing the basic style of the dual plate, he firmly wore the dual plate on his arm. And took out the fusion gem for himself from his pocket prey plants card set, inserted into the slot of the dual plate. Wearing the dual disc also filled and Shibakuen's heart with excitement. After all, this is what every Yu-Gi-Oh fan dreams of. GGG. Then come on. I will accept your Liaka without any courtesy. Ha ha ha. The guru's hunter laughed wildly a few times, and then activated the dual disc he wore on his arm, preparing for a duel. Although I don't know who you are, you must be careful. The other party is using Exodia. At this time, Junichi shouted and sent his blessing to Lord Anji. Duel. X2. As the two of them spoke in unison, and Shibakuen's first duel in the world of Yu-Gi-Oh! DM officially began. It's up to you to attack first. Lord Anji did not seize the first strike, but gave up the right to strike first to the opposite Guru's hunter. Because considering that the opponent is using Exodia, in order to collect five Exodia parts, he will definitely summon a defensive monster to defend. The one I use is Predatory Plants. In this situation, the Predatory Plant deck is the best solution to use the back attack. Not only can you find a way to stack prey counters on the monsters summoned by the opponent to facilitate your subsequent operations. You can also directly use the monsters on the opponent's field as your own fusion materials for fusion summoning. That's why Anji Kuen chose to give the first attack to the opposite Grus Hunter at this time. Chapter, 4 My turn. Draw a card. Jie Jie, what a good card. Grus Hunter happily accepted the first strike and quickly drew five initial cards from the deck. Looking at the five cards in his hand, Grus Hunter couldn't help but let out a weird laugh. Because, there are five parts of Exodia. He drew three whole parts the first time. There are only two parts left before he can summon the invincible Exodia. Activate the magic card, Pot of Desire, and I can draw two cards from the deck. The Pot of Lust, the forbidden card for 10,000 years. I really want it. Anji Kuen was really greedy when he saw the Pot of Desire shot by Guru's Hunter. This can't be blamed on Anji Kuen, it's really because the Pot of Desire card is too tempting. Compared to the A of Cups card, although you can draw two cards, it is very unstable. If you are not lucky, you will a card that can turn into a gift of lust, the pot of lust card is a sure bet. What a good card. I summon soul tiger in defense position. Then cover two cards. End the turn. Grus hunter, who drew two cards from the deck, immediately summoned the monster soul tiger, which is known for its defensive power, and covered the two cards to end his turn. Soul Tiger slash 4 stars, Earth Orcs, attack 0 slash defense 2100. He he he, it's your turn. The Soul Tiger's defense is as high as 2100. 
It is definitely an insurmountable wall. Gruss Hunter smiled sinisterly. Not only did he have monsters with extremely high defense on his field, but he also had two very powerful and rare cover cards. The two cover cards are Burrow and Explode Armor, which can definitely block the opponent's action of summoning monsters. The defense power is actually 2100. Only the red-eyed black dragon in my deck can defeat this monster. On the side, Janucci looked at the high attack monster summoned by Gruss Hunter. He was shocked and swallowed his saliva. We must win. While being surprised, Janucci was also secretly cheering and Shibakuan in his heart. It's my turn, draw cards, soul tiger and two unknown cover cards. I think about it, killing it in one round shouldn't be a problem. Anji Kuan looked at the card in his hand, then at the layout of the Gruss Hunter field. He thought about it in his mind, and finally came to the conclusion that one kill shouldn't be a big problem. The magic card activates and the predation activity occurs. I can special summon a predation plant monster from my hand, and add a predation card other than the predation activity from the deck to my hand. I special summon the predatory plant flytrap spinosaurus from the card in my hand to the field, and retrieve the predatory plant fongtooth pagoda flower from the deck. Prey plant venus flytrap spinosaurus slash 4 stars dark plant type slash attack 1800 slash defense 0 slash effect, if this card is summoned or special summoned successfully, target one face-up monster on the opponent's field. To activate, place a prey counter on that monster, and the level of the 2 star or higher monster with a prey counter placed becomes 1 star. The monster looks like a spinosaurus, but has a weird giant flytrap on its back. It roars and appears on the field. The terrifying appearance of the flytrap Spinosaurus immediately frightened the three Gruss hunters present and Janucci who was watching the show. What kind of monster is this? There's such a big Venus flytrap growing on its back. It looks a bit scary, and I'm getting goosebumps. It's actually a monster I've never seen before. But. The appearance of this monster. Is terrifying. There was more or less a strong sense of disgust towards the flytrap Spinosaurus in the words of several people. Roar. As if he heard the dislike of several people towards him, the flytrap Spinosaurus once again let out a roar toward the sky to vent his displeasure. Huh. Really? I think the predatory plants look pretty good. Anji Kuen scratched his black hair in confusion. He really thought the predatory plants were quite handsome. The collection of animals and plants also gave people an unexpected design aesthetic, beautiful yet cruel. The effect of the predatory plant Venus flytrap and Spinosaurus puts a prey indicator on the soul tiger on your field. Following Anji Kuen's words, a purple seed with sharp teeth and a sharp mouth ejected from the Venus flytrap behind Spinosaurus. After the seed landed on the soul tiger's back, he immediately bit the soul tiger firmly with his fangs and sharp mouth. No matter how much the soul tiger swung his body to try to get rid of it, it was all to no avail. Soul tiger slash prey indicator, 1 to 1 star. Next, I will release the monster soul tiger with a prey indicator on your field as a sacrifice. Special summon. Prey plant fanged fish pagoda flower. The soul tiger's blue body beating like flames disappeared in place together with the purple seeds on its back. What followed was a monster that looked like a large, flat pine cone, but had several bloody mouths and dozens of eyeballs on its body. If the previous Venus flytrap Spinosaurus was scary looking, then the sharp-toothed fish pagoda flower that appeared at this time would make people crazy. A big pine cone with a mouth and bloodshot eyes, no matter how you look at it, it is something that will make people go crazy, right? Prey plant fanged fish pagoda flower slash 6 stars dark plant type slash attack 2000 slash defense 100 slash effect, if this card liberates one monster on the opponent's field that only has a prey counter placed on it, it can be removed from the hand. Special summons. What? You actually used the monsters on my field as sacrifices to summon monsters for yourself? Gurus, who had never seen anything like this before, was stunned. Using the monsters on the opponent's field as sacrifices for his own monsters was something he had never heard of before. This also caused Guru's hunter to become confused. Time actually forgot to activate the coverage card in his backcourt, cave. I haven't done any normal summons this turn. 
I usually summon the predatory plant Bee Orchid Scorpion. The effect of Bee Orchid Scorpion sends a monster card to the grave, and special summons one predatory plant monster other than predatory plant Bee Orchid Scorpion from the deck. Discard a card, and I will special summon the predatory plant Drosra Lizard in the deck to the field. Anji Kuen looked at the cards in his hand, thought for a moment, and summoned a scorpion monster with a bee orchid on its tail, the bee orchid scorpion, to his field. And at the same time as the summon, he activated the effect of the bee orchid scorpion, summoning a sundew lizard monster with sundews all over its body to the field. Predator plant bee orchid scorpion slash 3 stars dark plant type slash attack 1200 slash defense 800 slash effect, when this card is summoned or special summoned successfully, it can only be activated by sending one monster from your hand to the graveyard. The deck special summons one predatory plant monster other than predatory plant bee orchid scorpion. Prey plant sundew lizard slash 2 stars dark plant type slash attack 600 slash defense 200 slash effect, as long as this card exists in the monster area, you will use it as a fusion material for monsters with prey counters placed on it. Properties are used as dark properties. Ha ha ha. I finally waited. At this moment, I activate the covered trap card. Fall into the hole. When the opponent successfully summons a monster with an attack power of 1000 or more, activate it with that monster as the target. Monsters with an attack power of 1000 or more are destroyed directly. The Gruss Hunter, who had waited for a long time and finally waited for Anji Kuen to summon the monster again, suddenly laughed, and then decisively opened one of the two cover cards in his backfield, Falling Cave. I saw that before the newly summoned Bee Orchid Scorpion on Anji Jun's field had warmed up, a bottomless pit suddenly appeared at his feet. The Bee Orchid Scorpion couldn't react and fell directly into it, disappearing without a trace. The Drosra Lizard, on the other hand, came a step too late, so it did not slip and fall into the pit together with the Orchid Scorpion and successfully escaped the disaster. Is the first covering card a whole sinking card? It is indeed a card that fits this era, but unfortunately, whole sinking is a second speed destruction effect and does not affect the processing of monster induction effects. Lord Anji saw that the predatory plant bee orchid scorpion was destroyed by the trap card revealed by the opponent, but he was not too surprised. It is enough that the Drosra lizard can be successfully summoned. The value of the bee orchid scorpion has been fully utilized, and it can be sent to the sky as a great hero. Chen Gong Face Chapter 5 The effect of the predatory plant Drosera is activated. I can use this card and monsters in my hand or on the field as fusion materials to summon. I fusion summon the predatory plant Drosera and the predatory Venus flytrap Spinosaurus on my field. Luring insects with seductive fragrance. Two seeds of chaos growing in hell. Now. Become one here. Fusion summons. Appear. The forbidden flower that blooms alone and silently. The predatory plant chimera. Anji Kuen yelled out a summoning word that was full of Chunyai atmosphere without any sense of shame. Although the summoning word was a little bit chubby, Anji Kuen's heart was full of joy at this time, and every word was refreshing. This is the real duel. In the merging whirlpool, the figures of two plant predating monsters turned into a blue and a yellow radiance and kept intertwining with each other. The golden radiance burst out, and two thick green vines first stretched out from the vortex, and then a huge overlord flower plant also crawled out of the merging vortex. Under the beautiful flowers of the brightly colored Rafflesia, there are many dangers hidden. The predatory organ with its bloody mouth open constantly indicates the danger of this monster to the people around it. Predatory plant chimera slash 7 stars dark plant family slash attack 2500 slash defense 2000. You don't need a fusion card to perform a fusion summon. And this fusion monster has an attack power of 2500. Looking at the huge Rafflesia plant on Anji Jun's field, Gruss Hunter's eyes widened in surprise. But. Even a monster with super high attack power. It can't get past the explosive armor in my backcourt. Surprised, the Gruss Hunter breathed a sigh of relief when he thought that there was also an explosive armor in his backcourt. But what this Gruss Hunter doesn't know is. A card like exploding armor can never be successfully activated. Attack power 2500. 
The attack power is actually higher than the red-eyed black dragon. So powerful. This is the opinion and speech of Janucci, who has not seen much of the world. The magic card activates, prey grafting. Through the effect of this card, I can special summon one predatory plant monster in my graveyard. I will special summon the predatory plant flytrap Spinosaurus in the graveyard to the field again. Next, let's enter the combat stage. The predatory plant chimera will directly attack the player. The huge chimera flower immediately extended several of its vines and drew them towards the body of the guru's hunter, which was wrapped in a black robe. Activate the trap card. Explode the armor. When the opponent's monster declares an attack, destroy the attacking monster. Seeing that something was not going well, Gurus immediately opened the explosive armor covering his backfield. As the explosive armor was activated, the green vines extending from the Chimera Reflesia began to gradually disintegrate and explode. It turns out it's about exploding armor. It's useless. The quick attack magic card in my hand, the predatory species, is fused. I fuse the predatory plant Chimera Reflesia and the predatory plant Venus Flytrap Spinosaurus on the field. Fusion. Summon. Come again. Chimera Flower. Anji Kuen, who saw that the last card covered by his opponent was Armor Explosion, shook his head helplessly and activated another card in his hand, Predator Tyrant Fusion. As we all know, when a gecko is threatened, it will cut off its tail and regenerate to protect itself. At this time, the Chimera Reflesia also learned from the gecko's survival method, quickly opening its predatory organs and biting off its own exploded vines. Although there are a large amount of green juice spurted out, but it successfully prevented the explosion from spreading. But the act of breaking contact also caused great pain to the Chimera Flower, causing the Chimera Flower to continuously twist its fat body because of the pain. It finally chose to vent all its anger on Gurus on the opposite side. The thick green vines whipped the guru's hunter's hand mercilessly, and the predatory organ full of fangs also stretched out, biting the guru's tightly. Russ Hunter, gurus couldn't help but let out a wail of pain, half knelt on the ground, and the cards in his hand fell to the ground. It's not over yet, give him the final blow, prey on the plant fongfish stupa flower. Launch a direct attack. Gruss Hunter LP, 40000. The health value completely returned to zero, and the projector of the chimera flower that was still biting the guru hunter's body disappeared, and the guru hunter seemed to be relieved, with an unobvious smile, he fell weakly to the ground. And finally his head hit the ground, making a thumping sound that he knew was a good head. Ha, huh, the immersive duel is really good, but the opponent is still too weak, and there are still many usable cards in my hand that I have no time to use. Anji Kuen couldn't help but feel a little unfinished, and looked at the remaining unused cards in his hand with great pity. You actually won so quickly. Janucci was still a bit unresponsive to this duel that ended quickly after just one round and round. Recalling that he had fought with the opponent several times before without success in defeating the opponent, and was finally killed by the opponent using Exodia, Janucci suddenly felt a little doubtful about life. Ha ha. Ha 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 ha. At this moment, the two Gruss hunters who had been watching the show burst into wild laughter as if they had lost their minds. What a very powerful and rare Lyaka. But it and the red-eyed black dragon in the city will soon belong to our gurus. Two Gruss hunters, one on the left and one on the right, surrounded Janucci and Umshi Kuen in a siege, and blocked the only escape route. But what they didn't know was that when they blocked Anshiba Kuen and Janucci's escape route, they also bet on their own only escape route. You also want to have a duel. Lord Anji looked at the two people who were getting closer, frowned, and spoke with some uncertainty. Duel. No, 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 we have to grab it directly. After seeing Lord Anji's overwhelming dueling prowess, the two-year guru's hunter knew that he could not defeat Lord Anji, so he gave up trying to snatch Lyaka through duel and chose to grab it directly. After all, they looked at the appearance of Janucci and Anshiba Kuen. They seemed to be about the age of high school students. Their bodies were not very strong, and their physical combat power was probably not very high. But the two Gruss hunters are real adults. No matter how you look at it, 
their physical fitness is definitely stronger than that of the two high school students, so grabbing the cards directly is definitely more useful than grabbing the cards in a duel. It's so despicable. If you can't beat it, then you have to rob it. Janucci felt very angry, but at the same time he was angry and helpless, because judging from the performance of the two people on the opposite side, they would definitely not let him and others go easily. Jie Jie, we are gurus. The two gurus once again laughed sinisterly. Oh, you actually chose to have a physical duel. And Shiba Kun was slightly surprised, and subconsciously looked at Janucci beside him, who had a record of teaming up with Honda, fighting a group of people with the power of two people, and actually winning in the end. Janucci had a strong record of hand-to-hand -hand combat. You have really chosen the worst route. But the result is almost the same as choosing a duel. Anji Kun looked at the two grus hunters who still didn't know what their fate would be next with a somewhat pitiful and regretful look. Chapter, 6 Ha! Huh. As expected of a castle, he can fight. Anji Kun was rubbing his ankle joints that were aching from having kicked someone too hard, and looked to the side with admiration. After the group fight, his whole body became dirty. On the surface, there didn't seem to be anything serious. Within the obstructed city. You're not bad, that kick is a bit cool. Janucci panted heavily and praised the comrade next to him who had fought side by side. No, I have practiced Taekwondo before, and I still have some fighting ability. Although I only got a green belt back then, I stopped practicing because of laziness. Ung Shi Kuen happily accepted Janucci's compliments from his childhood idol. Just a few minutes ago, they had fought with two grus hunters. Janucci is indeed a Janucci. Although he is not as good as the legendary war god Ushio Tetsu who captured two people with one hand, he is still a person who cannot be underestimated. The field output is the highest. With one move and three punches, the farmer can deal full damage to the enemy. In the end, after the battle, the two grus hunters were beaten with bruises and swollen faces, and fell to the ground like pig brothers. By the way, why do you know my name is Janucci? After the battle, Janucci also thought of a very important question that he didn't understand, that is, although the two of them had never met and didn't know each other at all, why could the other party easily tell his name? Because you are very famous in Janucci. Your photo and name are very popular among us. After all, you are the runner-up of the Duel Kingdom. You are a very powerful duelist. Oh oh oh. That's it. I didn't expect my popularity to be so high. It's no wonder. After all, I was the runner-up in Duel Kingdom. I almost beat the game and became the first place. Listening to Anji Kuen's words, Junichi suddenly looked up to the sky and laughed, his nose almost turned up with pride. Anyway, I didn't lie. What I told was the real truth. It's just that the place I was referring to was not here. And Shiba Kuen silently thought in his heart that Junichi is indeed famous, but not in this Yu-Gi-Oh DM world, but in the three-dimensional world that Anshiba Kuen used to live in. So in a sense, Anji Kuen's words of praise just now were not a lie. Junuchi, stop laughing, don't you have to rush to the hospital? Have you forgotten? I'll return the dual plate to you. Hurry to the hospital. The fight with the gross hunter just took a lot of time. Don't keep your sister waiting for you. I glanced at Junuchi, who was still immersed in Anji Kuen's complimentary words just now, laughing with pride. And Shiba shook his head helplessly, and then handed Janucci the dual plate with his deck removed, while reminding Janucci not to forget his business. Ah, uh, how did you know that I was going to the hospital? Ah, uh, it's already so late. It's important to rush there first, Shizuka is still waiting for me. After being reminded by Yangshi Kuen, Janucci instantly realized that he had more important things to do, and he immediately took the dual plate handed over by Yang Shi Kuen in a hurry. As expected of Janucci, things are really irritable. However, this kind of Janucci is also the most real. Yang Shi Kuen looked at the scene in front of him and whispered to himself. Anyway, thank you for your help this time. If you hadn't helped me, my red-eyed black dragon would have been taken away by those grus hunters. Fine. Janucci expressed his inner gratitude to Yang Shi Kuen very sincerely, and Ung Shi Kuen also nodded. By the way, I haven't asked your name yet. 
Just when Junichi was about to turn around and run away to the hospital, Junichi seemed to remember something, suddenly stopped in his tracks, and turned around again. My name. My name is Anji Kuen. Please give me your advice in the future. No problem, then, Anji Kuen, see you next time. Anji Kuen quietly stared at Junichi's back that was getting further and further away under the moonlight, and watched as the other person's figure completely disappeared from his eyes. After watching everyone leave, Anji Kuen turned his head and once again cast his gaze on the three gurus hunters who were lying on the ground in a resting state. The winner should have the right to claim the winning bonus and rewards. The Pokemon next door have such rules. Let me know what good things you have. Lord Anji rubbed his hands together excitedly, and then slowly extended his sinful hands to the three grass hunters lying on the ground, preparing to touch the corpses. Let's see. I took this dual disc first. It's a valuable thing. I won't leave it without it in the dual city that will open next. Anshi Kuen first removed the dual plate of the Grus Hunter who used the Exodia deck from the opponent's arm and wore it on his own arm. Then the cards in the deck. Anji Kuen began to look for cards that he could use in the decks of the three of them again. Although there were many fake cards in the decks of the three Grus Hunters, there were still a few common ones among them. There are real cards, and your purpose is to find cards that are useful to you among these real cards. In the end, the hard work paid off, and Anji Kuen found a lot of useful cards in the decks of their three Grus Hunters, such as two Pots of Desire, one Angel's Alms, and one Falling from the Sky. One for Bao Zha and one for DNA Transplant Surgery. I'm lucky. I actually found these banned cards. I will accept them all without ceremony. I think you won't mind, right? If you don't say anything for five seconds, I will take it as your acquiescence. Countdown, five seconds, four seconds. One second, okay, thank you for your generosity. With an expressionless expression, Anji Kuen first picked out all the useful cards from the Grus Hunter deck and quietly stuffed them into his pocket. The next step is some more substantial things. Anji Kuen stretched out his sinful hand again, reached into the black robe of the first guru's hunter and groped carefully, finally took out a wallet, opened it directly, and took out nearly half the money. After putting the wallet back into guru's black robe, Anji Kuen looked at the second guru's hunter who fell to the ground, repeating the previous actions in a cycle. After the second one finished taking it, he slowly he looked at the third guru's hunter and stretched out his sinful hand. Although I don't know what the prices are like here, Saving a little money with this stack of money should be able to support me to survive the dual city trials. The Shanghai Ma family has opened a dual airship. When the time comes, I will get on the airship. I don't want to eat as much as you want. Anji Junzi carefully counted the pile of small coins in his hand that were used to rob the rich and give to the poor, and then quietly stuffed the small coins into his pocket. Alas! It's such a beautiful moonlight. Welcome me, Yu-Gi-Oh DM World, I have come to this world. After taking the prize from the Guru's Hunter, Anji Kuen looked up at the dark night with the bright moon in the sky. He couldn't help but grab his hand towards the beautiful bright moon again and murmur to himself. He can't wait for the next life in the Yu-Gi-Oh DM World. Chapter, 7 The night ends, the sun rises, and a new day begins. Let me think about it it should be some time before Dual City officially starts, almost. There will be about five or six days. During this time, I should be able to think of ways to modify my deck. And Shiba Kuen recalled the plot and information related to Dual City in the original drama. Considering that Kaiba had clearly stated in the original drama that Dual City would officially start in a week, and Shiba Kuen finally confirmed the time at five or six days. Around this time period, First of all, I need three fusion cards. He didn't give me a single fusion card for the fusion gem. He only gave me a bunch of predatory plant cards. The current predatory plant deck is still just one set of semi-finished products. Muttering like this, Anji Kuen couldn't help but feel that he was busy with some things next, and he didn't know if some of the cards he needed existed in this Yu-Gi-Oh DM era. By the way, speaking of card stores. Aren't gamers the ones who open card stores? So today I decided to go to the card store opened by gamers to see if I can buy some cards there. 
Besides, I also I really want to meet the destined protagonist of this world Muto Yugi. Just when Mr. Anji was thinking about where to go to get some cards, Mr. Anji suddenly remembered that there was a place called Turtle Game House. Turtle Game House is a card shop opened by Muto Shugoroku, the grandfather of the original protagonist Muto Yugi. There must be a lot of good cards there, and if you are lucky, you might be able to see the most popular cards with your own eyes. The old Duel King Muto game is here. With the idea of meeting his idol in this way, Anji Kuen suddenly felt excited. Equipped with the dual disc that was already his own, Anji Kuen happily embarked on the road to find the Turtle Game House. Fortunately, Turtle Game House is a relatively famous private card store in the entire Tongshai city, so Mr. Anji didn't have to look for long before he found the address of Turtle Game House. Anji Kuen looked at the door of the Turtle Game House in front of him and listened to the noisy voices coming from the door of the Turtle Game House. He couldn't help but swallowed nervously. It sounds like someone is here, then. I'm going in. Anji Kuen slowly exhaled a breath, then suddenly pushed open the door of Giji Game House and walked directly in. As soon as Anshiba opened the door, the first thing he saw was the protagonist Yugi Mudo, who had a very conspicuous starfish hairstyle. Junuchi, whose hairstyle was slightly inferior to that of Yugi next to him, and two people with unusual hairstyles. Honda and Kyoko playing cards. I've confirmed the hairstyle, it's the protagonist group. And Lord Anji pushed in the door, causing the four protagonists to turn their attention to Lord Anji. Isn't this Anji Kuen? What a coincidence. We meet again. Seeing the face of the visitor, Junuchi instantly recognized the person as Anshiba Kuen, who had helped him guard the red eye last night. He immediately ran to the other person's side and put his arm on Anshiba Kuen's shoulders in a familiar manner. Yugi, Kyoko, Honda, let me introduce to you. This is Anshiba Kuen who helped me last night. He is also a very powerful duelist. Anshiba Kuen, these are all my good friends, Yugi, Kyoko, Honda. Junuchi enthusiastically introduced Anshiba Kuen to his friends, and in turn introduced his friends to Anshiba Kuen. I see, you are the Anshiba Kuen that Junuchi mentioned. Thank you for helping Junuchi yesterday. My name is Muto Yugi, just call me Yugi. Well, hello, Anshiba Kuen, thank you for helping that guy in Junuchi, just call me Honda. Well, hello, Anshiba Kuen, thank you for helping Junuchi. My name is Masaki Kyoko, just call me Kyoko. After hearing Junuchi's words, Muto Yugi, Junuchi's friend, also expressed his gratitude to Anshiba Kuen. Honda and Kyoko also followed Yugi's words and expressed their gratitude to Anshiba Kuen. It's okay. It's just that we drew our swords to help when we saw an uneven road. Besides, I can't stand those gruss hunters. Listening to the gratitude expressed to him by these childhood idols, Anji Kuen felt a little embarrassed. With the help of Junuchi's very familiar and powerful ability, and Shiba Kuen quickly became familiar with Yugi, a group of people with very friendly personalities. By the way, Anji Kuen, do you want to buy a card when you come to Grandpa Yugi's store this time? That's right, I need three fusions, and I'll see if there are any other cards I can use. Anji Kuen nodded and told him the cards he needed to buy this time. Fusion. Yes, they are very common cards. If you need them, I will ask Grandpa later and get three cards for you directly. But. I have something that I would like to ask you, which may be very presumptuous. That is, if you can have a duel with me. Yugi asked Anji Kuen with some anxiety. Both he and the other one wanted to have a duel with Anji Kuen. Because they had heard from Junuchi before that Anshiba Kuen was very powerful in dueling. He could defeat the Gross Hunter who used the Exodia deck in one turn, which was enough to prove his strong dueling ability. If he puts himself in Anshi Kuen's position in the game at that time, although he has great confidence that he can prevent the opponent from successfully collecting five Exodia, he does not think that he can do it as simply as Anshi Kuen. Defeat the opponent in one turn. Yugi and another Yugi like to duel with various powerful opponents to hone their dueling skills, so they challenge Anshi Kuen at this time. Of course, no problem. It's an honor for me to duel with Yugi Mudo, the champion of the Duel Kingdom. Of course, Anji Kuen readily accepts the challenge from the game. He would be really stupid not to accept it at this time. 
let's go outside and use the dual disc to duel. Um Shi Kuen raised the dual disc equipped on his arm and pointed outside. No problem. Yugi nodded, took out his dual disc, and walked outside with An Shiba Kuen. Oh oh oh. The duel is about to begin. Come on, Yugi. Come on too. An Shiba Kuen. Come on. Game. Both sides have to work hard. Seeing two very powerful duelists about to fight, the cheerleading team of the protagonist team instantly came online and started cheering for the two duelists. Duel. X2. And Shiba Kuen and Yugi stood face to face, and then shouted the duel almost in unison. As the duel disc flashed, the right to attack was randomly assigned to Ung Shikuen. The duel between the two has officially begun. Chapter 8. My turn. Draw a card. Is the first strike mine? Anji Kuen quickly glanced at the cards in his hand. Generally speaking, the initial cards in his hand were quite good, and all the cards that should come were there. I summon the predatory plant B Orchid Scorpion. Activate the effect of B Orchid Scorpion, I send the predatory plant Cordyceps sinensis in my hand to the graveyard, and special summon the predatory plant Saracenia Cobra in my deck to the field. The effect of Serpentine Cobra is activated. If this card is successfully special summoned by the effect of the Predator Plant Monster, I can add one Fusion Magic card from the deck to my hand, and I will add the Predator in the deck to add a Fusion card to your hand. A Bee Orchid Scorpion whose prototype is Bee Orchid and a Snake Plant Cobra whose prototype is Cobra Grass were summoned to the field together by Anji Kuen. This time, Anji Kuen first used the old trick of preying on plants, using the school uniform of Bee Orchid and Scorpion to pull the Saracenia Cobra. And then used the effect of the Saracenia Cobra to retrieve the Fusion Magic card from the deck. Although there are no ordinary Fusion cards in Anji Kuen's deck that can be used for retrieval, you can also retrieve Predatory Tyrants and fuse them, right? Predator Plant B Orchid Scorpion slash 3 stars slash dark, plant type slash attack 1200 slash defense 800 slash effect, if this card is summoned or special summoned successfully, it can only be activated by sending one monster from your hand to the graveyard. Special summon one predatory plant monster from the deck except predatory plant B Orchid Scorpion. Prey plant Saracenia Cobra slash 3 stars dark plant type slash attack 1000 slash defense 1500 slash effect, this card can only be activated when the effect of the predatory plant monster is successfully special summoned. Add one fusion magic card from your deck to your hand. Predatory plants. It's exactly what Jinuchi said. It's a series I've never heard of. Yugi looked at the two predatory plant monsters on Anji Kuen's field with somewhat vigilant eyes. The unknown is always scary, especially these monsters that have never been heard of. Maybe these monsters that have never been heard of will have some hidden special effects that can inflict evil on people. Partner, you can summon two monsters quickly. The strength of the opponent is definitely not simple. Let me continue to take over this time. Good. Please, another me. During an internal communication meeting at Anji Junshuo, another personality of the game, the Pharaoh came online to help the game. With the entry of Pharaoh King, the momentum revealed by the game has also undergone drastic changes in an instant. The originally somewhat inferior and cowardly momentum instantly transformed into a majestic momentum of incomparable confidence. Is it Wang Xiang who came online to fight for me? Anji Kuen murmured secretly, and he naturally felt the change in momentum of Yugi who was dueling him. To be honest, he had been very curious when watching TV before. When Wang Mingming was released, his body shape was obviously much taller than in the original game. Why didn't anyone notice it? Now, having personally dueled with Yugi, he probably knows the real reason. The obvious height change on TV is entirely to allow the audience to distinguish Yugi and Wang Yang more intuitively. Anyway, now that the game was played on behalf of the Pharaoh King, in Anji Kuen's eyes, except for the changes in his aura and eyes, there really wasn't much change. I cover a card and end the turn. Anji Kuen withdrew his eyes from looking at Yugi, and silently covered his backcourt with the quick attack magic card predator fusion that he had just retrieved, ready to try his luck to see if he could follow Yugi's turn. One monster fuses and then ends its turn. 
you obviously searched for fusion. But didn't use it. Instead, he ended his turn after covering a card. Are you trying to lure me into attacking? Thinking like this, Wang Xiang suddenly felt a very ominous premonition. It seemed that the unknown Gaika had to be tested first. My turn, draw a card. Yugi looked at the card drawn in his hand and quickly conceived a pretty good plan and tactic in his mind. I activate the magic card whirlwind first. I choose to destroy the covering card in your backfield. A strong whirlwind quickly appeared on the field at the call of the game, and then violently blew towards the cover card in Anji Kuen's backcourt. It's actually a whirlwind. Okay, then I'll reveal the covered quick attack magic card. Fusion of predatory species. I'll fuse the bee orchid scorpion and serpentine cobra on my field as fusion materials. Anji Kuen felt a bit of a pity that he failed to successfully devour the monsters in the game with predatory fusion. But in order to prevent the predatory tyrant fusion card from being wasted, Anji Kuen could only choose to activate the predatory tyrant fusion in advance. What is covered is actually a fusion card that can be activated during the opponent's turn. Looking at the special fusion card that Anji Kuen took, which has different effects from other fusion cards, Yugi felt a little surprised. Luring insects with seductive fragrance. Two seeds of chaos growing in hell. Now. Become one here. Fusion summons. Appear. The forbidden flower that blooms alone and silently. The predatory plant chimera. After Anji Kuen shouted out a line that was explosive for the second time, the huge body of chimera flower grass appeared on the field again. The chimera flower kept waving its thick green vines and predatory organs, showing its teeth and claws in an extremely dangerous manner. Predatory plant chimera grandiflora slash seven stars slash dark slash plant family slash attack power 2500 slash defense power 2000 slash dot. The attack power is 2500. And it is as high as a black magician. As expected, and Shiba Kuen, you are a very powerful dualist. Looking at the chimera reflesia that Unshi Kuen fused and summoned to the field, Yugi couldn't help but sigh. The attack power is actually 2500? Isn't that the same as the attack power of the black magician in the game? The attack power of the blue eyes white dragon is 3000. The one summoned by Anji Kuen's fusion is only 500 short of the same attack power as the blue eyes white dragon. Yugi and then Shiba Kuen both have to work hard together. This is what everyone in the cheerleading team of the protagonist group who was watching and cheering for the two saw and felt. Activate the magic card. Ancient rules. Through the effect of this card. I can special summon a 5 star or higher normal monster from my hand. Come out. My most loyal servant. The black magician. Yugi activated the magic card ancient rules from the card in his hand, and through its effect, he directly summoned his trump card. Black magician. Following Yugi's call, the pattern of the black magic array flashed across the field, and then, a black magician dressed in purple appeared on the field with very handsome movements. Black magician slash seven stars dark magician family slash attack power 2500 slash defense power 2100 slash introduction, as a magician, both attack power and defense power are at the highest level. Chapter, 9. Hmm, has the black magician appeared? Then. Come on. Yugi. Try your best to break through the powerful chimera flower on my field. Looking at the handsome black magician on the game field, Anji Kuen also understood that Wang Yang was probably starting to get serious. The feeling of excitement and excitement filled Anzijin's heart at this moment, making Anzijin couldn't help but utter words full of villain meaning. I activate the magic card magic spell script first. Equip it to the black magician on my field. The black magician's attack power will increase by 700. In this way, the black magician's attack will exceed that of your chimera flower. Yugi said to Ang Shikun, the black magician's attack power has completely surpassed that of Chimera through the blessing of the equipment magic card. Black magician slash attack power, 25003200 slash defense power, 2100. Immediately afterwards, I summon the silent magician in defense position. Then activate the effect of the silent magical swordsman. 
After this card is successfully summoned, I can add the Silent Magician LV4 in my deck to my hand. Yugi took another card from his hand that Ung Shikun had never seen Yugi use in the drama, Silent Magic Swordsman, a card specially used to coordinate with Silent Swordsman and Silent Magician. Monster Card Silent Magical Swordsman slash 4 stars, Light, Magician type slash attack 500 slash defense 1500 slash effect, this card can only be activated when this card is summoned successfully. Add one Silent Swordsman LV3 or Silent Magician LV4 from the deck to your hand. Silent Magical Swordsman Has the game ever used this card in the series? Could it be the card used in the game in the comics? Thinking about this, and Shiba Kuen, who has never seen the game use the Silent Magic Swordsman in the series, can only assume that this card is a card used by the game in the comics. Anyway, this monster card doesn't have much effect. It only has three effects, retrieving any silent monster, invalidating the activation of magic cards targeting the target, and recycling the death rattle of LV monsters in the graveyard after being destroyed. Fight. Black Magician. Attack the predatory plant Chimera. Black Magic. With a cool wave of his hand, Yugi entered the battle stage directly, directing the Black Magicians on his field to attack the Chimera flowers and plants on Ungshi Kun's field. The handsome Black Magician turned the staff in his hand at high speed. After turning it, he pointed the staff directly at the Chimera flower. A black energy ball flashing with purple electricity condensed directly from the front part of the staff, straight. It shot at the Chimera flowers on Anshijin's field. Are you tired of Wadoka? Seeing Anji Kuen who showed no signs of panic in the face of the black magician's attack and spoke calmly and calmly, Wang Yang suddenly felt that something was wrong. The effect of Predator Plant Chimera is activated. This card can only be activated and an attack is declared for combat with the opponent's face-up monster. The attack power of the opponent's attacking monster is reduced by 1000, and the attack power of Chimera is up 1000. In other words, the Black Magician's attack power will decrease to 2200, while the Chimera's attack power will increase to 3500. With a smile on his face, Anji Kuen talked about the ordinary effects of Chimera flowers and plants in a leisurely manner. Predatory Plant Chimera Slash Attack, 2500 Slash Defense, 2000. Black Magician Slash Attack Power, 3200-2200 slash defense power, 2100. What? This monster actually has such an effect. It's troublesome. Looking at the beating monster data displayed on the dual plate, a drop of cold sweat dripped from Yugi's forehead. The opponent's monster has the effect of increasing its own attack by 1000 and subtracting the opponent's attack by 1000 when attacking. In other words, if you want to deal with the opponent's monster head-on, you must have a monster with an attack power of up to 4,500, and initially the only monsters that Yugi knows that can have an attack power of over 4,500 are Kaiba's Blue-Eyed Ultimate Dragon. The legendary five Emperor Dragons, and the Ultimate Dragon Knight that he and Kaiba summon together, and those monsters are all Yugis. Monsters that cannot be summoned by humans, that is to say, the game cannot summon monsters that can defeat the opponent's Chimera from the front. I didn't expect that monster to have such a powerful effect. This effect is so invincible. It must be a fake card. The attack power exceeds that of the blue eyes white dragon. This is what the cheerleaders of the protagonist team were thinking as they watched the duel. However, it is no wonder that they were so surprised. After all, the chimera flower plant has a perverted effect that is equivalent to adding 2000 attack power out of thin air. It is indeed unprecedented in the DM era. Not heard. On the field, the Chimera Reflesia suddenly burst into flames. The originally thick green vines became even stronger. Aiming at the Black Magician's attack, the Chimera Reflesia just flicked the vines and directly destroyed the black vines. The energy ball exploded in midair, and then continued to attack the Black Magician with undiminished power. A vine directly blasted the Black Magician turning him into yellow light particles all over the sky. Game LP, 4000-2700. The magic spell effect is activated. When this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you will recover 1000 base points. The black magician was destroyed, 
and Yugi immediately activated the effect of the magic spell book equipped by the black magician, recovering a wave of blood and making up for the difference in damage. One deduction after another, in total, Yugi was only deducted 300 basic points by Ensigen in this round. Yugi LP 27003700 Ensigen, you are very strong, but I will not admit defeat. There is a card in my deck that can defeat the monster you have. I believe in my deck. Yugi is worthy of being the protagonist, with a good psychological quality. Even when facing a perverted monster whose attack power will instantly soar by 2000 attacks as soon as it attacks, his expression is as firm and confident as at the beginning. Since I can't get rid of the opponent's chimera flower plant head-on I can only use the powerful magics that the black magician has mastered to get rid of the opponent's monster, or the black magician girl. As the black magician's most proud disciple, the black magician girl naturally has the ability to use those powerful black magics. It seems that I can only defend first, and wait until I draw a card that can revive the black magician or summon the black magician girl, as well as those powerful magic cards that can only be used with the heirs of the black magic lineage. I cover two cards and end the turn. Thinking this in his heart, Yugi covered the remaining two cards in his hand in his backcourt, and then ended his turn directly. It's my turn. Draw a card. It was in Jijun's turn. And Jijun slowly drew a card from the deck and glanced at the cards in his hand. I feel that it is enough to summon a fusion monster Chimera Grandiflora now. There is no need to continue fusing, so as not to be wiped out by the game. I am sure that the game has the ability to deal with Chimera Grandiflora, a fusion monster with no resistance. Next, I will temporarily retain my strength and summon some lower level monsters of the Predator Plant family to support the scene and step on the pit by the way. Considering the two unknown cover cards in the game's backfield, and Jijun, who confirmed that his current pure predator plant deck did not have the ability to solve the backfield, chose to hide in his heart. After all, Xiaobiao has the title of a heavy pit Xiaobiao. You know, this title is not a joke. Who knows, one of the two cards covering the opponent's backfield now is a Hano Knight's sublime power. Chapter, 10 I normally summon the predatory plant Nepenthes eel from the card in my hand. Anji Kuen took a look at the predatory plant monsters he had drawn in his hand, and finally selected the Nepenthes eel, which had the highest attack power, and summoned it to the field. A strange withered seedling with brightly colored predatory organs broke through the hard ground, emerged from the ground, and appeared on Anji Kuen's field. Predatory plant Nepenthes more slash four stars slash dark slash plant family slash attack power. 1600 slash defense power, 1000. Looking at the plant predating monsters on his field, Anji Kuen had to silently complain in his heart that few of his lower level monsters that preyed on plants had numerical values over 1000. Although Predator Plants is not a series of decks that pays special attention to the numerical value and size of a single monster, the attack power of the lower level monsters is basically below 1000, which is quite miserable. But from another aspect, this is quite miserable. It also fits the plant aspect of the predatory plants. The effect of the predatory plant chimera is activated. Once per turn, I can banish one monster on the field whose level is lower than that of the chimera. The level of the silent magic swordsman is 4 stars, while the level of the chimera flower is 7 stars. The level of the chimera flower is higher than that of the silent magic swordsman. So I can use the Silent Magic Swordsman as my level. The object activates the effect. So. Exclude it. Chimera Flora. After hearing the instructions issued by its user Anji Kuen, the Chimera Flower Grass immediately shot several thick green vines towards the Silent Magic Swordsman on the game field. The Silent Magic Swordsman who noticed the incoming vines immediately raised his sword and shield and bravely faced the incoming vines. Although the silent magic swordsman tried his best to block it, the gap in strength between the two was still a big gap. After all, it was 2500 attack power versus 500 attack power. The silent magic swordsman just accidentally kept it in his hand. The sword he was holding tightly was knocked away by a vine from the chimera flower plant. Without his weapon, the silent magic swordsman naturally had no ability to resist. He was directly entangled by several vines controlled by the chimera flowers. 
the silent magic swordsman's petite body belonging to a girl was once again entangled. Being mercilessly entangled by several vines, the poor girl was directly tied tightly by the chimera flowers and plants into a rice dumpling with only her head exposed. According to ordinary dramas, as long as a beautiful girl is entangled by something like vines or tentacles, the plot of selling meat or will basically happen. But obviously, our book will definitely not contain those plots that are not suitable for children, otherwise it will not pass the review, so interested comrades are asked to imagine the erotic scenes themselves. Immediately afterwards, the chimera flower plant that tied the silent magic swordsman tightly into a rice dumpling stretched out a vine with a predatory organ. And kept approaching the girl who was tied up by the vine and unable to move. Finally, under the somewhat horrified gazes of the onlookers, the chimera's predatory organ aimed at the silent magic swordsman's head and bit it down without hesitation. This time, it directly bit the silent magic swordsman off. The swordsman's head gave Tomo, the silent magic swordsman magical girl headless senior, and mommy-style death. Accompanied by the terrifying chewing sounds coming from the chimera's predatory organs, the silent magic swordsman, who was left with only his body, turned into light particles that drifted in the wind, and was eliminated. So. So cruel. The only woman present, Kyoko Masaki, was stunned when she saw this scene. The dual disc designed by that guy Kaiba. Is the virtual impression so terrifying? Yes. Two good brothers, Honda and Janucci, got together. They were originally immersed in the scene where the young girl was entangled in vines and their love affair was leaked. However, the next second, they saw the silent magic swordsman's head being directly hit by Chime. I bit off the big flower and grass. It's straight to Viagra. Looking at the ferocious predatory scene just now, even though it was a game, he couldn't help but frown slightly at this moment. Ah. Uh, you can't blame me for what happened just now. Who knows, the chimera flower plant would bite off the silent magic swordsman's head directly. Anji Kuen looked at the chimera flowers and plants that were still chewing something in his mouth, and twitched the corner of his mouth helplessly. What could he do? He was also helpless. Predatory plants, predatory plants, judging from the name. I know it's a pretty ferocious species. That's all. Don't worry about it for now. Let's launch a direct attack on Yugi first. Angshi Kuen shook his head, temporarily forgetting about the chimera flower biting the silent magic swordsman's head, and commanded the monsters on his field to tentatively launch a direct attack on Yugi. At this moment, the covered trap card activates. The attack is incapacitated. When the opponent's monster declares an attack, you can target the attacking monster and negate that attack. After that, the battle phase will end directly. As Unshi Kuen had expected, seeing Unshi Kuen's chimera flower attacking towards him, Yugi immediately turned over a trap card among the two cover cards he had covered, attack incapacitated. With the activation of the trap card, a red vortex instantly appeared on the chimera's attack route. Even though the green vines of the chimera kept whipping on the red vortex, it was of no avail. On the contrary, the green vines that Chimera swung at the red vortex were all rebounded by it, and the whip hit Chimera's own body, making Chimera howl in pain. Is the attack incapacitated? That makes sense, then I'll cover a card and end the turn. Looking at the trap card revealed in the backfield of the game, Anji Kuen nodded clearly, then covered a card from his hand in his backfield, and then ended his turn. My turn, draw a card. This card. Even if I use this card, I can't defeat and Shibakuen's chimera. The turn came into Yugi's hands again. Yugi looked at the cards he had just drawn from the deck and shook his head helplessly. He did not draw the cards he needed this round. I cover a monster and end the turn. As a result, Yugi, who really didn't draw any useful cards, covered a monster on his field and simply ended his turn. It's my turn again, draw a card. As for that card, I can tell at a glance that it is used as cannon fodder. If I guessed correctly. That card should be Silent Magician LV4, right? Then I will normally summon the predatory plant Squid Sundew first. Soon, it was Anji Kuen's turn again. After drawing a card from the deck, 
Anji Kuan summoned a strange plant on his field that was full of familiar faces and all kinds of sharp teeth and mouths. Type Monster, Squid Sundew. Predatory Plant Squid Sundew slash 2 stars slash dark slash plant family slash attack power, 800 slash defense power, 400. Chapter, 11. Next, I turn over the trap card that was previously covered in my backfield, Predation Plan. Through the effect of this card, I can send one prey plant monster from the deck to the graveyard, and place one prey counter on all monsters on the field. After summoning the new predatory plant monster, Anji Kuen turned over and turned over the trap cards covered in his backfield. I send the predatory plant Dupine Hydrozoa in the deck to the graveyard, and add a predator counter to the Chimera, Nepenthesil, and Squid Drosera on my field. Predatory plant Chimera Grandiflora slash Prey Indicator 1 7th star 1 star. Predatory plant Nepenthes More slash predation indicator, 1 quarter star 1 star. Predatory plant, squid and sundew slash prey indicator, 1 half star 1 star. Since I have 3 predator counters on the field, the attack power of Nepenthes eel will increase by 600 points. It will reach 2200 points. Anji Kuen pointed at the Nepenthes eel on his field which had obviously gained weight due to the increase in prey indicators. Predatory plant Nepenthes Moray slash attack power, 1600 slash defense power, 1000. Let's attack next. Nepenthes eel attacks the monsters covered in the game. On the field, the withered body of Nepenthes eel jumped up from the ground out of thin air, grew its predatory organ dripping with saliva, and bit into the game's covering monster. The game's overlay card shattered, and a little girl holding a white staff and wearing a white robe, the silent magician LV4, appeared in front of Anji Kuen. Even a little girl who has no ability to resist, as a cold-blooded predatory plant, Nepenthes More will not let go at all. The open predatory organ instantly split to the maximum extent, swallowing silent magician LV4 in one gulp. And burped with great satisfaction. At this time, the effect of Nepenthes More is activated. After this card destroys the opponent's monster in battle, you can use the destroyed monster as an equipment card to equip this card. Immediately afterwards, Chimera launches a direct attack on Yugi. Umshi Kuen continued to attack Yugi. The huge Chimera flower plant swayed and shot its thick vines towards Yugi. I reveal the trap card I covered. Magic Tube. Return this attack to you. Seeing something bad coming, Yugi immediately turned over the last covering card in his backfield, the magic tube that had helped him turn defeat into victory many times. The other one is actually a magic tube. The damage of the chimera flower is 2500. I can barely bear it. Anji Kuen looked at the magic tube opened at the back of the game and muttered with an ugly expression. On the field, several green vine attacks shot by the chimera flower plant were suddenly caught by a tube that appeared out of thin air. And next to the tube that caught the attack, another tube appeared. This tube directly spit out all the attacks it had just caught. Several vines passed by Anji Kuen in a thrilling way, and the air flow that hit Anji Kuen also blew out all the attacks it had just caught. Jijun's slightly long black hair blew up. Anzhijin LP, 4000015000. But after the magic tube that was just activated, your field is completely empty. There is no way to stop my next attack. Let the squid sundew launch a direct attack on Yugi. Now that the pit has been stepped on by himself, he can attack as much as he wants. With this mentality, Anji Kuen directed his squid sundew, which had only a pitiful 800 attack points on the field, to attack Yugi. The strange-looking predatory plant swung its predatory organs disguised as branches and leaves and hit the game directly. Game LP 37002900. Then the effect of Nepenthes More is activated, and I can restore the original attack power of the monster equipped with this card's effect. The original attack power of Silent Magician LV4 is 1000 points. So I can also restore 1000 points. Basic score value. Cover a card and my turn ends. Anzhijin LP 15002500. Through the effect of Nepenthes More's blood recovery, Enzijin once again kept his basic score equal to that of the game. It's my turn. Draw a card. 
I activate the magic card. Pot of Desire. I draw two cards from the deck. It's finally here. And Shibakuen, this duel is about my rules for victory have been written. After seeing that he had drawn two cards through the Pot of Desire, Yugi's originally frowning brows relaxed at this moment. Yugi smiled slightly and said firmly while taking the card in his hand. The card is inserted into the dual disc. I activate the magic card in my hand. Curtain of Black Magic. I pay 1000 base points. Resurrect the Black Magician in my graveyard. Game LP 29001900. Next. I activate a magic card from my hand. Thousand Knives. This is the magic that black magicians are best at. I can directly destroy a monster on your field. I choose to destroy the predatory plant chimera on your field. Big flowers and plants. Come on. Black magician. Thousand knives. Yugi said loudly to the black magician, and extended his finger to the chimera flowers on Anshiba's field. On the field, the black magician appeared again and was ready to avenge the chimera flower and vine that had been mercilessly beaten to death. So the black magician held his staff and moved forward. In an instant, countless numbers appeared in the air. Unclear sharp knife. Aiming at the large chimera flowers and plants on Anji Jun's field, the black magician waved the king of staffs downwards again. The countless knives in the air seemed to have received some order, and they all aimed at Chimera in an instant. The big flowers and plants flew away. The falling of countless blades is like a heavy rain. However, when a heavy rain falls on your body, you will only feel a little itchy at most. But if this rain of blades falls, it is not a matter of whether you are itchy or not. You can still feel it. Can't feel pain anymore. The perspective returns to the field. The chimera flower is now experiencing the baptism of the blade rain. The entire plant is almost turned into a hedgehog by the blades all over the sky. The blue blood spurting out from the wound is also on the ground. A blue river gathered together. Finally, as the last sharp blade in the sky fell and penetrated, a small blue fountain sprayed out directly from the mouth of the chimera. The blue fountain gradually became smaller, and the body of the chimera also changed from its original fullness. It became shriveled up, and finally, the chimera flower grass, whose body became extremely shriveled, could no longer hold on, and its body exploded, turning into particles of light all over the sky. Blowing in the wind. Chimera flower. Defeated. Yugi actually succeeded in defeating that fusion monster with such a perverted effect. This is really incredible. What an awesome game! Seeing that the powerful chimera flower that brought them a huge sense of oppression was finally destroyed by Yugi, the members of the cheerleading team once again let out cheers of celebration. Chapter 12 The chimera flower has been dealt with. Unshi Kuen watched calmly as the chimera flowers and plants on his field were destroyed by the magic card Thousand Knives activated by Yugi. He had already expected this kind of scene. Unless there was a booster card, the game would not be able to produce a monster with an attack power of over 4,500 for a while. Therefore, when it is impossible to defeat it head-on, using effects to destroy it becomes the optimal solution to the game. But Yugi just said. His victory rules have been written. Could it be that Yugi has some cards in his hand that can clear all my basic points in one turn? Anji Koen suddenly recalled what Yugi said earlier, and he couldn't help but wonder how Yugi would use it to completely clear his base points. He currently has 2,500 basic points left. Even if the Black Magician attacks the weakest Squid Sundew on the field, he will still have some basic points left. Unless it is all that Yugi has left. Does that card have an effect that can enhance attack power, or an effect that can increase the number of attacks? Next, I activate the last magic card in my hand. The spreading wave. Just as Anjiju thought, the last card in the game was indeed a card that could increase the number of attacks, spreading waves, a powerful magic card that had helped the game complete several major reversals. I pay 1000 life points and activate it by targeting a 7 level or higher magician type monster on my field. This turn, monsters other than that monster cannot attack, and the target monster must attack all the opponent's monsters as much as possible. 
make one attack. And the effects of the monsters destroyed by the attack cannot be activated and are invalidated. Of course the target I choose is the black magician on my field. Let's fight. And Shibakuan. Let's attack from the black magician next. Let the black magician launch a direct attack on the predatory plant Squid Drossera first. Yugi once again paid the price of 1000 basic points, and launched a spreading wave targeting the black magician on his field. He tried his best to prepare to kill Ungshikuen directly in this round. Game LP, 1900900. On the field, the black magician spun the magic wand in his hand gracefully, and several black energy balls also appeared around the black magician. As the black magician pointed his staff at the squid sundew on Ungshi's field, several black energy balls surrounding the black magician seemed to have received some instructions, and immediately attacked the squid sundew together. But at this moment, my cover card activates. Quick attack magic card. Predator fusion. I will play the black magician on your field and the moray pig on my field. Cage grass and squid sundew are used as fusion materials for fusion summoning. After thinking for a moment, Anji Kuen finally chose to go all out and directly chose to turn over the coverage card in his backcourt, another predatory fusion. According to the original idea, Anji Kuen was just planning to fight until the end of the game, and did not intend to reveal too much of his strength. After all, if he showed too much strength, he might be targeted by others and cause unnecessary trouble. But now. He's getting high. He can't hold it back. So just do your best and go up and hit him without any regrets. As for being targeted, just target him. He has never been afraid of anyone. Moreover, since this wave is an all-out operation, it must be handsome. Large and luxurious. If you want to make a big splash, just summon your strongest monster. Don't summon the same predatory plant chimera that has appeared two or three times. This scene is enough. What? Fusion with Black Magician. That card actually has an effect that can use monsters on my field as fusion materials. Yugi was shocked again. Today, he saw too many incredible things, and he also deeply felt that Anji Kuen was not a simple person. The flower of the apocalypse was born from the hell deep within the petals. Now, wake up from the dark underground. Pray everything in front of you as you like. Destroy everything in front of you. Let this world become chaotic. Fusion summon. Appear. The three-pointed hell flower god of the predatory plant Spike Leaf Vine. While Anji Kuen said a very good summoning word, he put his hands together in a clasped posture, then swung his hands downwards and shouted the last summoning word loudly. A red light suddenly appeared, three dragon heads roared, strange flowers opened, wings spread wide enough to cover the sky. A long tail composed of vines trailed behind, and a three-headed dragon covered with a green carapace full of spikes appeared. On the field. As soon as the three-headed dragon appeared on the scene, it let out a cathartic roar towards the sky. The sound was sharp and harsh, giving the onlookers a heavy feeling like a stone on their hearts. Predatory plant panicle leaf vine three-pointed hell flower god slash nine stars slash dark slash plant family slash attack power. 3000 slash defense power, 3000. EU, this is my strongest monster. Anji Kuen pointed at the behemoth on his field, without any intention of hiding it, and directly revealed that this was his current ace monster. In the absence of his two elder brothers, the hungry poison fusion dragon and the strong desire poison fusion dragon, Suiyi Fuji's three pointed hell flower god is indeed the strongest fusion monster in his hands currently. This. This monster is so oppressive. Yugi looked at Anshiba Kuen's three-pointed hell flower god on the field, which gave him a strong sense of oppression, and said with some shock. This kind of substantial sense of oppression is far beyond the reach of the dark personality in Tapirang's Millennium Wheel of Wisdom and the full-on dark game of Bikas. The feeling that this fusion monster brings to the game is as if it really exists. It seems that it will break through the shackles of the dual monster in the next second, rush forward, and devour everything in sight. My. Round. Over. The black magician was melted by the opponent, and the last card in his hand was exhausted. Yugi had no choice but to end the round. 
it seemed that this time, he could not turn defeat into victory. My turn is to draw a card, let's go. The three-pointed hell flower god of Sueya Fuji. Launch a direct attack on Yugi. Destroy the death light. When it was his turn again, and Shibakuen stopped talking nonsense and directly commanded the three-pointed hell flower god of Sui Yi Ting on his field to launch a direct attack on Yugi. On the field, the two sharp claws of the three-pointed hell flower god of the Sui Ye vine suddenly extended and penetrated straight into the ground under their feet. Small bulges that seemed to contain something appeared on the extension of the three-pointed hell flower god of the Sui Ye vine. The sharp claws that came out were continuously transported towards the body of the three-pointed hell flower god of Sui Yi Veng. After dozens of small bulges were transported into the body of the three-pointed hell flower god Sui Vine, the three-pointed hell flower god Sui Vine opened the dragon head in the middle with some reluctance. The open dragon head in the middle of the three-pointed hell flower god of Sui Ye Veng suddenly burst out with a violent red light. Then, a thick red light energy cannon shot directly from the mouth of the three-pointed hell flower god of Sui Ye Veng, shooting straight toward the defenseless Yugi, Yugi's body was gradually buried by the red energy cannon that spewed out. Chapter, 13 Yugi actually dueled with others without my consent. And he actually lost to others before he lost to me. At the top of Kaiba group, Kaiba Sido, another male supporting actor in Yu-Gi-Oh! DM who has a love-hate relationship with the protagonist Yugi Muto, is now lying on a recliner, looking at the laptop in front of him with a grim face. The laptop shows the game between Yugi and Anji Kuen. The dual disc was developed by Kaiba Group led by Kaiba Sido. As a developer, Kaiba Yeido also specially set up a dual recording function in the dual disc developed by his group. As long as the dual disc produced and developed by their group is used for dual, the dual disc will record all the information of that dual and finally summarize it here in Kaiba group. There are two reasons why Kaiba did this. The first reason is to allow Kaiba Sido to observe duels related to God and help him find the owner of the God card. The second reason was to allow Kaiba Sido to watch all the duels of Yugi, the only destined enemy he recognized. As the saying goes, knowing yourself and knowing your enemy will lead to victory in every battle. For this reason, Kaiba Sido specially removed Yugi's dual video from the dual videos of other people and placed it in a separate place, paying special attention to Yugi. However, when President Kaiba saw that Yugi, the enemy he recognized in the dual video, was defeated by an unknown person whose name he had never heard of, Kaiba Sido slammed the table in an instant and stood up from his recliner. Humph! But this guy can actually beat Yugi, so he must be very powerful and interesting. Saying this, President Kaiba closed the computer in front of him, picked up the white windbreaker on the chair, and quickly put it on himself. He was addicted to playing cards and was ready to meet the unknown person who defeated Yugi in person. Duel with him. Smash him. Then show off in front of Yugi. Someone you can't beat with Yugi. I, Sido Kaiba, defeated him very easily. This is enough to prove that Sido Kaiba is stronger than you, Yugi. I am the strongest duelist in the world. With such a pleasant thought, Sido Kaiba, who was dressed, walked out the door and took out his mobile phone to call his driver to send him to Kame Game House as soon as possible. But just when Sido Kaiba took out his mobile phone and was about to make a call, a call came first. Kaiba frowned a little unhappily, and was secretly thinking in his heart, who was so blind that he called him at this time, didn't he know that he was going to duel with the opponent who defeated Yugi? But just when Kaiba was about to hang up the phone, Kaiba inadvertently saw the caller on the top of the phone dear O Daudu. After seeing that it was his dearest O Daudu who called, the displeasure in Kaiba's eyes disappeared instantly, as if it had not appeared at all, and he directly answered the call. What's wrong? Kipi. Kaiba got straight to the point and asked Kipi on the other end of the phone what he wanted to talk about this time. It's like this, Nissan, the ritual monster card you mentioned. The Ru 0026D department has successfully manufactured it. The young voice of Kipi Kaiba, Sido Kaiba's younger brother, came from the other end of the phone. What? It's really manufactured. Sido Kaiba's always cold and serious look, who didn't love anyone, actually changed a little at this moment. Yes, 
but Nissan, the ritual monster card that was manufactured seems a little strange. But Kipi's next sentence made Sido Kaiba a little puzzled. Strange? Yes, that ritual monster card seems to be untouchable. As soon as the developers touch that weird ritual monster card, they will suddenly faint. Even the developers wearing protective clothing will faint directly after touching it. But after mechanical inspection, nothing strange was found on the card. There was no radiation, fluctuations, radio waves, etc. It felt like an ordinary card. Kipi Kaiba continued. Hearing this, Sido Kaiba fell silent. He only believed in science in his life and absolutely did not believe in superstitions about ghosts and monsters. If it was not Kipi who spoke on the other end of the phone, but someone else, he would definitely think that the other party was stupid. But if it was Kipi who said it, it would be worth thinking about. The card caused people to faint instantly. The only possibility is that there is some special energy on the card that cannot be detected by the machine. Keep paying, don't touch that monster card casually, I'll be there soon. Kaiba thought for a moment, and finally chose to go to his brother Ki Peng first, his brother is the most important. As for Yugi. There will definitely be a chance in the future, anyway, Yugi and the unknown person who defeated Yugi will definitely participate in the duel in Duel City. Besides, if I can't wait to duel with that person, can't I just find a few people to tie him up and duel with me? That ritual monster card. I didn't expect that the monster that suddenly appeared in my dream was actually created. After Kaiba Sido warned Keihei a few more words not to act rashly, he hung up the phone, looked at the sky outside, and recalled the strange dream that he had experienced many times recently, Kaiba Sido said to himself whispering to himself. The scene returned to the turtle game house again, and the Natsuki spray attack of the three-pointed hell flower god Suyafuji was gradually coming to an end, and not a drop could be sprayed out. Although this attack looks very powerful, in fact, only the gorgeous special effects are left. After all, this is not a dark game that can bring real damage. In fact, the impact of the attack on the game is just that Yugi's eyes were a bit unable to open due to the strong light, and his clothes became a little messy. You win. You are truly a powerful duelist. Yugi half squinted his eyes and looked at the number zero on the basic score display of the duel board. He really didn't expect that he would lose so suddenly and completely. And he couldn't help but feel a little frustrated in his heart. But Yugi, who has excellent psychological quality, quickly put away these feelings of frustration, greeted Anji Kuen with a friendly smile, and extended his hand of friendship to Anji Kuen. Uh, thank you very much for the compliment. Yugi. Seeing the hand of friendship extended by his idol, Anji Kuen was stunned for a moment, then excitedly stretched out his hand and shook Yugi's hand. At this moment, Anji Kuen, who held his hand with Yugi's, could only think about, great. I actually shook hands with a living king. He is like a living king. I have the capital to brag. Chapter, 14. After the duel with Yugi, and Shiba Kuen followed Yugi and his party back to the turtle game house opened by Yugi's grandfather Mudo Shuangliu, and continued to work on today's plan to improve the deck and collect demand cards. In the process of constantly spending money to buy card packs, Anji Kuen was also very lucky to open a lot of very useful cards, and strengthened his predatory plant deck as much as possible. After Mr. Anji completely revised his deck of predatory plants, left the turtle game house, and prepared to return to his residence, Mr. Anji realized that the sky outside had reached dusk at some point. Well, I'm really lucky. I got all the cards I wanted without spending much money. Walking on the street at dusk, there are very few people on the street and it is very quiet, but none of this can stop Anji Kuen who is in an extremely happy mood at this time. Because not only did he win the duel with Yugi today, but he also spent the least amount of money to get the card he needed most. This round was really profitable. But, having said that, I have exposed so much strength this time and defeated the game. Will I be caught playing cards by President Kaiba, who is very addicted to cards? As the saying goes, sometimes, when you are happy, you will become extremely happy and sad. At this time, Anji Kuen is in such a situation. Originally, he was still happy with everything that happened today, 
but suddenly he suddenly it reminds me of President Kaiba's character who is addicted to cards and a bit self-centered. The originally happy mood was gone in an instant. You know, Sido Kaiba is a ruthless person who will do anything just to be able to play cards. Not only did the world kidnap people back to play cards, but in the later chapters of the dark side of the movie, Sido Kaiba actually sent himself directly to the underworld in order to play cards with Adam who was in the underworld again. Played cards. Therefore, based on Wang Xiang's case, and Shibakuen really feels that Sido Kaiba might really come to him for a duel because he defeated Muto Yugi. He is not afraid that Kaiba will come to him for a duel. What he is afraid of is that after Kaiba loses, he will not be able to afford to lose, so he will keep an eye on him for many days in the future and use various methods to force him into a duel. A passionate duel. In that case, I would die from exhaustion. Forget it. Let's not think about it so much for now. Anyway, no matter what, Kaiba will definitely come to find me. I am destined to not be able to escape this disaster. There is an old saying that is true, life it's like rape. Since you can't resist, you might as well enjoy it. With this mentality, and Shibakuen let out a heavy breath. He had almost looked past the fact that Sido Kaiba would come to find him. Anji Kuen continued to walk in the direction of his residence in this world. The residence he chose was relatively remote, far away from the bustling central area. There are two reasons why Anji Kuen chooses to live in a relatively remote place. One is because the place where he lives is far away from the noisy central area and is relatively quiet. He likes quiet places. The other is because the remote place where he lives requires the rent paid is relatively small, much less than the rent required for a house in the central area. Whether it is the Yu-Gi-Oh DM world or the world I lived in before, it is close to the city center and close to the school district. The house price or rent required by the place is not a small amount. Let me think about it. The next step is to turn left, go straight, cross a road, and then go straight. Wait. That is. Anji Kuen kept walking along the direction in his memory, but as he walked, Anji Kuen suddenly stopped his progress and looked ahead with somewhat surprised eyes. On the road ahead not far from Anji Kuen, a tall figure wearing a white trench coat with a dual plate on his arm was leaning against a telephone pole with his arms folded. And looked at him from the other side's tightly closed judging from his eyes, the other party seems to be still concentrating with his eyes closed. Anji Kuen felt that something was not right. Although the other party was closing his eyes to rest and not even opening his eyes, he could deeply feel the Wang Ba Ji from the other party that was not weaker than the momentum of the game. Gas. Say Chow Chow, Chow Chow is here. Sure enough, Sido Kaiba came to block my door and prevent me from going home. Did he drag me to play cards? Anji Kuen saw the white trench coat that the other party was wearing, and instantly locked the true identity of the tall figure, the other party was the male supporting character of Yu-Gi-Oh! DM. The fateful enemy of the Pharaoh. The reincarnation of Set, the ancient Egyptian priest. A lot of blah Sido Kaiba is right. Anji Kuen, who had officially confirmed the true identity of the other party not far away, couldn't help but twitch his lips. He really didn't expect that things happened so quickly. Even though it was already night in the world, Kaiba actually came to find him. By myself. Just when Anji Kuen was still complaining about why Sido Kaiba came so quickly, Sido Kaiba not far away suddenly opened his eyes, and then looked at him suddenly as if he was sensing something. In the direction of Anji Kuen. See me. Although there was a small distance between the two, Anji Kuen was keenly aware of the way Kaiba looked at him. Finally here. Sido Kaiba slowly walked towards Anshiba Kuen. Maybe it was because President Kaiba was 186 centimeters tall and had very long legs. President Kaiba just took a few steps with his long legs and quickly pulled him closer. He walked directly in front of Lord Anji within a short distance. You guy. Are you the Anshibakuen who defeated Muto Yugi? Sido Kaiba asked Ambakuen with a cold face and his obviously cold voice. Yes, I am Ambakuen. If I guess correctly. You should be Sido Kaiba, the chairman of Kaiba Group, right? And Shibakuen nodded. He had no intention of hiding his identity. 
Hiding his identity would only make Sido Kaiba feel that he was teasing him, and it would only make Sido Kaiba angry for nothing. Humph. You asked me knowingly, since you already know. Then why do you have to ask me again? Sido Kaiba crossed his arms and spoke with an annoyed look. The meaning of his words was self-evident. It was just that I was on the big screen on TV every day. What else could you guess? After saying this, Anji Kuen couldn't help but have a few black lines appear on his head. I understand, my mistake. So, President Kaiba. What is your goal this time? Are you here for a duel with me? Anji Kuen shook his head helplessly. He didn't want to talk nonsense anymore. He was really afraid that he would choke because of President Kaiba's somewhat annoying way of speaking, so he chose to go straight to the topic. You guessed it right, the purpose of my coming here is to have a duel with you. You can defeat the game. This is enough to prove your strength. Let me see your true power that can defeat the game. Anji Kuen. Kaiba Sido launched a challenge to Anshiba Kuen with full fighting spirit. Chapter, 15. Oh, come on then. Anyway, I have no right to refuse this duel. I accept your challenge. Come on, President Kaiba. Sido Kaiba challenged him. Of course, and Shiba Kuen couldn't refuse the challenge. Otherwise, wouldn't he be slapping Kaiba in the face? Who knows what would happen if you hit Kaiba in the face? Maybe being directly disqualified from the competition by Kaiba using his power would be a minor offense. Therefore, Anshi Kuen chose to accept Kaiba's challenge with great sincerity. Humph. Not bad. Come on then. Anji Kuen. Let me see your true strength. Sido Kaiba shouted with satisfaction. Duel. X2. With the words of Anshiba Kuen and Sido Kaiba almost in unison, the duel between the two officially began. Anshijin LP, 4000. Kaiba Sido LP, 4000. I'll attack first. Draw a card. In this deck, although I didn't add my card secret, I did add that ritual monster card that is as powerful as a god. Anji Kuen, please obediently become the whetstone for me to master my new power. Kaiba was the first to bear the brunt, seizing the initiative to operate the game. Looking at the card drawn in his hand, Kaiba thought about his operation layout in the first round. If the opponent can defeat Yugi, he must be very strong. I can't deal with each other the same way I deal with those weak fish. I summon Y Dragon Head in attack position, then cover two cards and end the turn. Kaiba first summoned the Flying Dragon Head of Osiris, the three mechanical gods, on his own field, and then covered two cards in his back field before directly ending his turn. Y Dragon Head slash four stars light mechanical type slash attack power, 1500 slash defense power, 1600. It's my turn, draw a card. Umshi Kuen said as he drew a card from his deck. The magic card is activated. Predation event. Through the effect of this card, I can special summon the predatory plant Du Pine Hydrozoa in my hand to the field. After that, I can also summon the predatory plant B Orchid Scorpion from the deck. Add the card to your hand. Anji Kuen first activated his old friend from the card in his hand, the magic card predator activity. With the activation of this magic card, a strange-looking predatory plant covered with leaf-shaped green tentacles appeared on the scene. Superior. Predatory plant do pine polyps slash five stars slash dark slash plant family slash attack power, 800 slash defense power, 2300. Normally summons the bee orchid scorpion. Discard the predatory plant cordyceps sinensis in my hand. Special summon the predatory plant saracenia cobra in the deck. Scorpion-shaped predatory plants and snake-shaped predatory plants appeared on Unshi Kuen's field together. Predatory plant B Orchid Scorpion slash 3 stars slash dark slash plant family slash attack power, 1200 slash defense power, 800. Predatory plant pitcher plant cobra slash 3 stars slash dark slash plant family slash attack power, 1000 slash defense power, 1500. The effect of predator plant Saracenia cobra. When this card is specially summoned by Predator Plant Monster, I can retrieve a Fusion Magic card from the deck, and I will add Fusion to my hand. 
Through the effect of Serpentine Cobra, Anji Kuen retrieved another fusion magic card from the deck. Is it coming? A cold glint flashed in Sido Kaiba's eyes. He had been waiting for the moment when the other party would perform the fusion summons. Come on. President Kaiba. Meet my powerful fusion monster. Fusion activates. I will fuse the bee orchid scorpion and serpentine cobra on my field. Luring insects with seductive fragrance. Two seeds of chaos growing in hell. Now. Become one here. Fusion summons. Appear. The forbidden flower that blooms alone and silently. The predatory plant chimera. A whirlpool symbolizing fusion emerged on the field. Thick green vines first stretched out from the whirlpool. Then, the extremely huge Rafflesia plant body also rushed out of the fusion whirlpool under the pull of the green vines and appeared in front of Anji Kun. On the field. Predatory plant chimera slash seven stars dark plant family slash attack, 2500 slash defense, 2000. Humph. At this moment. The covered trap card activates. Torrent burial. Destroy all the monsters on the field. As soon as the predatory plant chimera appeared, Sido Kaiba immediately turned over the ambush card in his backfield. In an instant, a huge torrent appeared, rushing towards the monsters on Kaiba and Anshiba's field like a ferocious beast. Buried in a torrent? Die together? Anshiba Kuen exclaimed with some confusion. He didn't understand why Sido Kaiba wanted to activate a card of mutual destruction like Riptide Burial. Then he summoned an unnecessary monster on the field that would only give away heads in vain. No. Another cover card in my backfield is also activated. Subspace Material Teleporter. Target one face-up monster on your field, and banish that face-up monster until the end phase. I use subspace material transmission device to allow Y Dragon Head to enter the subspace and avoid the activation of Riptide Burial. Hearing Anshiba Kuen's words, Sido Kaiba immediately denied it, and then turned over another card in his backfield. A strange purple light suddenly enveloped Wailongto's body, and Wailongto's figure instantly disappeared within the scope of the torrent burial. While the predatory plant monsters that were still in place were swallowed by the raging torrent, no matter how they after struggling, the final result was just to be buried in the torrent. TCH. Have you grasped the characteristic of predatory plants that have no resistance? In this way, you can solve the problem of chimera flowers and plants that will cause him a lot of trouble. And Shibakuen muttered inwardly with some displeasure. The effect of the chimera flower plant is indeed somewhat restraining Sido Kaiba who takes the strong attack route. After all, even if your attack power is high, you still have to deduct 1000 attack power before you come back. Attack me with a monster with 1000 attack power. Then I activate the effect of the predatory plant chimera. If this card is sent to the graveyard, it can only be activated in the next preparation phase. I can add one fusion magic card from the deck to my hand. Anji Kuen had no choice but to use the last words effect of the chimera flower plant to retrieve a fusion magic card in his next preparation phase. Cover a card, my turn ends. Anji Kuen looked at the cards in his hand, and finally covered a card, ending the turn. Your end phase. My Y Dragon head has also returned from subspace. Return to my field again. Come back. Y Dragon head. Under President Kaiba's loud call, purple light flashed again, and the flying dragon head of Osiris, the three mechanical gods, appeared again on President Kaiba's field. It's my turn. Draw a card. Since it was his turn, Kaiba drew another card from the deck. Chapter, 16. I summon ex-leader Ganon. Sido Kaiba summoned the half-body cannon of Obelisk, the three phantom gods of machinery, on his own field. A robot with blue and yellow colors and two cannon barrels on its shoulders appeared on the field, standing together with the flying dragon head of Osiris that Kaiba had summoned before. X-Boss Cannon slash 4 Stars slash Light Machine Type slash Attack Power, 1800 slash Defense Power, 1500. Another Alliance Monster that can be combined. And Shiba Kuen said silently, he clearly remembered that Sido Kaiba used XYZ Alliance Monsters in the original Yu-Gi-Oh! DM drama. 
Enter the battle stage. X-Boss Cannon launches a direct attack on the opponent. The blue and yellow mechanical monster immediately pointed the barrel on its shoulder at Anji Kuen and began to gather energy at the barrel. Yellow light also shone from the barrel of the leader cannon. Sorry. Before that, I activated the covered trap card. Prey Bud Animation Card. Through the effect of this card, I can special summon three predatory plant creatures in defense position on my field. Seeing that something was not going well, Anji Kuen immediately turned over the trap card covering his backfield, Predator Germination. Prey Sprout only appears in one animation card in Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc V. Although this card has not been OCG yet, the cards printed by Fusion Stone actually have this animation card. As Anji Kuen's trap card was activated, three seed-type monsters with big mouths opened and bodies shaped like tadpoles broke through the soil and appeared on Anji Kuen's field. Predatory plant derivative slash one star slash dark slash plant type slash attack power, zero slash defense power, zero. Three predatory plant derivatives kept jumping around the field, and their jumping behavior obviously interfered with the X-Cannon leader who was aiming at the target and preparing to launch the cannon. The X-Cannon leader directly stopped accumulating energy, and the two barrels on its shoulders were lowered again. It chose to wait for the order from its operator Sido Kaiba. Then X-Cannon leader and Y-Dragon head attack the two predatory plant tokens on the opponent's field. The appearance of derivatives prevented him from making direct attacks, so Sido Kaiba could only choose to deal with the derivatives on Anshiba's field first. And commanded his two mechanical monsters to attack the two monsters on the opponent's field. Derivatives only. X-Boss Cannon once again raised the barrel of the cannon on his shoulder, and fired an Italian cannon at a token on Anshijin's field, directly blasting the predatory plant token into pieces, causing a tragic death. Compared to the slightly violent attack method of X-Leader Cannon, Y-Leader Cannon's attack method is relatively gentle. It fires a laser cannon from its own mouth, directly knocking out the body of plants that prey on plant derivatives. Evaporated. Not even a little bit of ash is left. My turn is over. After commanding the two monsters to attack, Sido Kaiba also ended his turn directly. In the preparation phase, since I activated the effect of the predatory plant Chimera Grandiflora last turn, I can add a fusion card from the deck to my hand. Anshi Kuen first retrieved a fusion card from his deck, preparing to keep it in his hand for future trouble. On my turn, I draw a card, and I normally summon the predatory plant Drosera on my field. After Anji Kuen drew a card from the deck, Anji Kuen summoned a lizard-shaped predatory plant monster based on a sundew on his field. Predatory plant Drosera lizard slash two stars slash dark plant type slash attack power, 600 slash defense power, 200. The effect of the sundew umbrella lizard is activated, and you can only activate it during your main phase. I don't need to fuse, I can just use this card on the field to directly perform a fusion summon. I use the predatory plant Drosera on my field itself and the predatory plant derivatives on my field as fusion materials. Fusion Summon Without further ado. Come to my field. Predatory plant chimera flowers and plants. At Anjikuen's loud call, the huge overlord flower-shaped predatory plant waved its several thick green vines through the merging vortex and appeared on Anjikuen's field. Predatory plant chimera slash 7 stars dark plant family slash attack, 2500 slash defense, 2000. The effect of chimera flower is activated. I choose President Kaiba to exclude the Y-Dragon head on your field. Anjikuen first activated the Chimera Flower effect, and a green vine that was swung as fast as five lightning whips appeared above the Y-Dragon head. And then smashed it down hard, directly knocking the Y-Dragon head from the once handsome dragon-shaped robot was smashed into a flat piece of iron. Entering the battle stage. Let the Chimera Flowers attack X-Boss Cannon on President Kaiba's field. In the attack phase, Chimera's effect is activated. Until the end of the round, the opponent's monster's attack power will be reduced by 1000, while Chimera's own attack power will increase by 1000. Come on! Chimera's Predatory Plant Chimera Flower Slash Attack 2500-3500 Slash Defense, 2000 X-Boss Cannon Slash Attack, 1800800 Slash Defense, 1500 
the thick green vines hit the leader Ganon hard on the seahorse field. The huge power from the vines also made the leader Ganon follow in the footsteps of Y Dragon Head and turned into a flat piece of iron. Aha! Uh -huh. The monster was destroyed, and a large amount of overflow damage was also applied to President Kaiba. Under the simulation of the damage simulation function of the dual disc, President Kaiba couldn't help but let out a groan. Kaiba Sido LP, 1300. After the boxing ended, and Shibakuen quickly ended his round and gave the right to turn to Sido Kaiba again. You're doing quite well. You can actually deduct so many basic points from me at once. Interesting. Anji Kuen. Show me more of your power. My turn. Draw a card. Although more than half of his basic points were deducted at once, President Kaiba didn't have any look of frustration on his face. What exists instead is excitement, enthusiasm and a fighting spirit. I cover a card in the backfield, and then activate the magic card. The life-cutting treasure, I can draw five cards from my hand from the deck, but after the activation of this card, the fifth one of my own at the beginning of the preparation phase, I need to send all the cards in my hand to the graveyard. Kaiba, who was full of fighting spirit and still in a rage, directly took out a life-killing treasure called one of the three major treasures in Yu-Gi-Oh DM. The effect of this card, draw cards from the deck until the number of cards in your hand reaches 5. At the beginning of your fifth preparation phase after this card is activated, send all cards in your hand to the graveyard. Compared with the effect of being weakened to only three full cards after being transformed, and the damage received by the opponent after activation will still be zero. And all cards in the hand must be sent to the grave during the round phase, the original version of the life-cutting treasure is just as effective. It's ridiculously strong. The original version of this card has virtually no side effects, because after activating this card, you can often win before your fifth preparation phase comes. Chapter, 17. I'll activate a magic card from my hand first. Bargain shopping. I'll discard an 8-star monster card from my hand. Draw two cards from the deck. After activating the Lifesaver treasure card, one of the three treasure cards, Kaiba Sido activated the magic card bargain shopping from his hand. And threw an 8-star monster card in his hand into the graveyard in exchange for the opportunity to draw two cards. Next. I'll activate a magic card in my hand. Fusion. Looking at the two cards he just drew, Kaiba's mouth corners inadvertently rose a little, as if he was very satisfied with the two cards he had drawn. Soon, Kaiba put away his raised mouth corners and directly slapped the card he just drew on his dual disc. Anji Kuen. Let me show you the strongest and most ultimate dragon ever summoned by fusion. I will use the three blue eyes white dragons in my hand as fusion materials. Perform a fusion summon. Perhaps because of the fusion of his wife, Kaiba's voice became extremely excited at this moment, and with Kaiba's excited words, three pure white blue eyes white dragon phantoms appeared on the field. Beyond the boundaries of time and space, come. Perfect, invincible, the strongest ultimate dragon. Blue eyes ultimate dragon. When Kaiba finished the last sentence of the summoning words full of excitement, the three monsters flew into the fusion vortex that appeared out of thin air in the air. The fusion vortex kept spinning, and the figures of the three monsters began to gradually overlap in the constantly spinning vortex. Finally, with the sudden appearance of a very dazzling light, a huge monster with the huge body of a blue eyes white dragon and three blue eyes white dragon heads flew out of the light and landed on Kaiba's field. And this monster is the wife of Kaiba Sido in the three in one version. Blue eyes ultimate dragon. Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon Slash 12 Stars Light Dragon Attack 4500 Slash Defense 3800 Is it actually the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon? It really deserves to be the DM era with so many talents. This card game is all about the soul. However, it's also fortunate that the Fusion Summon is not the real Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. Otherwise, with my half-formed Predator Plant deck, I'm afraid it's not impossible for the opponent to kill me with a flat attack in one round. And Jijun looked at the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon on Kaiba's field, which had an extremely huge body and exuded a sense of oppression all the time, and couldn't help but mutter to himself. Now. 
Kaiba only has one last card left, and that card should be the killer that Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon needs to successfully defeat Chimera on my field. Otherwise, even if the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon has an attack power of 4500, it will die together with my Chimera. Anji Kuen turned his mind and looked at the last card in Kaiba's hand. He couldn't help but be a little curious about what kind of card President Kaiba would use next to help Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon get rid of Chimera. Ha ha ha. Anji Kuen. Let me show you the powerful power of the Ultimate Dragon. Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon will attack the plant eating Chimera. Destroy that ugly plant monster. Destroy the White Light of Destruction. Sido Kaiba waved his hand very casually and directly ordered the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon on his field to attack the Chimera on Anji Kuen's field. White light leaked out from the three dragon heads of Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon, which gathered energy. The energy soon gathered. At this time, Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon also opened its three dragon mouths and fired a white light cannon with a breath of destruction at Chimera on the field of Anji Kuen. It actually hit directly. The effect of Chimera is activated. This card can be activated when it fights with the opponent's face-up monster. Until the end of the round, the opponent's monster's attack power decreases by 1000, and Chimera's attack power increases by 1000. Seeing Kaiba Sido summon the monster and do nothing, he directly launched a suicidal attack on himself. Although Anji Kuen was a little confused, he couldn't just watch Blue Eyes' ultimate dragon attack so he immediately activated the effect of Chimera. Increasing the attack power of Chimera and reducing the attack power of Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon slash attack, 45003500 slash defense, 3800. Predator Plant Chimera Flower Grass slash attack, 25003500 slash defense, 2000. Under the effect of Chimera Flower Grass, the attack power of the two has also reached the same level. On the field, facing the terrible light cannon full of destructive breath, Chimera Flower Grass was not panicked at all. Countless thick green vines quickly extended from behind it, and the green vines were entangled one by one under the control of Chimera Flower Grass. Soon, before the light cannon officially attacked, Chimera Flower Grass erected an airtight vine wall composed of countless green vines entangled in front of itself. But. The way Chimera Flower Grass defended against the attack of Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon could not help but make people full of doubts. A wall made of plants. Can it really block the opponent's light cannon attack? Is it true that the wall and the people will not be shot through by a single beam of light? Next, the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon's white light cannon, which was full of destructive aura and looked extremely terrifying, directly hit the vine wall of the Chimera flower plant. A surprising scene appeared. The scene in my imagination did not appear. The white light cannon of the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon didn't blast directly through the vine wall of the Chimera flower plant. Instead, it was blocked from the outside by the vine walls. The vine wall that Chimera uses its tentacles to form is much stronger than it looks on the outside. But at this moment, I activate the last card in my hand. Quick attack magic card. The forbidden scripture activates. Seeing that the chimera flowers on Anshiba's field actually blocked the blue eyes ultimate dragon's attack for a moment, Kaiba immediately activated the last quick attack magic card in his hand. Through the effect of this card. The effects of cards on the field other than this card are negated, and the damage calculation for that battle will be based on the original monster's attack power and defense power. That is to say, the attack power of my Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon will return to 4500. And the attack power of your plant monster will return to 2500. Go on. Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. Perfect. Invincible. The strongest. Destructive jet of white light. Sido Kaiba shouted out the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon's attack moves again. At the same time, the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon on the field seemed to have suddenly taken a stimulant. The white light cannon ejected from the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon's mouth actually it has doubled in size again. Chapter, 18 The white light cannon that was twice as strong as the one that was ejected from the mouth of the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon was no longer able to fight against the vine wall created by Chimera Planta as before. 
The white light cannon directly devoured the vine wall and the chimera planta itself behind it. The chimera planta was destroyed by the attack of the blue eyes ultimate dragon. The basic points of Anjijun also dropped rapidly at this moment. Anjijun LP, 4000200. Ahem. Daijuhua died again, I mourned for a second. Okay, the last word's effect of chimera planta after death is activated. In the next preparation phase, I can add one fusion magic card from the deck to the hand card. After feeling heartbroken for chimera planta for a second, and Jijun immediately activated the last word's effect of Chimera Planta, and retrieved a card in the next preparation phase. Anji Kuen. This is the ultimate dragon born from fusion. It is not something that your third-rate plant monsters can easily defeat. My turn is over. Haima Sido's words were obviously a little proud of the huge amount of damage he brought to Anji Kuen at once. Well, President Kaiba, you are wrong. I admit that the plant monsters are indeed very weak, far inferior to the powerful dragon brothers. But. It is precisely because the plant monsters are very weak that they have developed all kinds of wonderful abilities in order to survive. In order to adapt. In order to reproduce. Listening to Kaiba Sido's proud and arrogant words, Anji Kuen shook his head, and then refuted Kaiba in a serious tone. Well then. Next, please open your eyes, President Kaiba, and get ready to see the horror of the predatory plants. My turn. In the preparation phase, with the effect of Chimera Grandiflora, I will add the fusion search in the deck to my hand. Draw a card. I activate the magic card in my hand. Predator activity. Through the effect of this card, I will first special summon the predatory plant Fly Hellgrass in my hand to my field in defense position, and then I will retrieve the predatory plant Jar Plant Ant from the deck. Under Anshijin's operation, a weird-looking plant monster that looks a bit like a big mouth flower appeared on Anshijin's monster field. Predatory plant Fly Hellgrass slash 2 slash Dark Plant Attack, 400 slash Defense, 800. Fly Hellgrass effect activated. Once per turn, I can activate it by targeting a face-up monster on the opponent's field, and place a predation counter on that monster. I naturally choose the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon on your field. Go, Fly Hell Grass. At the command of Anjijun, Fly Hell Grass immediately jumped in front of the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. Compared with the huge Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon, the size of Fly Hell Grass itself is like an inconspicuous ant. As long as the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon casually raises its foot and lightly steps on it, Fly Hellgrass will immediately die. Even so, the Fly Hellgrass itself did not look scared at all, even though it was facing a behemoth that was many times bigger than itself. It opened its mouth with sharp teeth and bit the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon's leg fiercely. With a click, the Fly Hellgrass's teeth were shattered by the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon's hard body. Seeing that biting was useless, the Fly Hellgrass fired another seed at the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon's belly. The seed grew rapidly in mid-air and soon grew into a tadpole-shaped seed monster with cracked sharp teeth and a sharp mouth, which was the predation indicator. The predation indicator was directly attached to the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon's body like a parasite. No matter how hard the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon tried to shake it off its body, it was useless. The predation plant derivative was still firmly attached to the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon's body. Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon slash predation counter, 0 1 12 star 1 star. Sido Kaiba suddenly had a very ominous premonition. Then. I activate the effect of the predator plant Hydrozoa in the graveyard. I can release one monster on the opponent's field with a predation counter. Special summon this card in the graveyard. Come on. I will release the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. Special Summon Hydrozoa in the graveyard. What? Sido Kaiba was stunned when he heard the words release the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon in Anji's words. He watched the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon on his field begin to disintegrate strangely, and finally disappeared from the field without a trace. And as the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon disappeared, a strange-looking monster with several disgusting green tentacles appeared on Anji's field. Plant Eating Lupin Hydra Dragon slash 5 stars slash dark plant attack, 800 slash defense, 2300. 
What, you actually used my blue eyes ultimate dragon as a sacrifice to summon such a weak monster? Damn it. I'll remember you, Anji Kuen. Sido Kaiba was confused for a long time about his three-in-one wife being turned into a plant monster with a low appearance by Anji Kuen, and then gradually recovered. After glaring at Anji Kuen fiercely, he continued to shout at Anji Kuen with gritted teeth. Ah uh, ah. Uh. This can't be blamed on me, after all, this is the best way to deal with the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. Hearing this, Anji Kuen whispered helplessly, what could he do? He was also helpless. He didn't have any good removal cards, so he could only use prey counters to free the board. Activate the magic card. Fusion, I use the fly hellweed and do pine polyps on my field as fusion materials. Fusion. Fusion summon. Come out. Predatory plant chimera grandiflora. It was a familiar operation again, the fat chimera flower shook its body in green vine tentacles, and once again appeared on Anji Jun's field. Predatory plant chimera slash 7 stars dark plant family slash attack, 2500 slash defense, 2000. Oh, the third chrysanthemum. I'm a little tired of melting chrysanthemums all the time. I really want to melt pineapples, but it's a pity that he didn't give me the new card or the fusion gem. There are only three kinds of predatory plant fusion monsters that I can fuse and summon now, namely Chimera, Rhinoceros, and Trinidad Tridentus. The fusion conditions of Rhinoceros among these three are, it is also difficult to collect them all during this period, and once summoned by fusion, they are of little use. Although the fusion conditions required for the three-pointed hell flower god are much simpler than those of Rhinoceros. Requiring only three dark attribute monsters, the effects of the monsters are not as simple and crude as the chimera flower. The effect of the three-pointed hell flower god is only, which is more useful for surge attacks, and, in the Yu-Gi-Oh DM world. It is estimated that it can only cause special attacks on a few people. Therefore, my most commonly used main force is the chimera flower grass with the simplest fusion conditions and very powerful effects. But. It's not a big deal to keep summoning Chimera to fight. After all, there are only three fusion monsters. Once they are all gone in the duel, and once they can't be recycled, then there is really nothing. Nothing can be summoned. Thinking of this, Mr. Anji couldn't help but think of the powerful new predatory plant cards that had not been officially released before he traveled through time. The glandular grass wasp, the pitcher toad, and the sticky calamus mantises, pineapple insectivores, corn spirit wandering whales, and hungry poisonous predatory fusion dragons. Chapter, 19. Let's enter the battle stage next. Let's Chimera Hua Chao launch the final blow against President Kaiba. And Shiba waved his hand and ordered the overlord flower-shaped predatory plant monster on his field to attack Sido Kaiba, who no longer had any monsters on the field. The fat chimera also obeyed the order and controlled several thick green tentacles it had. The green tentacles shot at Sido Kaiba quickly and neatly like an arrow off the string. The covered trap card activates. Seeing the incoming attack, Sido Kaiba immediately put his hand on the dual plate and turned over his backfield. But at the same time as Kaiba's backfield cards were turned over, the chimera flower grass the attacks of several green vines he controlled also happened to hit Kaiba. Kicking up a large amount of sand and dust, making it impossible for Anji Kuen to see clearly what was happening on Kaiba's side. There is no harm in the smoke. Kaiba must have survived with the help of that Gaika. Although Anji Kuen couldn't see the specific situation on Kaiba's side, nor could he clearly see the true face of the open trap card in Kaiba's backcourt. Considering the famous law of smoke without harm, Anji Kuen felt that Kaiba was 100% Baishir avoided the attack of the Chimera flower plant and survived. Perhaps in order to verify Anji Kuen's idea, the dust and smoke dissipated not long after, but under the smoke, Sido Kaiba still stood very firmly in place. And his basic score did not change at all, while the Chimera flower grass the thick green tentacles penetrated deeply into the land around Sido Kaiba, perfectly avoiding Kaiba. Gate of counterattack, when the opponent's monster launches a direct attack, I can negate that attack and draw one card from the deck. Sido Kaiba slowly said the words he had just finished. Through the effect of counterattack gate, he not only successfully neutralized the Chimera flower plant's attack, 
but also drew the card he was sleeping in from the deck. The last white dragon monster in the group. It's actually the door to counterattack. And Shibakuen looked at the trap card counterattack gate in Kaiba's backcourt thoughtfully. In the original work, Kaiba's trap card was used in the duel with Blue God in the dark side of the theatrical version dimension. And this one the use of cards also led to the emergence of two famous scenes that will be very famous in later generations the floor card drawing and this is not a monster. It is a Kamida. I don't know what kind of card Kaiba drew through the effect of counterattack gate, but as long as it's not a Titan soldier or something like that. In the anime version of the Titan soldier, unless the card is liberated by stacking prey counters, me. I don't seem to have any other good way to deal with the giant god soldiers. Anzhijin whispered to himself that he still felt a little headache about the existence of the three phantom gods in the DM era. After all, compared with the three phantom gods in the anime version, they are nothing compared to the three phantom gods in the OCG. Hell, the anime version of the three fantasy gods has all kinds of resistances turned on. However, if you rely solely on the Chimera flower plant, you can still defeat most of the powerful monsters in the Kaiba deck. After all, at this time, President Kaiba only had the giant god soldier and the blue eyes ultimate dragon in his hands. These two monsters can compete with the Chimera flower. And Shibakuen continued to mutter to himself. Apart from the Titan weapon, one of the three phantom gods, he was really not afraid of Kaiba Sido. Kaiba Sido's strongest monster, Blue Eyes Ultra Dragon, could barely compete with Chimera. The big flowers and grasses all perish together. Of course, the only thing Anji Kuen is not afraid of is the Kaiba from the Dual City era. Of course, the Kaiba from the later period with all the technology, all the economic points, and all the card addiction points are accepted. Then I cover a card and the round ends. It's your turn, President Kaiba. Therefore, and Shibakuen, who had nothing to continue, quickly ended his turn and gave the right to turn to Sido Kaiba. My turn. It was Sido Kaiba's turn, which may be why the next draw was so important. Kaiba drew a card this time, and suddenly closed his eyes and put his hand on the top of the deck. Draw a card. With the powerful shout coming from Kaiba's mouth, Sido Kaiba directly drew a card from the deck, and a faint yellow stream of light also streaked through the air while Sido Kaiba was drawing the card. The magic card Pot of Desire is activated. I can draw two cards from the deck. Draw cards. The inhumane Pot of Desire was activated again, and Sido Kaiba directly drew two cards from the deck. Presumably, with the blessing of the desperate god draw buff, the two cards Sido Kaiba drew through the Pot of Desire will definitely be able to solve President Kaiba's urgent needs. This. This card is. Looking at the newly drawn card in his hand, Sido Kaiba's pupils suddenly dilated. He was really surprised that he got this card. He wanted to find a way to make the ritual monster card appear in his hand. He also came to find Anami. Jijun's true purpose for the duel. Ha 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 ha, I understand, it turns out you want to play too, so go ahead. I'll activate the magic card from my hand. Suddenly, Sido Kaiba seemed to suddenly understand something. After letting out a devilish laugh, Kaiba directly slapped one of the two cards drawn on his dual plate. The card that Kaiba slapped on the dual disc was called Chaos Form. Next, let us rewind the storyline back to the time when Kaiba rushed to the Inca factory after receiving the news from Keipei. Kihiai, how is the situation now? As soon as Sido Kaiba, who was wearing a windbreaker, stepped into the workshop of the Inca factory, he immediately asked his brother Kepiai about the current situation. Report to Nissan, nothing special happened. In response to Kaiba's question, Kepiai shook his head and said no. Well, then Kepiai, please take me to see that ritual monster card that is full of weird things. Knowing that nothing special happened, Kaiba breathed a sigh of relief. After rubbing Kepiai's extremely thick hair with his hands, he asked Kepiai to take him to see the weird ritual monster card. Got it, Nissan. Under the leadership of Kepiai, Kaiba quickly arrived at the main workshop where the cards were created, and saw the cards lying quietly on the central table that had been specially cleared, and covered by a transparent glass vessel. Is this the ritual monster card? 
It really looks like the special blue-eyed monster that appeared in the dream. Kaiba slowly walked to the table, and through the transparent glassware, carefully observed the cards lying quietly in the center of the vessel. The names and effects were blank, while the card pictures were printed. He owns a dragon monster that looks very much like his favorite blue-eyed white dragon. Although the card in front of him was isolated from the outside world by the glassware, Kaiba could see through the glass and deeply feel the strong attraction this card brought to him. Chapter 20 Um Under the influence of the strong attraction, Kaiba focused all his attention on Ka, who was lying quietly in the glass vessel. As a result, as he watched, Kaiba's eyes suddenly became confused and stunned, and his body began to lean forward slightly, unconsciously pressing his hand on the glass vessel covering the card. Nissan. Nissan. What's wrong with you? Ha. Huh. What's wrong with me? It wasn't until Kepi issued repeated reminders and stretched out his hand to gently tug at the hem of Kaiba's clothes that Kaiba recovered from the dazed state just now, as if waking up from a dream. Ha. Huh. Nissan, this card is really weird. This card actually put you in such a dazed state, Nissan. Seeing that Kaiba had successfully recovered from the stunned state just now, Kepi breathed a sigh of relief. As a brother-in-law, he was really worried that his Nissan would fall to the ground like the previous researchers. And judging from the way his Nissan went crazy without even touching the card, Kepi seriously suspected that if he touched the card in his Nissan, it might be worse than the previous researchers. Not only would he faint, but it would be possible to die on the spot. Big filial brother. Kihiai, please open this thing. Kaiba tentatively turned his attention to the card in the glass container again. This time, the card in the glass container did not give him a strong attraction like before. After a moment of silence, Kaiba finally decided to seal it. Open the glassware holding the card and touch the card with your own hands to see. But Nissan. This card is really weird and dangerous. Seeing that his brother actually chose to touch that weird ritual monster card with his own hands, Kepi was a little confused. Kihiai, all the weird mysteries in this world can actually be explained by scientific principles. If we encounter strange events that cannot be explained by science, it means that we haven't found the corresponding scientific principles yet. Kaiba did not directly answer Kepi's words. Instead, he held his head high and said something that sounded quite cool. I understand. Nissan. I'll open it right now. Guepei thought about the truth spoken by his brother in his heart. Although he did not fully understand the meaning of this sentence, he could hear his brother's determination from this sentence, so he followed his brother's instructions. Following the order, Kepi opened the glass container containing the card. This monster. The more I look at it, the more it looks like blue eyes. Kaiba slowly reached out to the ritual monster card and picked it up from the table. The expected scene of Kaiba falling to the ground did not appear. Kaiba still stood upright on the spot and kept looking through it. Holding the ritual monster card in his hand. What is the name of this monster? Kepi, how was this card created? Kaiba carefully observed the ritual monster card from beginning to end, but still couldn't find any useful information on the card so Kaiba turned around and asked Kepi. It's like this. The creation process of this card is also very weird. When I created it, I only used the information you gave Nissan, a dragon monster that looks very much like a blue-eyed white dragon. But just when the operator was about to continue when making other settings, the machine suddenly started to operate strangely and automatically, and the card slipped out of the conveyor belt of the operating machine. Kepi recalled the scene at that time, and after organizing the language in his mind, he said this to Kaiba. Wait. There are words. On this ritual card. Kaiba, who didn't get any effective information from Kepi's words, could only turn his attention to the ritual monster card in his hand again. But this time I looked at it, it didn't matter if I didn't look at it. I was shocked when I looked at it. Kaiba was suddenly surprised to find that there was something wrong with this card. In the card name area of this ritual monster card, there were actually some things that really wanted to be fooled. The same text was blurred to the point of being unclear. Kaiba also subconsciously stretched out his fingers, trying to erase the blurry stuff and see the real words on it. Where is this place? 
Sido Kaiba looked back at his dark surroundings in great surprise. He was clearly observing cards in the printing card factory before, but the next second, he suddenly came to this ghost place. Fooling Xuanxu. Who is responsible for this? Is it Gurus? Sido Kaiba is indeed Sido Kaiba. Even if he comes to a place that is completely unfamiliar to him, he still cannot change the high spirit and confidence in his bones. Sido Kaiba shouted loudly while guessing in his heart who brought him to this world. His main suspect was the Guru's group that was highlighted by the woman who gave him the God card. Suddenly, Sido Kaiba seemed to have seen something, and he suddenly stopped shouting loudly, because. In front of Kaiba, a pair of blue dragon eyes as bright as diamonds slowly emerged from the darkness. Opened slowly. As the blue dragon eyes slowly opened, the surrounding dark environment also changed drastically at this time. For example, countless blue crystals suspended in midair, as bright as diamonds, suddenly appeared in the darkness. All the blue dragon eyes opened, and the countless blue crystals suspended in the dark environment also burst out with intense light at this time. What the hell is going on? Isn't this unscientific? At this time, Kaiba was really stunned, Kaiba was really stupid, Kaiba was really confused, this night, Kaiba Sido really grew up. Kaiba was still talking to himself, and the blue crystal that was originally suspended in the dark environment was already shining almost brightly, and the dazzling light gradually dimmed. But after passing the previous under the foreshadowing of a flash of bright light, the figure of the true owner of the blue crystal and blue dragon eyes gradually appeared in the extremely dark space. A dragon monster that looked very much like a blue-eyed white dragon appeared in front of Kaiba. The opponent had dragon wings that were full of technology and looked extremely smooth and dazzling against the darkness. It has a smooth and dazzling outer armor, and a slender tail is also trailing behind it. A pair of blue dragon eyes located on the head are always exuding a frightening and very dangerous aura. Pure white dyed with chaos, the ultimate of the ultimate dragon, the high-spirited white dragon appeared in front of Sido Kaiba with an extremely powerful posture. Chapter 21 Sido Kaiba stood there and stared at the giant dragon that looked like a blue-eyed white dragon that appeared in front of him out of thin air, his eyes full of surprise. Roar the seahorse stared at the giant dragon, and the giant dragon also stared at the seahorse, observing the tiny human in front of him with extremely curious eyes. The giant dragon was curious about why the human in front of him was not as panicked as the previous humans. Roar Suddenly, the giant dragon let out a low roar that was obviously surprising. After the roar, the huge dragon head quickly approached the seahorse and began to look at the seahorse more carefully. For some reason, it always felt that there was something about the seahorse that made him it feels very familiar. Call. After being surprised, Kaiba took a deep breath and returned to his usual calm demeanor. He quietly looked at the huge dragon head that slowly came in front of him and kept sizing him up. Although Kaiba's appearance has become much calmer, Kaiba's heart is not as calm as his appearance. At this time, Kaiba is constantly hypnotizing himself in his heart, telling himself that the giant dragon he saw in front of him is just a, a very high-quality virtual projection is not real. There is no real dragon in the world. You must believe in science. Kaiba slowly exhaled a breath of turbid air again. In order to prove that the giant dragon in front of him was really just a virtual projection, Kaiba, by some strange combination of circumstances. Slowly stretched out his hand towards the huge dragon head in front of him and directly put his own his hand was placed on the dragon's extremely smooth forehead. The giant dragon couldn't help but be stunned when he felt the seahorse put his hand on his forehead. Are all humans so brave nowadays? Do they all like to seek death so much? As we all know, the butt of a tiger cannot be touched, and the forehead of the white dragon of the blue eyes family cannot be touched even more. Dragons are all proud species, and the forehead symbolizes the dignity of the dragon. If you touch it, you are not openly challenging the majesty of the dragon. Slap the dragon in the face. If you really want to touch it, you can only touch it with the people closest to you, not just some rotten fish or shrimp. But now, a tiny human touched his forehead without his consent. As the second head of the Blue Eyes family, how could he suffer such humiliation and grievance? 
We must get this face back. With this idea in mind, the giant dragon was ready to raise his head to show off the little human in front of him that he didn't know how to admire. Even though the other person had an aura that made him feel familiar and close, it also makes colors visible. This. Seems to be real. It's not a virtual projection. Kaiba stroked the dragon's smooth forehead back and forth with his hand, and even tapped the dragon's forehead. Finally, he came to an extremely horrifying result. The dragon in front of him was probably real, not a virtual one. Artifacts created by projection. This may be another dream. But. I have to say, this is really a beautiful and powerful dragon. Kaiba shook his head, muttering to himself, and gently stroked the dragon's extremely smooth forehead with his hand again. This feeling. It was Kaiba's seemingly ordinary caressing action that made the dragon, who was about to raise his head, suddenly stop his movements. The dragon's eyes widened in surprise, and it finally remembered where the familiar feeling it felt from the seahorse came from. This familiar feeling comes from. However, just like Tang Monk traveled to the West to obtain Buddhist scriptures, the deceitful Buddha would never let Tang Monk get it easily. Naturally, the author, who is in the late stages of laziness and cancer, would not let such a newly dug hole be filled in hastily. So just when the dragon was about to take the next step, one-on-one -on -one communication with the seahorse, a sudden change occurred. A cyan gemstone fragment as translucent as crystal appeared out of thin air, and the cyan light radiating from the inside of the gemstone seemed extremely abrupt in the dark environment. What is that? Before the seahorse and the dragon could react, the cyan gem fragment instantly turned into a slender javelin. A stream of light flew past, and the javelin turned into a cyan gem was inserted straight into the inlay on the dragon's forehead. Blue gemstone. Roar. The javelin was inserted straight, and the giant dragon instantly let out a painful cry. The dragon also began to shake its head continuously, trying to shake off the javelin inserted into the blue gem on its forehead, but failed. After a long time, the javelin was not thrown off, but instead entered a lot of blue gems again. What? What's going on? Kaiba felt deeply that he could no longer understand what was happening in this so-called dream. From the extremely dark space at the beginning and the appearance of a giant dragon that looked very much like blue eyes, to the cyan gem fragments now. Appearing in an instant, the giant dragon was hit with great pain. Everything happened too suddenly and quickly. The white dragon is in pain. Is it the fault of the cyan gemstone? Kaiba, who had witnessed everything that happened, also knew the root cause of the dragon's pain. The root cause was the cyan gem fragment that appeared out of thin air. Sido Kaiba, who is a severe dragon cancer player himself, now sees a dragon monster that looks very much like his favorite blue-eyed white dragon, wails in pain. For Kaiba, it is like seeing a blue-eyed white dragon. He was wailing in pain, so it was impossible to say that Kaiba was not feeling uncomfortable. Hateful. Seeing the giant dragon moaning in pain as it was being tortured, the somewhat angry Kaiba couldn't help gritting his teeth and clenching his fists. Although Kaiba wanted to help the dragon get out of that extremely painful situation, the tragedy was that he had nothing substantial to do to help the dragon now. Kaiba once again felt the so-called powerlessness. That child is controlled by an unknown entity. You have to find a way to help it. In a corner of this dark space, the figure of a silver-haired girl suddenly appeared. Her blue eyes looked towards the man who was still struggling, trying to escape from the insertion. The direction where the giant dragon and Sido Kaiba were standing with the javelin on the gem on his forehead. Please. Blue eyes white dragon. Please help that child and Seth Sama. The silver-haired girl clasped her hands in her fists and closed her eyes while speaking softly. As the girl's words ended, a white dragon that looked extremely sacred appeared behind the girl. After taking a look at the place where the girl had been looking, the white dragon also flapped its wings and headed towards the girl. He quickly flew in the direction of Kaiba Sito. Chapter 22 What Sound? Just when Kaiba felt extremely depressed because he could not help the dragon get out of pain, Kaiba suddenly heard a high-pitched and aggressive dragon roar that was obviously not made by the dragon in front of him. 
Kaiba slowly looked towards the place where the sound came from, and saw a huge figure that was extremely familiar to him flying quickly in his direction. The one who came was nothing else. It's none other than Kaiba's ace monster, the blue-eyes white dragon. The blue-eyed white dragon flew very fast, and it didn't take long for it to land less than 10 meters away from the seahorse and the giant dragon. Roar! Looking at the extremely painful fellow in front of him, the blue-eyed white dragon roared louder than the previous roar. Kaiba could even hear a lot of anger in the blue-eyed white dragon's roar this time. After the roar, the blue-eyes white dragon immediately rushed towards the giant dragon. Although the blue-eyes white dragon was significantly smaller in size compared to the giant dragon, the blue-eyes white dragon still chose to entangle with the blue-eyes white dragon without fear. Together. Blue Eyes White Dragon's original intention was to use force to directly knock the dragon unconscious, and then let Kaiba pull out the javelin inserted into the gem on the dragon's forehead. Originally, this was a very simple action for the Blue Eyes White Dragon, just subduing a young dragon who was acting irrationally. It was a trivial matter. But just when the Blue Eyes White Dragon opened its mouth and prepared to bite the dragon's neck to physically calm it down, another change occurred. As a ray of cyan light flashed from the blue gem on the dragon's forehead, the dragon's behavior of moving like crazy due to pain actually began to become regular. The giant dragon swung its tail like it was whipping a whip and hit the blue-eyed white dragon directly on the head. The blue-eyed white dragon was stunned by this blow and even opened his mouth. I forgot to close my mouth for a moment. Then, the giant dragon hit the blue-eyed white dragon with its body, which was one size larger than the blue-eyed white dragon and successfully knocked the blue-eyed white dragon back. Roar! The blue-eyed white dragon was beaten by the giant dragon, and his anger also rose, and he began to use his body organs to attack the giant dragon. But! The sad thing is that after a few rounds, the blue-eyes white dragon didn't take any advantage at all. On the contrary, the dragon, which was one size larger than the blue-eyes white dragon, had a much greater advantage. This can be clearly seen from the fact that the two parties collide with each other. After a few more rounds, Blue Eyes White Dragon also knew that continuing like this was not an option. As the dragon's control continued to deepen, the dragon's movements would only become more smooth and regular. So, Blue Eyes White Dragon prepared to make a desperate move next time. After swallowing several sharp claw attacks from the giant dragon, the Blue Eyed White Dragon quickly approached the dragon again. The slender tail stretched out and tightly wrapped around the dragon's body the sharp claws directly grabbed the dragon's hands. Restricting the dragon's movement the blue-eyed white dragon's head was also firmly biting at this time he broke the dragon's neck and once again deepened the restrictions on the dragon. It can be said that the blue-eyed white dragon has exhausted all his tricks in order to control the dragon's actions. The difference in size was always a pain. Knowing that he could not control the dragon's movements for long, the blue-eyed white dragon looked pointedly at the seahorse who had been eating melons and watching the show, and began to silently signal to the seahorse. Do you want me to help? Although blue-eyes white dragon didn't make any sound, Kaiba strangely understood what blue-eyes white dragon wanted to express. Humph. The goal is to remove the gem inserted in the opponent's head. I understand. Knowing what the blue-eyes white dragon wanted to express, Kaiba nodded to himself. It was time for him to appear. Then Kaiba clenched his fists, stretched out his long legs, and ran straight towards the two entangled dragons. Gudu. Kaiba, who had a lot of skill points in each area, quickly ran to the area at the feet of the two intertwined dragons. Kaiba raised his head and glanced at the giant dragon's tall body. He couldn't help but swallowed in surprise. But soon, Kaiba's eyes became sharp and firm. After moving his wrist, Kaiba moved like a rock climber. Through the spikes or bulges on the dragon's body, climbed towards the top of the dragon's head step by step. As time passed, the dragon struggled more and more frequently, and the blue-eyed white dragon gradually felt that he could not hold on anymore. But fortunately, Kaiba finally reached the dragon. Forehead Area Kaiba half squatted on the dragon's forehead, holding on to the only spike on the dragon's extremely smooth forehead with both hands. Fortunately, the blue-eyed white dragon also controlled the dragon's neck when he controlled it. 
Otherwise, if the dragon's neck is flicked casually, the seahorse will fly out because its feet are too slippery. This is the javelin turned into a blue gem. Pull it out. The seahorse that climbed onto the dragon's forehead immediately spotted the culprit's javelin that was causing the dragon to suffer so much pain. At this time, about half of the cyan javelin had been inserted into the blue gem on the dragon's forehead. A little cyan color also spreads through the javelin in the blue gem. So, while Kaiba carefully maintained a steady pace to prevent his body from sliding off the dragon's forehead because his feet were too slippery, he slowly stretched out his hand and grabbed the dragon. Green Javelin But just when Kaiba grasped the cyan javelin, the giant dragon broke free from the blue-eyed white dragon. The huge body crashed into the blue-eyed white dragon again. And this time the dragon broke away and hit because the dragon's forehead was too smooth, and Kaiba, who was walking extremely cautiously, couldn't control it at all. His foot slipped and his whole body fell directly towards the side of the dragon. Fortunately, Kaiba grabbed the cyan javelin inserted into the gem on the dragon's head before slipping, and did not completely fall from the dragon's head. Kaiba stood up again with the support of the cyan javelin. The best time. Is this time. Knowing that now was the best time and that he could no longer wait any longer, Kaiba immediately shouted loudly. The hand holding the javelin began to exert force instantly, and veins appeared on Kaiba's arms and wrists. Kaiba could definitely say he used all his strength to pull out the javelin from the blue gem on the dragon's forehead. One centimeter. Two centimeters. Three centimeters. Ten centimeters. Twenty centimeters. Thirty centimeters. Forty centimeters centimeter. One meter. Finally. Hard work pays off. Kaiba successfully pulled the cyan javelin out of the blue gem. As soon as the cyan javelin was pulled out by Kaiba, it instantly turned into a sky full of cyan particles floating around. And the cyan javelin disappeared out of thin air, which happened to make Kaiba lose the only one he had on hand to support himself from slipping. Props for going down. The seahorse that was caught with too much force slipped directly from the side of the dragon's forehead and fell off the dragon's head. The seahorse fell into the extremely deep darkness. Chapter 23 I can't die here. This was Kaiba's only thought after he felt his body falling vertically to the ground. He still has a lot of things to do. He has not yet established seahorse paradise all over the world. Not to mention defeating the game with your own hands and becoming the dual king. He couldn't just die in this nook and cranny of nowhere, let alone die for an extremely stupid reason. Maybe God responded to Kaiba's strong belief that he didn't want to die so easily. Just when Kaiba was about to help from free fall, the blue-eyed white dragon, who was always paying attention to Kaiba's condition, immediately stretched out his claws and caught him steadily. Seahorse in free fall it's the blue-eyed white dragon's dragon claw that saved me, dot. Feeling the dragon's claw belonging to Kaiba's blue-eyed white dragon under his body, the rescued Kaiba breathed a sigh of relief in his heart. But. What happened to the giant dragon? Kaiba, who was concerned about the situation of the giant dragon that looked very similar to blue eyes, immediately turned his head and looked at the dragon beside him. Probably because the javelin inserted into the gem on the dragon's head has been pulled out by the seahorse, the dragon's head is no longer swollen, the waist no longer hurts, and the legs are no longer sore. The whole dragon is obviously much more energetic. The giant dragon was even too energetic and kept making loud roars towards the sky, as if to celebrate its regained freedom. Roar the dragon, who was still extremely excited and roaring to celebrate his return to freedom, seemed to suddenly think of something. He stopped roaring in celebration and slowly moved his head in front of the seahorse standing on the claws of the blue-eyed white dragon. He let out a roar that clearly contained gratitude and excitement. Perhaps because of the excitement, the dragon's roar was so loud that it almost deafened Kaiba's ears. The blue-eyed white dragon, who was always paying attention to Kaiba's condition, keenly discovered Kaiba's discomfort with the loud roar of the dragon. So the blue-eyed white dragon flicked its tail and hit the giant dragon directly on the waist. While hitting, the blue-eyed white dragon was still very human. Hua glared at the dragon with fierce eyes. Ouch! 
The giant dragon who was inexplicably hit below the waist by his senior with his tail was obviously a little confused. What did he do? Why did his senior suddenly hit him? But the next second, the giant dragon, who was just about to raise his head to look for the theory of the blue-eyed white dragon, suddenly saw the fierce eyes of the blue-eyed white dragon, and his mind started to spin rapidly. The giant dragon immediately knew where his fault was, he had made too much mistakes. The sound was too loud as it got closer. Ever since, facing the seahorse, the giant dragon lowered its noble dragon head again, this time even lower than the last time. The dragon just looked at the seahorse with pitiful eyes, and the meaning behind it was unclear. You, it is nothing more than expressing the meaning of sorry to Kaiba. Well, it's okay. Looking at the giant dragon in front of him, although it was a huge monster, it looked a little like a child. Kaiba sighed helplessly, and then while speaking, he stretched out his hand and patted the dragon gently. Head. Maybe even Kaiba himself didn't realize it. Just when he reached out and patted the giant dragon's head, the corners of Kaiba's mouth started to rise slightly inadvertently. By the way, let me ask you. Are you willing to be my strength? Fight for me. Kaiba, who was patting the dragon's head, suddenly thought of a very incredible idea. After a short silence, Kaiba turned to look at the dragon in front of him with an extremely serious expression, and threw a, a very serious and important question. Roar. Hearing Kaiba's question, the dragon barely hesitated and nodded repeatedly to show his agreement. And while nodding, the clever dragon raised its head high and let out another loud dragon roar towards the sky. After roaring, it lowered its head again and came in front of the seahorse. Ha 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 ha. Very good. Become my powerful and loyal servant. With your power. Defeating Yugi will definitely not be a problem. Wait. Yugi. I will first severely defeat the opponent who defeated you. Then I'll defeat you with my own hands. Kaiba, who was imagining the wonderful scene of stepping on his defeated opponent in the future, let out a rather devilish laugh, and then stretched out his hand again and put it on the dragon's head. Just when Kaiba put his hand on the giant dragon's head again, an extremely strong golden light suddenly burst out from the area where Kaiba was lifted to the dragon. The strong golden light almost instantly enveloped the seahorse and dragon together with the blue-eyed white dragon. When Kaiba felt that the dazzling golden light in front of him gradually disappeared, and slowly opened his eyes again, the scene in front of Kaiba changed drastically. The environment that was originally shrouded in boundless darkness transformed into a bright factory. Environment. This is. A factory. Kaiba rubbed his eyes in disbelief. After reviewing the surrounding environment, Kaiba immediately determined that the current location was his factory. What's wrong? Nissan. Is there really something weird about this card? Kepi looked at his Nissan and started to look around strangely after holding the card. He couldn't help but start to worry about the condition of his Nissan. I'm fine. By the way, Kepi. How long have I touched this card? In response to Kepi's words, Kaiba replied that it was okay. After answering, Kaiba asked Kepi about the current world. Hmm. Nissan, it seems that you just touched this card not long ago. Only about 10 seconds have passed, right? Although he was wondering why his Nissan would ask such a question, Kepi still answered his brother truthfully. 10 seconds. Kaiba murmured softly. According to his feelings, at least half an hour had passed since he entered that dark space, but here, only a dozen seconds had passed. The only thing that can explain the truth of the problem is that the time flow rate in the two places is inconsistent, and there is a time difference. However, it is indeed what I thought. The essential reason whether I can get out of that place safely depends on the giant dragon. Next. Let me see your power. Kaiba looked at the card in his hand again. This may be the reason why Kaiba was recognized by the dragon. Kaiba did not see any vague words when he looked at it this time. The entire face of this ritual monster card was also officially displayed in front of Kaiba. Blue-eyed chaos dragon slash eight stars slash dark dragon attack, 3000 slash defense, zero slash effect, this card will not be the target of the opponent's effect and will not be destroyed by the opponent's effect. 
This card can only be activated when using Blue Eyes White Dragon as a ritual summon to declare an attack. Change the position of all monsters on the opponent's field. This effect causes the monster's attack power and defense power to change to zero. This turn, when this card attacks a defense position monster, it inflicts battle damage equal to the amount of attack power exceeding that defense power. Observing and observing, Kaiba suddenly discovered with surprise that there was actually a ritual magic card named Chaos Form behind this ritual card. It was just because these two cards were stuck together for too long that it caused Kaiba had not noticed it before. Powerful cards. With such power. I can definitely beat the game. Next, let's attack the person who defeated the game first. Kaihira. Call Isono and ask him to prepare a car. I have to find someone. With this idea in mind, Kaiba, who was full of fighting spirit, immediately asked Kepi to call his subordinate Isono and ask him to prepare a car. Because he is going to find the person who defeated the game next. He wants to use his newfound power. To defeat the opponent. He wants to prove it. He Sido Kaiba. Definitely much better than Muto Yugi. He is the real dual king. In a secret room in a huge fortress on the seabed, a cyan cracked gem was lying quietly in a glass vessel surrounded by many various detection instruments. But suddenly, the cyan gem, which had been as quiet as a stone, suddenly began to vibrate violently. While the gem vibrated, a little purple light also emerged from the cracks in the gem. At this time, the values on the surrounding instruments for detecting the condition of the gem also began to jump continuously. However, this phenomenon only lasted for a moment. After the time passed, the cyan gem returned to calmness again and lay motionless in the glass vessel. Is that weird stone moving again? Not long after the cyan gem regained its composure, a display screen on the nearby testing instrument suddenly lit up, and the image of a green-haired boy appeared on the display screen. It lasted for a moment, and then it became calm again. Did you move still? This is the first time I have seen such violent movement. I don't know what the reason is. The green-haired boy frowned slightly, he was full of confusion and confusion about this situation. Chapter 24 This is the end of the memories about Kaiba gaining new power. Next, let us turn our perspective back to the unfinished duel between Kaiba and Enshibakuen. Ritual Magic Card, Chaos Form I choose to exclude the level 8 blue-eyed white dragon in the graveyard as a ritual sacrifice. Perform a ritual summons. Break the shackles of the soul. Use an extremely powerful stance. Crush everything. Crush everything. Then let this game end. Oh. Ritual summons. Come down. Blue eyes. Chaos dragon. Following Kaiba's majestic declaration, Kaiba shouted loudly and slapped the ritual monster in his hand onto his dual disc. In an instant, a black whirlpool appeared in the monster area of Kaiba, and a huge white dragon flew out handsomely from the black whirlpool with a large amount of purple thunder. In the flashing thunder, the white dragon's body also began to change. The gorgeous armor appeared out of thin air and automatically attached to the white dragon's body. As the light wings of the armor attached to the dragon's wings unfolded, the ritual monster, with one knife, my younger brother Blue Eyes Chaos Dragon officially appears. Blue Eyed Chaos Dragon slash 8 stars Dark Dragon Attack, 3000 slash Defense, 0 slash Effect, this card will not be the target of the opponent's effect and will not be destroyed by the opponent's effect. One Blade Brother Blue Eyes Chaos Dragon Anji Kuen looked at the Blue Eyed Chaos Dragon on the seahorse field and couldn't help but exclaimed out of surprise. Blue Eyes Chaos Dragon, the ritual second brother of the Blue Eyes family, although it does not have double penetrating damage like its elder brother Blue Eyes Chaos Extreme Dragon. And has the abnormal effect of punching a child, but it has the ability to change the form of expression, forcing the offense and defense to zero. Finally, the killing effect of penetration is also a powerful effect that should not be underestimated. Regarding this type of card, if I remember correctly, Kaiba probably only used the Blue-Eyed Ritual Monster in the 20th Anniversary movie. As for the original Yu-Gi-Oh! DM, Kaiba seems to have never used any Ritual Monsters from the Blue-Eyes series. 
the Blue Eyes Chaos Dragon probably appeared in the comics like the Silent Magic Swordsman in the game. The monster card in the cutscene. After being surprised, and Shiba began to recall information related to the Blue Eyes Chaos Dragon, but after thinking for a long time. He only remembered that Kaiba had used the Blue Eyes Ritual Monster in the 20th Anniversary Theatrical Edition, and in the end he could only fight with the game's silent demon. The Swordsman is also temporarily regarded as a monster card that appeared in the comics. But. The Blue Eyes Chaos Dragon. Is not a target. Penetrating damage. I feel like 2000 basic points will be as brittle as paper. Muttering like this in a low voice, Anji Kun lowered his head and looked at the cards covered in his own backcourt. Only covered cards can give him a sense of safety and security. Ha ha ha. Next, enter the battle stage. Blue eyed chaos dragon. Attack the chimera flower and grass. After summoning the monster, Kaiba directly entered the battle stage and launched a direct attack on the chimera flowers and plants on Anshiba's field. The Blue Eyes Chaos Dragon effect activates. When this card attacks, the form of all monsters on the opponent's field will be changed, and the attack and defense of the monsters changed by this effect will become zero. Not only that, after the Blue Eyes Chaos Dragon activates this effect, it will also gain the effect of inflicting combat damage with an attack power exceeding that defense power value when it attacks a monster in defense position. Blue-Eyed Chaos Dragon Use your powerful power to ruthlessly crush that extremely weak plant monster. While letting the Blue-Eyes Chaos Light Wing attack the Chimera Flower, Kaiba also did not forget to activate the special effect of the Blue-Eyes Chaos Dragon. Changing the Chimera Flower into a defense position and reducing its attack and defense power to zero. In order to avoid the ending of Blue-Eyed Chaos being counter-killed by the effect of Chimera Reflesia. Chimera Flower slash attack, 25000 slash defense, 20000. On the field, after receiving the order from its user, the Blue-Eyed Chaos Dragon immediately let out a high-pitched dragon roar towards the sky. After the roar, the gorgeous light wings behind the blue-eyed chaos became even more shining. The blue-eyed chaos was like this spreading its light wings, it rushed straight towards the chimera flower plant, whose attack and defense power on Anji Kuen's field had already become zero. Kaiba is almost certain to win this attack against the blue-eyes chaos dragon, because even if the chimera flower plant activates its own effect at this time, Reducing the Blue Eyes Chaos Dragon's attack power by 1000, the Blue Eyes Chaos Dragon's remaining 2000 attack power will not be enough. It can still completely reduce Anji Kuen's health to zero. This duel. He, Kaiba, must be the ultimate winner. The covered quick attack magic card activates. The mysterious Chinese pot. Seeing the blue eyed chaos dragon spreading its wings of light and roaring towards the chimera reflesia on his field, Anji Kuen immediately turned over the cover card in his back field when he saw something bad happened. Through the effect of this card, I sacrificed the chimera flower on my field. My base points will be restored to the attack value of the chimera flower. A huge black pot appeared out of thin air, shoveling the huge body of the chimera into the pot. With the golden light emitted from the black pot, the chimera in the pot disappeared. Anshijin LP, 20004500. In that case, let the Blue Eyes Chaos Dragon launch a direct attack. The disappearance of the chimera flowers and plants meant that the Blue Eyes Chaos Dragon lost its attack target, so Kaiba had no choice but to order Blue Eyes Chaos to launch a direct attack on Angshi Kuen himself. I activate the effect of the Saracenia Ant in my hand. It can only be activated when the opponent's monster declares a direct attack. This card can be specially summoned from the hand to the field. Seeing the blue-eyed chaos dragon roaring towards him again, Anji Kuen immediately activated the effect of his Saracenia ant, and a plant predating monster created based on the Saracenia ant appeared on the field of Anji Kuen. Superior. Predatory plant Saracenia ant slash one star dark plant type slash attack, 100 slash defense, 600 slash effect, this card can only be activated when the opponent's monster declares a direct attack. This card is specially summoned from the hand. There is still one. Let the blue-eyed chaos dragon attack that ant monster. Use your effect to crush that stupid ant monster. 
Perhaps he was a little annoyed by Unshikun's random size-changing operation. Kaiba shouted, and once again ordered the Blue Eyes Chaos on his field to activate its effect, and then launched an attack on the monsters on Unshikun's field. Predating plant Saracenia ants slash attack power, 1000 slash defense power, 6000. Blue light cannons full of destructive aura erupted from the mouth of the blue-eyed chaos dragon, and soon enveloped the smaller ant monster on Anjikuan's field. Under the destructive blue light cannon, the ant monster had no chance of saving anything, and it was turned into ashes all over the sky in the blue light cannon. Anzhijin LP, 4500-1500 Chapter, 25 The effect of predator plant Saracenia is activated. After this card on the field is destroyed, I can retrieve a Predator card from the deck, and I add Predator B Orchid Scorpion to my hand. Since the Blue Eyes Chaos Dragon has resistance that cannot be destroyed by effects, the Saracenia Ant's mutual destruction effect cannot affect the Blue Eyes Chaos Dragon. Therefore, Anjikuan retreated and chose to activate the final attack of the Saracenia Ant. A Last Words effect retrieves the Predatory Plant B Orchid Scorpion from the deck into the hand card. Humph. Next turn. My blue-eyed chaos dragon will definitely crush you and all your extremely weak plant-type monsters. I cover a card and the turn ends. After the victorious Kaiba said a few harsh words, he also covered a card in his backcourt and ended his turn. My turn begins with the preparation phase. The effect of Chimera Flower is activated. I choose to add the dual fusion in my deck to my hand. When the effect of Chimera Flower is activated, the predatory plant Cordyceps sinensis in the cemetery is also activated. I will exclude the Cordyceps sinensis in the cemetery. Resurrect the predatory plant Fly Hellweed and the predatory plant Saracenia Ant from the cemetery. During this preparation phase, Anziju simultaneously activated the effects of Chimera and Cordyceps in the graveyard. Not only did he retrieve a fusion card from the deck, but he also resurrected two predatory plant monsters in the graveyard. Predatory plant fly hellgrass slash two stars slash dark slash plant type slash attack power, 400 slash defense power, 800. Predating plant saracenia ant slash one star dark plant family slash attack, 100 slash defense, 600. Enter the card drawing stage, draw cards. After completing the preparation phase, Anji Kun entered the card drawing phase leisurely and drew a card from the deck. The rules of victory have been written. The best way to deal with people like Kaiba is to use a strong attack to defeat him from the front, because the Kaiba who is defeated from the front is more convincing. On the contrary, using special underworld methods such as liberation to defeat Kaiba may cause Kaiba's discomfort. Considering President Kaiba's character, and Shiba Kuen finally decided to completely defeat Kaiba's blue-eyed chaos dragon from the front, and defeated Kaiba. Activate the continuous magic card. Shoot continuously with cannons. Anji Kuen first took the sustainable magic card he just drew from his hand and put it in his backfield. The seed cannon burst is the same as the trap card predator germination used by Anji Kuen before. They are both cards that only appeared in the original work and have not been adapted into OCG. The effect of Cannon Burst is activated. Once per turn, I can send one predatory plant monster with level 4 or lower from the deck to the graveyard, inflicting 300 damage to the opponent. The attack power of all monsters on the opponent's field is reduced. 600. I choose to send the predatory plant Nepenthes Pterosaur in my deck to the graveyard. A frightening plant covered with densely packed eyeballs appeared on Anji Kuen's field when Anji Kuen covered it with the magic card. The eyes of the frightening looking plant with extremely low sanity popped out, and several of them appeared. Pink seeds flew out from the plant and bombarded the seahorse and the blue eyed chaos dragon on the seahorse field. Since the cannon burst effect refers to all monsters on the opponent's field, even if Blue Eyes Chaos Dragon has the ability not to be the target of the opponent's effect, it will still be affected by this effect. Haima LP, 1300100. Blue Eyed Chaos Dragon Slash Attack, 3000 Slash Defense, 0. Then, the magic card is activated. Fusion. 
I fuse the Bee Orchid Scorpion card in my hand with the Fly Hellgrass and Saracenia Ant on my field as fusion materials. The flower of the apocalypse that was born from the hell deep in the petals. Now wake up from the dark underground. Pray everything in front of you as you like. Destroy everything in front of you. Let this world become chaotic. Fusion Summon. Edo. The three-pointed hell flower god of the predatory plant. A merging whirlpool emerged on the field, and the figures of three predatory plants continued to blend together in the merging whirlpool. Soon, a huge creature with three dragon heads flew out of the merging whirlpool and stood on Anji. On your field. Predatory plant panicle leaf vine three-pointed hell flower god slash nine stars slash dark slash plant family slash attack power, three thousand slash defense power, three thousand. Did you show up? The monster that finally defeated Yugi. Seeing Sway Yafuji's three-pointed hell flower god appear, Kaiba's eyes became sharper. After watching the whole game between Yugi and Anshibakuen, he naturally knew that the monster on Anshibakuen's field now was given to him. The final monster of the game. However, that monster's attack power is 3000 points, which is the same as the original attack power of the blue-eyed chaos dragon. It must have some powerful effects hidden. Thinking like this, Kaiba looked at the cards covering his backcourt intentionally or unintentionally. Entering the battle stage. The three-pointed hell flower god Suyefu is ready to attack the blue-eyed chaos dragon on President Kaiba's field. After summoning the monsters, and Shibakuen was ready to command the monsters on his field to attack the blue-eyed chaos dragon on President Kaiba's field. Ridiculous. The covered quick attack magic card activates. Shrink. Through the effect of this card, I can change the attack power of the monster on your field to half its original attack power. Come on, if you have the ability, continue to attack me on the field come over with the blue-eyed chaos dragon. Looking at Anshibakuen who was intent on attacking him, Kaiba sneered, and directly turned over the card covered in his back field, shrinking, directly attacking the three-pointed hell flower god of the spike leaf vine on Anshibakuen's field. The strength was reduced by half, the attack power was reduced, and the huge body of the three-pointed hell flower god of Sueye Vang also quickly shrunk to half of its previous size. Predatory plant panicle leaf vine three-pointed hell flower god slash attack power, 3500. Is it shrinking? Well, thank you, President, for activating this card early, otherwise I might not be able to kill you this round. But now I can. The plan of the three-pointed hell flower god of Sui Yi Ting remains unchanged, let's continue to attack the blue-eyed chaos. As soon as he finished speaking, and Shibakuen continued to direct the monsters on his field to attack the monsters on Kaiba field. The three heads of the huge Sui Ye Fuji three-pointed hell flower god let out a roar at the same time, and then rushed towards the blue-eyed chaos on the seahorse field. What? You still chose to attack directly. Seeing An Shibakuen, who seemed to be letting his own monster die, Kaiba couldn't help but exclaimed. A quick attack magic card in your hand. The dual fusion effect is activated. It can only be activated when a fusion monster on your field declares an attack for combat with an opponent's monster. The attack power of your own monster increases until the end of the damage step. The attack of the opponent's monster that is fighting force value. Anji Kuen smiled slightly and slapped the most useful card he had obtained in the turtle game house from his hand onto the dual plate. On the field, due to the contraction of Kaiba's magic card, the body of the three-pointed hellflower god of Suyafuji, which had shrunk by half, suddenly swelled up, and its size quickly returned to its original size, and it increased again from its original size. Doubled in size. I leaf vine three-pointed hellflower god slash attack power. 1,530,900. 1, Just like that, under the influence of the quick attack magic card dual fusion, the three-pointed hell flower god of Suyafuji, whose body had grown several times, easily used several of his predatory organs to pin down the blue-eyed chaos dragon on Kaiba field and rub it on the ground. Then, after the blue-eyed chaos dragon was crazily rubbed by the three-pointed hell flower god of Suyiteng. Its body gradually turned into particles of light all over the sky, and Kaiba's basic points were quickly reduced to zero in the particles of light all over the sky. Sido Kaiba LP, 10000. 
Chapter, 26 You actually came here again. And it came so suddenly. Anji Kuen scratched his hair, his tone full of deep helplessness. He had just won the duel with Kaiba, and before he had a chance to exchange business with Kaiba, he was once again pulled into this world full of fusion gems into the dark space, that is, pulled into its inner space by the fusion gem. Does it feel darker than the last time I came here? Well, can't the fusion gem turn on a light? It's pitch dark, and I'm really worried that I'll get claustrophobia. Anji Jun looked around at the pitch black space that was too dark for him to see. He couldn't help but complain silently in his heart. He recalled that the last time he came here, at least he could see his toes when he lowered his head. But before Mr. Anji could continue to complain, a purple gem as beautiful as crystal appeared out of thin air in front of Mr. Anji. The purple gem shone with purple light at a very regular frequency. Floating quietly in front of Anji Kuen. Looking at the fusion gem that appeared out of thin air, Anji Kuen shrugged and without thinking much, he put his hand on the fusion gem. In an instant, piles of information were introduced into Lord Anji's mind by the fusion gem, but the information transmitted by the fusion gem this time filled Lord Anji with doubts and confusion. The information transmitted to him by the fusion gem can be summed up in one word, and that word is hunger. The fusion gem is constantly transmitting information about hunger to Anji Kuen. Are you hungry? Then I will go out and bring you some food later. But here comes the question, how should you this gem eat? Is it directly transformed into will you absorb the energy, or will you become a girl like those in the novels and feed yourself artificially? Anji Kuen observed the fusion gems in front of him with extremely curious eyes. To be honest, he had already thought of several anthropomorphic pictures of fusion gems in his mind. Perhaps because he was speechless by Anji Kuen's words, the very regular frequency of the fusion gem sparkle actually stopped and became dim. Seeing the fusion gem suddenly stop shining, Anji Kuen suddenly felt a very ominous premonition. The next second, Anji Kuen suddenly felt that the dark ground beneath his feet began to tremble violently, as if something was about to break out of the ground. Before Anji Kuen could make any evasive action, several thick green tree-like vines emerged from the ground in an instant. When one of the green vines came out, it easily entangled Anji Kuen and carried him into the air. Bad luck, bad luck, bad luck. According to the development of this story, you don't want to eat me with the fusion gem. Plots that are not suitable for children are prohibited. This will definitely not pass the review. Anji Kuen's ominous premonition was soon confirmed by Anji Kuen's personal experience. Feeling the extremely thick green vine wrapped around his body that he could never struggle to break away, Anji Kuen's heart at this time was this. Fortunately, the scene that happened next successfully made Anji Kuen dispel the idea that the fusion gem wanted to devour the master and swallow himself. The originally dim fusion gem suddenly erupted into a violent purple light. It turned out that his previous silence was just to hold back the explosion. A purple light soon engulfed Anji Kuen and the surrounding dark space. Shrouded in the light of the fused gem, the surrounding dark scene became much brighter. Under the illumination of the fusion gem, in addition to the scene becoming brighter, a very strange thing also floated out from Anji Kuen's body, which was a cyan gem fragment covered with cracks. What is this? Knowing that the fusion gem tied him not to eat him but to force out the unknown thing on his body, Anji Kuen was relieved and didn't even struggle anymore. The cyan gem fragments floating out from Anji Kuen's body vibrated obviously. Judging from the vibration performance, he seemed very surprised. Apart from the cyan gem fragments, there were also obvious manifestations of the fusion gem that had previously emitted a violent brilliance. After the cyan gem fragment appeared, the fusion gem also began to vibrate continuously, seeming to be very excited. The cyan gem was suspended in midair. After spinning around in midair, the sharper side was aimed at the fusion gem. The next second, the cyan gem suddenly vibrated violently as if it had seen a ghost. He stood up, and then turned into a blue light and flew quickly towards the distance. But just when the cyan gem was about to fly out of Anji Kuen's sight, several thick vines suddenly emerged from the ground and blocked the cyan gem's flight path, making it impossible for the cyan gem to continue moving forward. 
maybe because he knew that he couldn't escape smoothly, and no matter how he ran, he would be stopped by the ubiquitous green vines, the cyan gem simply chose to stop motionless in place, looking like he was at his mercy. The cyan gem stopped in place, and several green vines around it began to approach the cyan gem in a targeted manner. The thick green vines slowly wrapped around the cyan gem like a snake. But just at this moment, changes happen again. The cyan gem whose surface was covered with cracks suddenly erupted with a strong cyan light, and this cyan light was actually only slightly inferior to the light emitted by the previous fused gem. In the green light, an armored dragon claw stretched out from it, cutting the surrounding green vines into several pieces as easily as chopping vegetables. The green light dissipated, and a dark Jijun felt that a very familiar monster appeared in front of Anzhijun. Blue light wings with a strong sense of technology, blue armor full of inexplicable beauty, strong limbs and a slender tail. A blue-eyed chaos dragon appeared in front of Anjikuen. Blue eyes chaos dragon. Anjikuen couldn't help but exclaimed. He had just fought with President Kaiba's blue-eyed chaos dragon not long ago. He didn't expect that now, after a few minutes, he would see the blue-eyed chaos dragon avidity again. Perhaps in response to the sudden appearance of the blue-eyed chaos dragon, the fusion gem also erupted with a dazzling and intense purple light at this time. In the light, the three brothers crossed out made Anji Kuen feel an extremely familiar monster appeared in front of Anji Kuen. The three monsters are the Chrysanthemum Chimera, a model worker who preys on plants, the rhinoceros. A plant predating plant that has never been summoned since Anji Kuen came to this DM world, and the currently the most aggressive and powerful attack power in Anji Kuen's hands. 3000. But I have never used the effect of the predatory plant Tripodia tricuspidus. The figures of the three predatory plants looked extremely sacred under the shining light, and this scene also made the blue-eyed man opposite him grow his dragon's mouth in confusion. Is this a group fight? Chapter 27 Seeing the three predatory plant fusion monsters appearing in the light, the blue-eyed chaos dragon transformed from the cyan gem felt like a sunken dog, and greeted the fusion gem in his crazy heart. But what happened was that even if the cyan gem didn't want to fight three with one, he would still have to fight three with one, because he had no way out. Now there are only two principles in front of the cyan gem. The first one is to be beaten to death by the group, and finally swallowed by the fusion gem. The second one is to fight three against one, find the right time, outweep the enemy beasts, and kill them. The fusion gem swallowed. The cyan gem, who didn't want to be swallowed like this, finally decided to give it a try and turn a bicycle into a motorcycle. The blue-eyed chaos dragon let out a deafening roar, spread out its light wings, and rushed towards the three predatory plant fusion monsters. Although the blue-eyed chaos dragon only had its own monster, the blue-eyed chaos dragon burst out with an astonishing momentum at this time. The blue-eyed chaos rushed straight towards the three predatory plant monsters. Naturally, the three predatory plant monsters could not just stand there and wait for death. Therefore, the three monsters also used their own ways to meet the oncoming blue-eyed monsters. Chaos Dragon Anji Kuen, who had long been placed next to the fusion gem by the green vines, originally thought that a fierce battle would break out when the four monsters met. You can witness with your own eyes a wild visual feast of giant monsters fighting giant monsters. But the real fact is, the moment the blue-eyed chaos dragon and the three predatory plant monsters met, the blue-eyed chaos dragon was easily subdued, and several thick green vines entangled the blue-eyed chaos. The dense vines on the dragon's body made it impossible for the blue-eyed chaos dragon to move at all. And the three predatory organs that preyed on plants also grabbed the blue-eyed chaos dragon's body and roared, biting it fiercely, and began to suck greedily. Looking at the energy in the blue-eyed chaos dragon's body, as the three predatory plant monsters continued to absorb the energy from the blue-eyed chaos dragon, Anji Kuen also clearly felt that the fusion gems around him began to gradually calm down. Thinking of the previous performance of the fusion gems, Anji Jun estimated that as the fusion gem gradually becomes calmer, it is most likely because the fusion gem is full. With this speculative idea in mind, Anji Kuen slowly placed his hand on the fusion gem, feeling the message the fusion gem sent to him. 
After feeling for a moment, Anji Kuen was instantly sure this changed his previous guess. Because the information transmitted to him by the fusion gem at this time was no longer the repeated words of hungry, but the information that was orderly and normal. Not only that, Anji Kuen also obtained some information about the cyan gem in front of him that transformed into a blue-eyed chaos dragon from a bunch of information sent to him by the fusion gem again. The true identity of the cyan gem is actually the ritual gem among the six gems that comes from the same lineage as the fusion gem. However, what Anji Kuen saw at this time was not the complete ritual gem, but only a small fragment of the ritual gem. The location of the real ritual gem was not yet known. The fragment of this ritual gem was originally supposed to be hidden in Kaiba, but because Anshiba Kuen defeated Kaiba, the hidden ritual gem fragment was automatically transferred to Anshiba Kuen's body as if seeking death. And then well, it goes without saying that the transferred ritual gem fragments were discovered by the fusion gem in Anji Kuen's body. But here's the problem. I remember you told me before that you all hid the gems in various Yu-Gi-Oh worlds to avoid unknown dangers, right? So logically speaking, shouldn't all six of you gems be grasshoppers on the same boat? Then why do you still insist on swallowing the part of the ritual gem that is the fusion gem? And I just noticed something wrong. The fragment of the ritual gem looked like it had seen a ghost and been frightened a lot after seeing you. After Anji Kuen organized his words in his mind, he boldly expressed his inner doubts towards the fusion gem. There is too little energy. In order to maintain itself, it will directly choose to devour it to replenish its own energy, that's all. If you want to swallow the ritual gem fragments, the ritual gem fragments will naturally panic. This is a normal reaction. Faced with Anji Jun's question, Fusion Gem was silent for a moment, as if thinking about how to answer Anji Jun. After a moment of silence, Fusion Gem asked Anji Jun and gave two answers that didn't sound like much. Big mistake answer. Oh, so that's it. Listening to the answer given to him by the Fusion Gem, Anji Kuen, who couldn't find anything wrong with it, could only nod his head doubtfully. For some reason, he always felt that the fusion gem seemed to be hiding something from him. While Anji Kuen and fusion gem were still communicating, another change occurred. The blue-eyed chaos dragon, which was originally tightly entangled by three predatory plant monsters, miraculously broke free. A burst of cyan light suddenly emerged from the body of the blue-eyed chaos dragon like an explosive seed, directly causing the blue-eyed chaos dragon to surge in power and break free from the control of three predatory plant monsters. Later, under the rendering of this cyan light, a more technologically hard armor climbed onto the body of the blue-eyed chaos dragon. The light wings behind the blue-eyed chaos dragon also became much more luxurious under the rendering of cyan light. If you can observe carefully, you will be very surprised to find. At this time, the appearance of the blue eyes chaos dragon actually began to gradually approach that of the blue eyes chaos extreme dragon. Although the current Blue Eyes Chaos Dragon has not completely turned into a Blue Eyes Chaos Extreme Dragon, it is 89 points similar to the real Blue Eyes Chaos Extreme Dragon. If the Blue Eyes Chaos Dragon can be given another period of time, the Blue Eyes Chaos Dragon may really become become a real Blue Eyed Chaos Dragon. The Blue Eyed Chaos Dragon, whose appearance had changed drastically, burst out with lightning speed and jumped directly over the three predatory plants that were attacking it. It attacked Lord Anji in the fusion gem beside him, preparing to capture the thieves in a wave capture the king first, and fight from the rear in team battles. At this seemingly critical moment, the mutation happened again. A silhouette of a long dragon with two wings on its back and an overall color of dark purple suddenly flew out of the fusion gem. Under the shocked gaze of Lord Anji, it directly faced the incoming blue eyed chaos dragon. The two monsters collided with each other. An amazing scene appeared. The long purple dragon that flew out of the fusion gem actually swallowed the attacking blue-eyed chaos dragon in one bite. That's right. Just swallowed it in one bite. The blue-eyed chaos dragon didn't even struggle, and was swallowed by the purple dragon without any reason. The purple dragon who swallowed the blue-eyed chaos dragon looked very satisfied and burped afterwards. Chapter 28 on the field, the long purple dragon silhouette underwent a huge change after swallowing the attacking blue-eyed chaos dragon. A ferocious dragon head with horns poked out first. 
After the dragon head, there was an extremely strong dragon body and a dragon tail with a hook. Then, four rear armors with slightly open fangs and sharp teeth emerged. The dragon appeared from behind. As the giant dragon raised its head and let out a deafening roar, densely packed eyeball-like balls instantly appeared all over the dragon's body, adding a lot of ferocious and terrifying feeling to the giant dragon. Is that one of the four dragons, the hungry poison fusion dragon? Lord Anji stared at the giant dragon flying in mid-air with his mouth open, and couldn't help but murmur to himself. Anshi Kuen is very familiar with that giant dragon. There is no doubt that that giant dragon is the famous hungry poison fusion dragon, the ace fusion monster in the middle game of Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc V, the dragon of the fourth dimension one. Not only that, regarding the card hungry poison fusion dragon, when Anji Kuen used to play YGO decks, basically every deck would include a hungry poison fusion dragon in the extra deck. Used to cooperate with super fusion to solve various difficult fields. Wow! Fusion gem, you are so interesting, you actually gave me a monster card as powerful as hungry poison fusion dragon. As the saying goes, I don't want to be born in the same year on the same day. But I want to die in the same year and the same day. Don't worry, when the unknown danger comes in the future, I will definitely stand on the same front with you. We will live and die together. Saying this, Anji Kuen patted the fusion gem beside him with a moved face, and his words were filled with righteousness and awe-inspiring meaning. It looked like we were the best brothers even though we were of different races. Listening to Anji Kuen's impassioned words and the heroic words of I don't want to be born in the same year but I want to die in the same year, the fusion gem couldn't help but feel a little moved. But moved, moved, fusion gem suddenly noticed something was not right. He did not want to be born on the same day of the same year, but he wanted to die on the same day of the same year. No matter how he looked at it, he was at a loss. Well. The fusion gem silently let out a sigh. Although the brain circuit of my host seems to be wrong, after all, he is the host he carefully selected for many people who have the possibility of fusion miracle. For this reason, he even kicked Yujo Judai out of the host he chose. So even if Anji Kuen's brain circuit is not quite right, he will still cry and take the person away. Thinking like this, the fusion gem flashed a few times at the hungry poison fusion dragon flying in midair. As the fusion gem flashed, the hungry poison fusion dragon seemed to have received some message. Zhong swooped down and came directly in front of Lord Anji. Then, the hungry poison fusion dragon turned into a fusion monster card with a purple border and flew straight into Anji Kuen's outstretched hand. I own. The hungry poison fusion dragon. Feeling the texture of the hungry poison fusion dragon card in his hand, the extremely delighted Anji Kuen immediately assumed the classic pose of an immortal being carrying a yellow-skinned mouse on his shoulders. Eh. Apart from the hungry poison fusion dragon, do you have any other cards for me? As soon as Anji Kuen finished posing with his front legs, two monster cards flew out of the fusion gem on his back legs and came directly in front of Anji Kuen. Is it? The glandular grass wasp and the pineapple insectivorous corn spirit wandering whale. Thighs within thighs. Finally, we don't have to melt the chrysanthemums all the time. Looking at the two monster cards in front of him, Anji Kuen exclaimed again. With the addition of these two monster cards, the strength of his deck will be even higher. Ha! Huh. By the way, the fragment of the ritual gem must have been swallowed by the hungry poison fusion dragon in one bite, right? While Anji Kuen stuffed the three monster cards into his pocket like treasures, he asked about the fusion gem. He really couldn't believe that the matter of the ritual gem fragments was solved so easily. Afterwards, the fusion gem also quickly gave an answer to Anji Kuen, and the matter was solved so simply. M, okay, if there's nothing else, I'll go out first. I still have to find a way to get President Kaiba to delete the rule that fusion monsters can't attack in the first round. The restrictions on predatory plants are a bit too high. It's too big. If Dual City hadn't officially started yet, and the rule that fusion monsters couldn't attack in the first round hadn't been officially applied, those duels wouldn't have gone so smoothly. Speaking to himself like this, Anji Kuen closed his eyes after receiving the message from the fusion gem that there was nothing else to do. Interior Space 
feeling the slow cold wind blowing, it was something that could not be felt in the inner space of the fusion gem. Knowing that he had escaped from the inner space of the fusion gem, Anjikuen suddenly opened his eyes. Midst the scene before entering the inner space, that's right. And Shibakuen, who confirmed that there was nothing wrong with the scene, slowly looked at President Kaiba who was in a brief state of trance after being hit by the failure of the duel. After thinking for a while, he took the lead and said to Kaiba, thinking to break the current deadlock. What? Did you play well? Are you mocking me? And Shibakuen's words were originally just a simple compliment to President Kaiba for the climax of his poker skills, but in the years of President Kaiba, who had just lost the game, they became an extremely harsh mockery. As a result, Kaiba immediately returned to normal from his absent-minded state and looked at Anjikuen with an unkind expression. Ah, uh, no, no, I really didn't mean that. I just think that President Kaiba, you have a really deep bond with your deck, and you're really good at playing cards. Realizing that he seemed to have said something wrong unintentionally, Anjikuen immediately hurriedly opened his mouth to make amends. While making amends, he also praised President Kaiba fiercely to prevent the cautious president from using his rights as the organizer to secretly give him a favor. Dig your own hole. Snort. Perhaps it was Anshiba Kuen's remedial words that had an effect, and Kaiba stopped pursuing Anshiba Kuen's previous words. I lost today's duel, and I recognize your strength. But that won't happen in the next duel. I will use my white dragon to defeat you and your plant deck. Humph. Just wait. Anji Kuen. With that said, Kaiba returned to his ever-changing domineering appearance. After snorting coldly, Kaiba turned and left, leaving only a handsome figure in the sunset in Anji Kuen's eyes. Ah. I forgot to tell Kaiba about the rules. What a mistake. It wasn't until Kaiba's figure completely disappeared in front of him that Anji Kuen suddenly remembered whether he had officially done it or not. Under the sunset, in addition to Kaiba's handsome back, there is another figure of Anji Kuen who is extremely collapsed and hits the wall repeatedly. However, just when Anji Kuen returned to his residence, after taking an extremely comfortable hot bath, he sat on the bed, sorting out his deck, and watching TV. Suddenly, news came from the TV that made Anji Kuen extremely surprised. Kaiba Company has temporarily adjusted the game rules for the dual city that will be held in a week. Removing the restriction that fusion monsters cannot attack in the first round of summoning. Kaiba actually cancelled the restriction that fusion monsters cannot attack in the first round of summoning. Ah. Uh. President Kaiba actually cancelled this rule. Then my previous wall hunting was in vain. Anshijin was in pain and happy. Chapter 29 Time passed quickly, and in a blink of an eye it was time for the official opening of Dual City. After careful calculation, Anji Kuen has been in this different world for almost a week. During this period of time, Anji Kuen lived a very leisurely life every day. Usually he would go to Tongshai City to familiarize himself with the terrain, or visit various card shops and card playing venues in Tongshai City. While looking for any 10,000 year banned cards, sadistically. Ah, uh, no, it's about teaching those children. Woohoo, has it finally begun? The dual city that I have longed for. Since today is the opening day of dual city, and Shiba walked out of his residence very early, equipped with a dual disc, and walked down the streets of Dashino City with excitement on his face. Although it was still early, there were already many duelists from various places gathered on the street at this time, and they all wore dueling plates produced by Kaiba Company on their arms. Seeing this scene, Anji Kuen had to silently lament the power of Kaiba's marketing methods. After all, only by getting a new dual disc with this characteristic can he participate in the dual city competition. Although a duelist can get a dual disc for free as long as the duelist level reaches 5 stars or above, and Shiba Kuen does not think that there will be so many duelists who can reach 5 stars. After all, President Kaiba has a very high vision. Of. Therefore. Those duelists whose dual level has not reached 5 stars must spend money to buy the Kaiba family's dual plate if they want to participate. After this wave of purchases, Kaiba is making a lot of money. Full. Let's have breakfast first, Kaiba's airship hasn't even launched yet. 
Considering that Kaiba's airship hadn't appeared over the city yet and it was still early, Anjikun found a random place, ordered breakfast, and ate slowly. When Anjikun had almost finished his breakfast, Kaiba's airship arrived just above the area where Anjikun was. With Kaiba's coquettish face appearing on the huge display screen of the airship, Kaiba officially began his opening speech. Duelists. Welcome to Duel City. Now let me explain the rules of this tournament. Anjikun listened with great concentration to Kaiba's explanation voice coming from the airship above. In terms of rules, except for changing the rule that fusion monsters cannot attack in the first round, the other rules are not much different from the original rules. The two most important rules are nothing more than gambling card rules and puzzle card chip rules. The winner can take one card from the loser and collect six puzzle cards to know the real final location. Alright. Duel City begins. Duelists. Find out the opponents hidden in this city. After explaining the rules of this dual city competition, Kaiba made another powerful declaration. This declaration also completely ignited the enthusiasm of the duelists who came to participate in the competition. The whole city was filled with duels. The cheers of the spectators. Okay, now that you're full, let's start looking for my first opponent. My predatory plant monsters are hungry and thirsty. Anji Kuen was muttering to himself as he slowly stood up from his position, preparing to go out to the streets to look for his opponent. Considering that this was his first battle in Duel City, he had to fight beautifully. So Anshiba Kuen did not choose to torture ordinary passers-by in duels at the first time, but prepared to look for supporting characters who appeared in the original work. Duelists, such as Yuma, Ryazaki, and Yuda are quite good choices. If you really can't find those few, you can also choose to find Gruss Hunters for a duel. Gruss Hunters are easier to find. As long as they are wrapped in black robes and look sneaky, there is at least an 80% chance that they will be Gruss Hunters. Moreover, there is another benefit that dueling with Gurus Hunter and Ryazaki and the others does not bring, and that is that you can enrich your own small treasury. As soon as he said so, Umshi Kun began to look for his target duelist. As the saying goes, luck can't be stopped when it comes. Anji Kuen didn't look for long before he found a short boy wearing a green trench coat and a red hat. Dinosaur Ryazaki, huh? This is a tragic figure. He was led astray by that guy Feather Moth later on. He is obviously a duelist who is willing to accept defeat. Through the opponent's highly identifiable outfit, and Shiba Kuen recognized the opponent's true identity at a glance as the former runner-up in the national duel competition, Dinosaur Ryazaki. Recalling the various performances of this boy named Dinosaur Ryazaki in the original work, and Shiba Kuen can only describe him as miserable. Ever since he lost to Katsuya Januchi in the Duelist Kingdom, he has never won again. And pay a heavy price after every failure. Then. My first opponent will be you. After thinking for a moment, and Shiba Kuen, with the idea of getting Dinosaur Ryazaki back on the right path, chose Dinosaur Ryazaki as his first opponent. Hello, my name is Anji Kuen. Can you have a duel with me? And Shiba Kuen walked straight to Dinosaur Ryazaki, and without saying any other nonsense, he went straight to the point and challenged Dinosaur Ryazaki. Ha! Huh. You want to choose to duel with me? Do you know who I am? Listening to Ungshi Kuen's challenging words, Ryazaki was stunned for a moment, and then asked Ungshi Kuen in disbelief. Although he didn't even get a decent ranking in the Duel Kingdom not long ago and was defeated by that guy in the city, he still achieved a good ranking of runner-up in the national duel competition. According to logically speaking, there should still be some people who are afraid of his strength and dare not challenge him. But now, there is a passerby who jumps out of nowhere and launches a challenge to himself, the former runner-up. This left Dinosaur Ryazaki a little confused. This was because he hadn't achieved any decent rankings for a while. Some people regarded him as a weakling, thinking he couldn't lift the knife. Of course I know, the former runner-up in the national duel tournament, Dinosaur Ryazaki. Faced with Dinosaur Ryazaki's rhetorical question, Anji Kuen nodded, and then said slowly. Now that you know my true identity. You still dare to directly challenge me to a duel. Are you treating me as a soft persimmon? After hearing Anshiba Kuen's answer, 
Dinosaur Riyazaki felt that the other party was indeed treating him like a soft persimmon and said a little unhappy. No, I don't mean that. It is precisely because I know that you are the former runner-up that I challenge you. After all, I am a duelist, and challenging a strong enemy is exactly what a duelist expects. Anji Kuen raised his head high, facing the sun, and continued without blushing or heartbeat. Although his words sounded high-end, they were actually made up on the spot. This wave of words was assumed to be a challenge to a powerful enemy, but in fact it was just pretending to be a pig and eating a tiger. What you said is great. As soon as Enshiba Kuen said these words, the dinosaur Riyazaki on the side immediately shouted with great emotion. Enshiba Kuen's image in his eyes also changed instantly. At first, he thought that the other party was just a junior duel who overestimated his abilities. However, he didn't expect that the opponent turned out to be a duelist who had gotten rid of vulgar taste. Dinosaur Riyazaki's previous unhappiness was instantly swept away, and all that was left was his admiration for Enshiba Kuen. Come on. I agree to your duel. Ever since, with his admiration for Enshiba Kuen, Dinosaur Riyazaki decisively agreed to the duel request from Enshiba Kuen, and took out his duel disc, preparing to duel with Enshiba Kuen. Well, it was an unexpected success, then. It's time for a duel. My first first battle in Duel City. Looking at the dinosaur Riyazaki opposite who was a little moved by his previous words, Anji Kuen couldn't help but raise the corners of his mouth slightly. Chapter, 30 As Anshiba Kuen and dinosaur Riyazaki spoke in unison and the duel disc was activated, the duel between the two officially began. Anshijin LP, 4000. Dinosaur Riyazaki LP, 4000. Then I'll attack first. My turn. Draw a card. Dinosaur Riyazaki was the first to seize the initiative in this round of duel and drew a card from his deck. I summon the two-headed dinosaur king from the card in my hand. Covering a card ends the turn. A dinosaur monster with two dragon heads appeared out of thin air on the monster field of Dinosaur Riyazaki by inciting the dragon wings behind it. Two-headed dinosaur king slash four stars, earth dinosaur tribe slash attack power. 1600 slash defense power, 1200 slash introduction, a powerful card in the dinosaur tribe that can attack with two heads at the same time. The two-headed dinosaur king with an attack power of 1600. The axe king is much stronger than this thing. Looking at the ordinary skeletal dinosaur monster on the dinosaur Riyazaki field, Anji Kuen said to himself. Then, my turn is to draw a card. Anji Kuen first drew a card from his deck. After a quick glance at the cards in his hand, he thought about the next strategy in his mind. I don't have a fusion card, nor am I able to use the bee orchid scorpion. But there is a flytrap spinosaurus that can pull monsters. If the opponent's cover card is not an attack trap, it feels like it can be solved in one round. Fall to the other side. After thinking about it, Anji Kuen immediately started his next operation. I will first summon the predatory plant flytrap Spinosaurus from the card in my hand in attack position. A Spinosaurus-like monster with a giant flytrap plant growing from its back appeared on the field at Anshi Kuen's call. Predatory plant Venus flytrap Spinosaurus slash 4 stars slash dark plant family slash attack power, 1800 slash defense power, 0. The effect of flytrap Spinosaurus is activated. If this card is successfully summoned, I can also place a prey counter on a monster on the opponent's field. Naturally, I choose to put it on the two-headed dinosaur king on your field. Place a predator token. Anji Kuen gave an order, and the flytrap Spinosaurus on the field immediately opened the predatory organ on its back, and spit out a tadpole-shaped black seed towards the two-headed dinosaur king on Riyazaki field. As soon as the black seeds landed on the two-headed dinosaur king, he immediately revealed his true face, opened his hidden fangs, and bit hard on the two-headed dinosaur king. No matter how hard the dinosaur king struggled, he couldn't get rid of the black seeds on his body. Two-headed dinosaur king slash prey indicator, zero one quarter star one star. Next, let's enter the battle stage. Let the flytrap Spinosaurus attack the two-headed dinosaur king. Anji Kuen directly commanded the flytrap Spinosaurus on his field to launch an attack. 
The green flytrap Spinosaurus immediately rushed towards the two-headed dinosaur king on Dinosaur Riyazaki's field. After a fierce battle between the two monsters, the flytrap Spinosaurus, whose attack power was 200 points higher than that of the two-headed dinosaur king, successfully won. And swallowed the failed two-headed dinosaur king whole into his body, turning it into his own nutrition. Dinosaur Riyazaki LP, 4000-3800 it's not over yet, the flytrap Spinosaurus effect is activated. This card can only be activated after the damage calculation of the battle with a monster of a level lower than the level of this card. I can use Predatory Plant Flytrap from the deck. One Predatory Plant monster other than Grass Spiny Dragon is Special Summoned. I Special Summon the Predatory Plant B Orchid Scorpion from the deck to the field. The two headed dinosaur king was swallowed by the flytrap Spinosaurus. The black seeds that had been biting on the back of the two-headed dinosaur king also fell down. As they fell, the black seeds began to grow instantly. In just a short period of time, the black seed grew into a scorpion-like plant predating monster. Predatory plant B orchid scorpion slash 3 stars slash dark slash plant family slash attack power, 1200 slash defense power, 800. The effect of B orchid scorpion is activated. If this card is successfully special summoned, you can discard a monster from your hand and special summon a predatory plant monster from the deck. I special summon the predatory plant snake in the deck. Saracenia Cobra. The effect of Serpentine Cobra is activated. When this card is specially summoned by the effect of a predator plant monster, I can retrieve a fusion magic card from the deck. I retrieve a quick attack magic card from the deck. Predator Species Fusion. It is another very familiar routine operation of the predatory plant deck. The special effect of the appearance of the bee orchid and the scorpion, the special attack of the serpentine cobra in the deck, and then the fusion is retrieved from the deck through the effect of the serpentine cobra. Predatory plant pitcher plant cobra slash 3 stars slash dark slash plant family slash attack power, 1000 slash defense power, 1500. What? I summoned three monsters easily in one round. Dinosaur Riyazaki, who had been watching Anshiba Kuen's operations, was directly shocked by Anshiba Kuen's powerful operation of using a white wolf with no gloves and unfolding a card. This guy is unexpectedly powerful. Thinking this way, Dinosaur Riyazaki couldn't help but swallowed a mouthful of saliva because he was a little nervous. Be Orchid Scorpion and Snake Plant Cobra. Let's launch a direct attack on Dinosaur Riyazaki. The two-headed Dinosaur King was killed. At this time, there was only an unknown cover card left on the field of Dinosaur Riyazaki. With the mentality of stepping into the trap, Anjikuen directly commanded the two monsters on his field to attack Dinosaur Dragon. Saki launched a direct attack. I won't let you succeed like this. Activate the covered trap card. Just when two smaller predatory plant monsters pounced on Dinosaur Riyazaki, causing a lot of damage to Dinosaur Riyazaki, Riyazaki immediately turned over the cards covered in his backfield. Fossil Excavation Through the effect of this card, I can discard a card in my hand. Resurrect a dinosaur-type monster from the graveyard. I choose to resurrect the two-headed dinosaur king in my graveyard. Continuing to speak, Riyazaki resurrected the two-headed dinosaur king in his graveyard to the field through the effect of the card. He successfully withstood the attack of two predatory plants with low basic values. It's out again. In this case, I won't act in this scene anymore. Get ready to go ahead. The quick attack magic card in my hand. The fusion of predatory species is activated. I choose to use the bee orchid on my field the scorpion and the cobra on my field are merging. Luring insects with seductive fragrance. Two seeds of chaos growing in hell. Now. Become one here. Fusion summon. Appear again. The forbidden flower that blooms alone and silently. The predatory plant chimera grandiflora. Under Anji Kuen's ups and downs and impassioned words of summons, the whirlpool of fusion appeared, merging the two monsters on Anji Kuen's field. A dazzling light flashed. After the light passed, a huge chimera flower plant with a huge body emerged from the fusion vortex and appeared on Anji Kuen's field. 
predatory plant slash chimera flower slash seven stars dark plant family slash attack 2500 slash defense 2000 chapter 31 chimera planta attacks the two-headed dinosaur king chimera planta's effect is activated the attack power of the monsters that battle this card will be reduced by 1000 and Chimera Planta's attack power will also increase by 1000 points. Predatory Plant Chimera Planta slash attack power, 25003500. Two-headed Dinosaur King slash attack power, 1600600. The predatory plant created with the prototype of the Tyrannosaurus shook its fat body, and the thick green vines hit the two-headed Dinosaur King heavily. Dinosaur Riyazaki LP, 3800900. Ah. Uh, this fusion monster is not too strong. Dinosaur Riyazaki, whose life value was reduced by a large amount of Chimera Planta at one time, showed a very horrified expression. He had never seen a powerful monster like Chimera Planta that would reduce the opponent's attack and increase its own attack when attacking. My turn, end. After failing to eliminate Dinosaur Riyazaki in one turn, Anji Kuen was not discouraged, but ended his turn directly. Ha! Huh. It's my turn. Draw a card. Although he was afraid of the powerful effect of the opponent's chimera, Dinosaur Riyazaki still summoned his courage and shouted to draw a card from the deck. Here I come. Since I can't eliminate your monster from the front. Then I will defeat your plant monster from the side. Magic card activated. Attack ban. I will change the chimera on your field to defense state. Looking at the card he just drew in his hand, Dinosaur Riyazaki suddenly laughed, and then slapped the card he drew heavily on the dual disc. The unknown power descended on Chimera, and Chimera uncontrollably retracted the scattered green vines, curled up its fat body, and changed to defense state. Attack ban. This is a good way to deal with Chimera. Seeing the attack ban used by Dinosaur Riyazaki, Enzijin couldn't help but think of the anime version of the defense ban that appeared in the Dual Kingdom period. After activating that card, the opponent can't summon monsters in defense mode. If there is a chance, you can use two cards. I summon the giant King Spinosaurus in my hand. Dinosaur Riyazaki directly summoned a brown Spinosaurus monster on his field, which coincidentally formed a sharp contrast with the green Venus flytrap Spinosaurus on Anzijin's field. Giant King Spinosaurus slash 4 stars slash Earth Dinosaur Attack, 2000 slash Defense, 1200 A Giant King Spinosaurus with an attack power of 2000. It can't defeat my Chimera. Anzijin said disapprovingly. What if I add this card? I equip the Giant King Spinosaurus on the field with a magic card. Enlarge. The attack power of the Giant King Spinosaurus increases to twice the original. Dinosaur Riyazaki sneered, and slapped another equipment magic card from his hand to enlarge. The body of the Giant King Spinosaurus on the field immediately doubled, and it was even much larger than Chimera Dahua. Giant King Spinosaurus slash attack power, 20004000. How about it? At this time, the attack power of the giant dragon Spinosaurus has reached an astonishing 4,000 points. 1,000 points higher than the blue eyes white dragon. Dinosaur Riyazaki pointed at the giant king Spinosaurus on his field with an attack power of 4,000, and showed off to Ansigen. Ah. Uh. To be honest, Chimera Dahua almost killed the blue eyes ultimate dragon with an attack power of 4,500 last time. Anzijin complained in a low voice. The effect of Chimera Dahua is so simple, crude and effective. Get ready to attack. Giant Spinosaurus. Attack Chimera Plant. The giant Spinosaurus, which had grown to an extremely large size, swallowed the Chimera Plant on Anji's field in one gulp, not caring whether eating such a special plant or animal like Chimera Plant would cause diarrhea. My turn is over. After the attack, Dinosaur Riyazaki ended his turn. Then, during my turn, during the preparation phase, with the effect of Chimera Plant, I will fuse the magic card in my deck into my hand. Draw a card. Anji looked at the card he had just drawn, and a wonderful idea instantly came to his mind, so Anji immediately fused the magic card he had just retrieved through Chimera Plant and slapped it on his dual disc. 
Fusion activation, I use the plant predator glandular hair grass wasp in my hand and the Venus flytrap spinosaur on my field as fusion materials, and fuse them. An ancient evil seed. It has nurtured an extremely ferocious and greedy beast. Now. Reveal your magnificent body from that petal hell. Fusion summon. Got it. Level 5. Plant predator pineapple insect eating valley spirit wandering whale. In a line full of middle school atmosphere sung by Njijun, a ferocious beast covered with spikes and a huge insectivorous pineapple on its back appeared on the field. Plant predator pineapple insect eating valley spirit wandering whale slash five stars slash dark plant attack, 1000 slash defense, 2500. This is the power of the new plant predator that Njijun obtained from the fusion gem. You actually performed another fusion summon. But. The attack power is only 1000. What are you going to do to defeat the giant Spinosaurus on my field? Although Dinosaur Riyazaki felt an inexplicable ominous premonition, the huge gap between the two sides' attack power still made Dinosaur Riyazaki relax his vigilance. Humph the effect of the glandular grass wasp, which is the fusion material, was just activated. I can retrieve a predatory plant monster from the deck, and I add the bee orchid scorpion from the deck to my hand. The effect of the pineapple insect eating grain spirit wandering whale is also activated. This card can be activated when the fusion summon is successful. I can also retrieve a prey plant monster or prey magic and trap card from the deck or graveyard. To add the card to my hand, I chose to add the predator fusion to my hand. Anjikun activated the effects of two predatory plant monsters with a cheerful expression on his face and retrieved two cards from the deck. I have to say, these two new predatory plant cards are so delicious. The Epic Enhancement of Predatory Plants Ah! Uh, you ask, does the anaconda count as a major enhancement of its predatory plants? Let me tell you a joke, my family's predatory plant, the greenlocked dragon anaconda, cannot be summoned at all due to the self-repression of predatory plants. Since I haven't normal summoned this turn, I usually summon the bee orchid scorpion in my hand. You should be familiar with the effect of this card, so I won't go into more details. The Bee Orchid Scorpion's effect is to throw monsters from the hand. I special summon the predatory plant Fly Hellweed in my deck. Anjikun once again summoned the powerful Bee Orchid Scorpion, and through its effect, he specially summoned the Fly Hellgrass from the deck. Predatory Plant Bee Orchid Scorpion slash 3 stars slash dark slash plant family slash attack power, 1200 slash defense power, 800. Predatory plant fly hellgrass slash 2 stars slash dark slash plant type slash attack power, 400 slash defense power, 800. Chapter, 32. The effect of fly hell weed, first place a prey indicator on the giant Spinosaurus on your field. And Shibakuen first activated the effect of the fly hellgrass on the field, and placed a prey indicator on the giant Spinosaurus on the field of dinosaur Riyazaki. The fly hellweed on the field immediately opened its sharp fangs and spit out a prey indicator towards the giant Spinosaurus. Spinosaurus Rex slash prey indicator, one quarter star one star. Why is it this damn thing again? Dinosaur Riyazaki glanced at the predatory plant biting the giant Spinosaurus, and an ominous premonition crept into his heart. The effect of the pineapple insect eating grain spirit wandering whale. Forget it. Let's let that big guy appear and help with the arrangement. And Shibakuen originally wanted to use the effect of the wandering whale to liberate the giant Spinosaurus, and then command the monsters to fight the dinosaur Riyazaki in the face, easily winning the game. But just in the middle of saying this, Anjikuen suddenly changed his mind on a whim, and instead chose to fuse and summon the three-pointed hell flower god. Through the soaring ability of the three-pointed hell flower god, the extremely powerful defeat the gigantic Spinosaurus from the front. The reason why I chose to operate like this is entirely because Anjikuen felt that the B level of such a rush operation would be much higher than the B level of directly letting a group of monsters rush up and kill the dinosaur Riyazaki alive. Then come on. I activate the magic card from my hand. Fusion of Predatory Species. I fuse the pineapple insect eating corn spirit wandering whale. Be orchid scorpion and fly hellweed on my field. The flower of the apocalypse that was born from the hell deep in the petals. Now wake up from the dark underground. 
Pray everything in front of you as you like. Destroy everything in front of you. Let this world become chaotic. Fusion Summon. Level 9. The Three-Pointed Prison Flower God of the Predatory Plant. As Anji Kun chanted the second burst of summons as usual, a huge three-headed dragon covered in green armor appeared on the field. Predatory Plant Panicle Leaf Vine Three-Pointed Hell Flower God Slash Nine Stars Slash Dark Slash Plant Family Slash Attack Power, 3000 Slash Defense Power, 3000. It's actually a fusion summon again. This should be his third fusion summon. Dinosaur Riyazaki was once again shocked by Anshiba Kuen's fusion-based operations. He had never seen anyone who could perform multiple fusions in one duel like Anshiba Kuen. However, it's no wonder that Dinosaur Riyazaki has such an idea. After all, in the world of Yu-Gi-Oh DM, the summoning method of fusion has not been fully developed like the later Yu-Gi-Oh GX. In many cases, the fusion is done on site. The ones printed on the printing cards, for example, the demon black dragon in the game and the castle, that one was completely printed on the spot. It's incredible that there can be two fusion seal card operations in one duel. For example, a card like Predator Plant, which focuses on fusion, can easily fuse three, four, or even four or five cards in one duel. Group, of course, is unheard of and unseen in this world. But. The initial attack power is only a measly 3000. It still can't defeat my giant Spinosaurus with an attack power of 4000. Although he was shocked, the 1000 attack power difference between the two monsters still gave Dinosaur Riyazaki a certain amount of confidence. What's a tired Wadoka? The effect of the three-pointed Hell Flower God of Suiyefu, this card's attack power will be increased by the total original attack power of monsters on the field other than this card that have prey counters placed on it. The original attack power of the giant Spinosaurus is 2000 points, so the attack power of the three-pointed Hellflower God of the Spike Leaf Vine will increase by 2000 points, reaching 5000 attack points. Anji Kuen smiled silently and slowly said the effect of the three-pointed Hellflower God of Sui Yiting that has never been used since it came to this world. I leaf vine three-pointed Hellflower God slash attack power, 3000 What? The attack power actually reached 5000. Dinosaur Riyazaki looked straight at the three-pointed hell flower god of the hibiscus that was growing in size on Anshiba Kuen's field, even becoming twice as big as the giant Spinosaurus. His eyes were full of shock and fear. Next, let's attack, the three-pointed hell flower goddess of Sui Yi Veng, sunshine, blazing flame. Anji Kuen waved his hand and directly issued an attack command. At the same time, he chose an attack move that was obviously on the wrong set. Although the attack moves were a bit misplaced on the set, the three-pointed hell flower god of Sui Yi Fuji was very cooperative. After receiving the order from Ung Shi Kun, he immediately opened two huge demonic flowers behind him and began to gather them. Sunshine. Ha. Huh. I'm just talking. I didn't expect that it can actually emit the sun's rays. Forget it, this is better. Then you're ready. The sun's rays and flames. Launch. Anji Kuen wiped the non-existent sweat from his forehead. He originally wanted to skin it, but he didn't expect that the three-pointed hell flower god of the ear leaf vine can really emit sunlight and flames. So, Anji Kuen simply decided he just followed the trend and directly commanded the three-pointed hell flower god of Sui Yi Veng on his field to fire at the giant Spinosaurus. In an instant, Three dazzling thick beams of light were instantly emitted from the three dragon heads of the three-pointed hell flower god of Sui Yi Veng, directly swallowing up the giant Spinosaurus and the dinosaur Riyazaki behind. The body of the giant Spinosaurus was reduced to charcoal under the attack of the three-pointed hell flower god of Sui Yi Fuji. And the already scarce health of dinosaur Riyazaki was also destroyed by this ray of sunshine from the three-pointed hell flower god of Sui Yi Fuji. It completely changed to zero. Dinosaur Riyazaki LP, 900 zero. Well. I actually lost again. With his health points returning to zero, Dinosaur Riyazaki instantly collapsed on the ground helplessly, and the unused cards in his hands were scattered on the ground. Dinosaur Riyazaki suddenly became a little doubtful about life. Ever since he got the runner-up ranking, 
he seemed to have not won a few duels after that, whether it was losing to Peacock Dance on the boat. Or losing to Peacock Dance in the Duel Kingdom. Junuchi Katsuya. Dinosaur Riyazaki now seriously doubts that the runner-up ranking he got may be poisonous. Good fight. Looking at the dinosaur Riyazaki lying helplessly on the ground, Anji Kuen shrugged helplessly, then slowly stepped forward and pulled the person up from the ground. Alas. I wish to admit defeat. This is my evil night dragon, my rarest Liaka. Now he is yours. As he spoke, Dinosaur Riyazaki took out the rarest Leia monster card, Evil Knight Dragon, from his deck, and handed it to Anshibakuen with a look of reluctance. Uh, no, you should keep this Evil Knight Dragon. It's really not of much use to me. Saying this, Anshiba pushed back the monster card handed over by Dinosaur Riyazaki. In his eyes, a mortal bone monster card like Evil Knight Dragon was really not as practical as a chestnut ball. Huh. You really don't need this evil knight. This is a Liaka monster with an initial attack power of 2350. Hearing this, Dinosaur Riyazaki's eyes widened immediately. He didn't understand why Anshibakuen had no interest in such a very powerful monster card. Well, you really don't need it, and you've also seen my deck. It focuses on fusion, and there is no shortage of powerful and high attack monsters. However, as a replacement for the evil knight dragon, your magic card give me a huge card. Really? Just need to be huge. Then it's a deal and you can't go back on it. Evil Knight Dragon is currently the strongest monster card in Dinosaur Riyazaki's hands. Of course, Dinosaur Riyazaki is reluctant to give it away as a prize. So. When Anshibakuen said that he could use a not rare magic card as a prize instead of the evil knight dragon, Dinosaur Riyazaki immediately agreed with great excitement and immediately put his own card on the dual plate. He cut out the huge magic card and handed it directly to Anjikuen together with his own puzzle card. Chapter 33 By the way, Brother Riyazaki, do you know a bastard named Insect Feather Moth? After getting the cards and puzzle cards he really needed from Dinosaur Riyazaki, and Shibakuen started to do his business. He had to find a way to change Dinosaur Riyazaki's situation of being deceived by the insect feather moth and being deceived into being eaten together. Plot Insect feather moth Bastard What happened to that guy? Dinosaur Riyazaki, who felt something bad about the word bastard in Anshibakuen's words, asked with some confusion. He was not very familiar with Insect Feather Moth, and their relationship was at best that of being rivals who had fought against each other in the national competition. Just acquaintance is enough. Just a reminder, Brother Riyazaki, you must be careful about that guy from Insect Feather Moth in the future. That insidious guy is so unscrupulous in doing things. He will do whatever it takes to make people want to punch him. Anji Kuen continued to speak, showing an expression of disgust as he spoke. Ha! Huh. What happened to that guy? Dinosaur Riyazaki asked again in confusion. He really couldn't imagine what the insect feather moth had done that was so unreasonable, causing Anji Kuen, who had been so friendly just now, to change his face in an instant. Well, you should know about the duel between Muto Yugi and Kaiba Sido, right? In the end, Muto Yugi relied on Exodia to successfully defeat Kaiba Sido's three blue eyed white dragons and won the final victory. Of course I know. Dinosaur Riyazaki responded naturally, the duel between Muto Yugi and Kaiba Sido was well known and very famous in the circle of duelists. But those five Exodia component cards were targeted by the insect feather moth guy. That guy directly got the five component cards from the hands of the talkative game in the name of watching. Then. As soon as insect feather moth got the card, he immediately threw all five Exodia component cards in the game into the sea. Hearing this, Dinosaur Riyazaki was completely stunned. He really couldn't believe that the insect feather moth guy would do such a crazy thing. Just because he was afraid of Liaka in other people's hands, he directly designed to deceive the card in other people's hands and destroy it. This move may not be too disrespectful, it is really not what a serious duelist should do. With this idea in mind, Dinosaur Riyazaki decided to stay vigilant in the future and resolutely not let anyone mess with his deck to avoid being ruined by someone who has the strongest trump card in his hand. 
He no longer has the true red eyes black dragon, absolutely can't let his evil night dragon disappear too. I understand, thank you for reminding me, I will be careful in the future. Dino Riyazaki solemnly expressed his gratitude to Enshibakuen. In Dino Riyazaki's opinion, a duelist as powerful as Enshibakuen would not say such unprovoked words to slander others, so Dino Riyazaki still choose to trust Anjikuen first. Besides, Insect Feather Moth has a sinister look on his face, and he also looks like a treacherous villain when he smiles. Add to that the incident Anjikuen just mentioned. There is no sense of disobedience at all, even it still reminds people of the scene at that time. Thinking like this, Dinosaur Riyazaki couldn't help but believe in the authenticity of Anjikuen's words even more. Well, in this way, Riyazaki probably won't end up collaborating with that guy from Insect Feather Moth. And Shibakuen looked at Dinosaur Riyazaki who was walking further and further away after saying goodbye to him. He sighed helplessly. He had already done what he had to do, hoping to change Dinosaur Riyazaki's tragic situation in the original plot. What an incredible fate. Forget it, let's forget about Dinosaur Riyazaki for now. Next, we have to find the next opponent. There are only two puzzle cards now. Unshikuen first stuffed all the puzzle cards and Liaka in his hand into his pocket, and then began to look for his next opponent. Just as substitutes and substitutes are attracted to each other, duelists and duelists also naturally attract each other. Not long after, Anjikuen found the second original character in a crowded square. This original character has wavy blonde hair, a tall figure, and a proud. Forget it, the card guy isn't too interested in these anyway, so just ignore it. Using the standard Yu-Gi-Oh rule of identifying people by their hair, and Shibakuen recognized the other person's true identity at a glance as the original character Maiko Mai. Is it a peacock dance? This one is a little more powerful than Dinosaur Riyazaki. Go and watch. After recognizing that the other party was a character from the original work, the interested Anjikuen squeezed into the crowd and watched the duel of peacock dance at close range. Peacock dance is indeed a peacock dance, and its dueling strength is obviously much higher than that of Dinosaur Riyazaki. Relying on the incomparable coordination between Ka and Ka, he easily defeated himself with three strikes, five divisions, and two. Current opponent. Even the basic health points are not deducted at all. Is there anyone else who wants to duel with me? Hurry, hurry. Time waits for no one. Peacock Dance urged, while raising his dual plate and signaling to the people around him. This is too strong. It's impossible to survive. The thorny rose slipped away. But maybe it was because Peacock Wu won so beautifully in the last round. Several duelists wearing dual discs who were watching on the side made their choices conscientiously after hearing Peacock Wu's invitation to fight. Sneak away at the first opportunity. Let me accept your challenge. No one continued to challenge Peacock Wu, and Anji Kuen, who had nothing to eat anymore, had no choice but to go on stage to duel with Peacock Wu himself. Finally, one is here, so stop talking nonsense. Let's start the duel quickly. Seeing Ansijin coming on the stage, Peacock Wu couldn't help but nodded with satisfaction. She originally thought that no one would dare to challenge her again. Then. Duel. X2. Ansijin LP, 4000. Peacock Dance LP, 4000. I'll attack first. Then. My turn, draw a card. Through the initiative determination of the dual disc, Peacock Dance gained the right to attack first in this duel. I attack to summon the Amazon Swordsman. And equip him with the Equipment Magic card. The Amazon Secret Treasure. End the turn. Peacock Dance first summoned a scantily clad female Amazon Swordsman on her field with a machete on her shoulder, and equipped the Amazon Swordsman with a very disgusting Equipment Magic card. Amazon Swordsman slash 4 stars, Earth, Warrior type slash attack power. 1500 slash defense power, 1600. Chapter, 34. Is the first monster summoned by Peacock Dance actually an Amazon Swordsman? And it's also equipped with Amazon Secret Treasure. The first round of Peacock Dance's operation made Anjikuen look ugly. 
The main reason why Anji Kuen's face turned ugly was because these two cards from Amazon were so disgusting when combined with each other. The Amazon Swordsman itself has the effect of inflicting battle damage to the opponent. Coupled with the effect of the Amazon secret treasure that it will not be destroyed by battle once in one round, and the effect of destroying attacking monsters after the battle. These two add up. It's not as simple as 1 plus 1 equals 2. My turn, draw a card. Anji Kuen glanced at the cards in his hand and thought about the next strategy in his heart. He would definitely suffer a loss against A with the Amazon swordsman. If the Chimera flower and plant were to hit him, he would have to suffer 3,000 injuries. But after thinking about it, Anzijin suddenly realized, why did he keep focusing on how to solve the problem of Amazon head-on? The Chimera Flower Grass does not only have the effect of boosting attack power. The Chimera Flower Grass also has the effect of banishing the opponent's monster. Oh. Why didn't I think of this happening in the first place? Thinking of this, Lord Anji suddenly woke up from a dream, and patted his head with some hatred. Forget it, now that you know how to deal with that disgusting thing, let's start quickly. I will first summon the plant predating wasp orchid scorpion from my hand. After thinking of the solution, Anji Kuen immediately started his own operation and summoned a scorpion monster, bee orchid scorpion, which was shaped like dry wood and had a tail like a bee, to his field. Don't ask Mr. Anji why he can get the predatory plant bee orchid scorpion every time, ask him because he has the power to stuff three bee orchid scorpions. Be orchid scorpion that preys on plants. What is that? Never seen it before. The attack power is only 1200, so it feels average. It's definitely not a powerful monster. Seeing the strange looking monster be orchid scorpion being summoned by Lord Anji, the onlookers all started discussions full of surprise and confusion. They who were born in the DM era had never seen be orchid scorpion like this. Dual monsters that started in the A5 era. Prey plants. Never heard of a card. Seeing Lord Anji summoning a monster that he had never seen or heard of before, Peacock Wu was filled with confusion. The effect of the Bee Orchid Scorpion is activated. I discard a monster from my hand, and then special summon the predatory plant Saracenia Cobra from the deck. Familiar predatory plant monsters appear again. The snake-shaped predatory plant monster created based on the snake pitcher appeared on Umshi Kuen's field under the call of the bee orchid scorpion effect. Predatory plant pitcher plant cobra slash three stars slash dark slash plant family slash attack power, 1000 slash defense power, 1500. With the effect of serpentine cobra, I can retrieve a fusion magic card from the deck and add it to my hand. Through the effect of serpentine cobra, Umshi Kuen retrieved a fusion magic card from the deck and added it to his hand. It's actually fusion. Peacock Wu looked at the two strange-looking plant-predating monsters on Ansijin's field, and couldn't help but wonder what kind of monster these two monsters could be fused into. Activate the magic card. Fusion. I use the bee orchid scorpions and snake pitcher cobras on my field as fusion materials. Fusion. Luring insects with seductive fragrance. Two seeds of chaos growing in hell. Now. Merge into one here. Fusion summon. Appear. The forbidden flower that blooms alone and silently. Level 7. Predatory plant chimera big flowers and plants. A vortex of fusion appeared on the field, and the two plant predating monsters gradually merged together. Soon, an extremely fat Rafflesia-shaped monster appeared on Anji Kuen's field. He actually summoned a monster with an attack power of 2500 points. It seems that this guy's strength is not simple. However, no matter how high the monster's attack power is, it cannot defeat the Amazon swordsman equipped with the Amazon secret treasure. The appearance of Chimera flowers obviously made Peacock Dance's originally light-hearted expression become more serious. Humph. Peacock Wio, your tactics are indeed quite perfect. The Punxi Swordsman, who can retaliate against damage, and the Amazon Secret Treasure, which will not be destroyed by battle and destroys attacking monsters, are combined with each other. They complement each other. They form a team. A pretty powerful combination. If it were anyone else, it might really take a lot of effort to solve this combination. But it's a pity that you met me. 
my chimera flower plant just has the ability to defeat you. The ability to combine. The effect of chimera flower is activated. Once per turn. I can banish a monster on the opponent's field with a level lower than chimera flower. Anji Cohen immediately ordered the chimera flowers on his field to activate his effects on the Amazon swordsman. Several thick green vines were shot out by the chimera flowers and plants, wrapping the Amazon swordsman into a big green rice dumpling. The chimera flower plant that successfully entangled the Amazon swordsman quickly began to exert force. In the end, under the horrified eyes of the onlookers, the Amazon swordsman was directly strangled alive by the chimera flowers and turned into particles of light that filled the sky. What? Amazon swordsman. Peacock Wu, who was unable to resist the effect of the chimera flower, could only watch as the Amazon swordsman was eliminated by the effect of the chimera flower and disappeared from the field. Okay, let's enter the battle stage next. Let's launch a direct attack on Peacock Dance by Chimera Flower Grass. After getting rid of the annoying Amazon Swordsman, Enzidu entered the battle stage and commanded his Chimera Flowers to launch a direct attack on Peacock Dance. The thick green vines slapped the ground in front of Peacock Wu fiercely. The whipping speed even generated wind pressure, blowing Peacock Wu's long golden wavy hair. Peacock Dance LP, 40001500. After attacking, one card is covered, and my turn ends. After the direct attack, Um Shi Kun ends his turn after covering a card. This is too powerful. It can actually reduce the opponent's blood so much in one round. Yes, yes, I didn't expect that monster to have such a powerful effect. It's so ugly. Although that ugly monster is very powerful. But I still choose to stand with the blonde beauty. Appearance is justice. Come on, blonde beauty. Hey, chimera flower. It feels so astringent. The melon eaters who were watching also started their own discussions at this time, and many of these discussions contain some quite demonic discussions. Chapter 35 My turn, draw a card. Although a large number of basic points were reduced by Anji Kun in one round, Peacock Dance herself did not show any signs of frustration at this time, as if she was not the one who had just been reduced a large number of basic points. It is indeed a very powerful monster. But. It is not impossible to defeat. But then again. How does this guy know my name? I shouldn't have said my name, right? Peacock Wu suddenly realized a very important question, that is, how did Anji Kuen know his name? She clearly remembered that she had not disclosed any information related to her. Who are you? Why do you know my name? With such doubts, Peacock Wu didn't hide it and directly asked Anji Jun across from him. Well, you are the second person to ask me who I am. I am just an ordinary duelist passing by. Just call me Anji Kuen. As for why I know your name. If you are interested, you can ask Jinuchi. Anyway, all your information was told to me by Jinuchi himself. And Shiba Kuen answered Peacock Mai's question while silently assisting Jinuchi. Do you know Jinuchi? Hearing the very familiar name, Peacock Wu couldn't help but be startled, and then asked. Yeah, we are friends. And Shiba Kuen immediately nodded and answered the question raised by Mao Wu. He and Jinuchi have already opened card packs and played cards to compare skills together. They can be said to be friends. What? It turns out to be someone I know from Junuchi. Hearing this, Peacock Wu couldn't help but sigh helplessly. At first, she thought that the person she was dueling with was just a passerby who was fighting against five scum. As it turned out, this time it was her own family fighting her own family. However, now that the fight has begun, even the members of their own family have no chance of stopping the game and shaking hands to make peace. In the end, they can only choose to continue the fight to determine a winner. Forget it, although I am also curious about how you know Jinuchi. However, the top priority now should be the duel in front of us, so let us get back to the duel in front of us. Although she was curious about how Enshibakuen and Jinuchi met, considering that they were still in the duel period, Peacock Mike could only suppress the curiosity in her heart and concentrate on the next duel. I will first normally summon Harpy Girl 1 from my hand. 
Peacock Dance first summoned a harpy monster on her field who was wearing scantily clad clothing and had the characteristics of both a human and an eagle. Harpy Girl 1 quarter star, wind, bird, beast type slash attack power, 1300 slash defense power, 1400 slash effect, the card name of this card is used as Harpy Girl. As long as this card remains on the field, the attack power of wind attribute monsters on the field increases by 300. Harpy Girl 1 slash attack power, 1300 1600. Immediately afterwards, I activate a magic card from my hand. Manhua Mirror, Gorgeous Clone. Through the effect of this card, I can only activate it when there is a Harpy Girl on my field. I can make a special appearance on the field. Summon the three Harpy Sisters. At the call of the Peacock Dance, three Harpy Monsters with different hairstyles appeared on the field together. Three Harpy Sisters slash six stars, wind, bird, beast tribe slash attack power, 1950 slash defense power, 2100. Watching Peacock Dance summon the three-in-one little magnet on the field. Bah, three-in-one Harpy Monster, Anji Kuen couldn't help but sigh at the wonder of this monster. Obviously, the attack power of a single monster is 1300. As a result, the three monsters combined, and the attack power increased by 650. But when you think about Gaia next door, whose attack power is only 600 after being dismounted. The fact that the attack power of the three Harpy sisters only increased by 650 after 3 and 1 is not something that cannot be accepted. It's not over yet. I activate the magic card Wanhua Mirror, the gorgeous clone, in my hand, and once again special summon the three harpy girls on the field. Just after summoning the three harpy sisters, Peacock Wu took out a Wanhua Mirror, a gorgeous clone, from his hand card and placed it on his dual plate. As the cards were placed, the second three harpy sisters also appeared on the Peacock dance field as they wished. The effect of Harpy Girl 1 as long as this card exists on the field, the attack power of the wind attribute monsters on my field will increase by 300. After summoning two identical Harpy Girls, Peacock Dance did not forget to let Harpy Girl 1 increase her basic abilities. Three Harpy Sisters slash attack power, 1950-2250. You are as fierce as a tiger with this operation, summoning two Harpies and three Sisters. But if you compare the attack power. After all, my chimera flower and grass is more powerful. Better. And Jijun looked at Peacock Dance's operation, pretending to be puzzled on the surface, but in fact, he was very clear in his heart, and could almost guess what Peacock Dance was going to do next. After all, the Harpy Girl family can only count on their fingers a few cards that can be used to explode. For example, the Phoenix Formation. Then you open your eyes and watch. Magic Card Activation. Harpy Girl Phoenix Formation Peacock Dance smiled and slowly placed the card in his hand in the magic trap area of the dual disc. A phoenix picture that looked very high-end instantly appeared behind the three. Ah, uh, no, it should be seven Harpy Girls if counted separately. And as the seven Harpy Girls jointly sent out a loud bird cry to the sky, the phoenix picture behind them also moved, and the phoenix in it seemed to be alive, showing its graceful figure in the picture. But the next moment, the phoenix that was still showing its graceful figure suddenly flew out of the picture. Wrapped in a large amount of fierce flames, it directly attacked the chimera flower grass on Ansigen's field. Plants are afraid of fire, and predatory plants are naturally afraid of fire. Facing the aggressive fire phoenix, the chimera flower grass, which had no way to stop it, was directly burned into a pile of ashes by the fire phoenix. The phoenix flapped its wings, and the ashes drifted away with the wind. Then, after the fire phoenix had dealt with the chimera flower grass, it flapped its wings again, returned to the picture as if its mission was accomplished, and then gradually disappeared behind the harpy girls. If it weren't for the fact that there was still some heat on the field because of the appearance of the fire phoenix, I'm afraid that the fire phoenix just burned the chimera flower grass that scene will only be regarded as an illusion. The effect of Harpy Phoenix Formation Dash, when there are three or more Harpy monsters on my field, I can destroy as many monsters as possible on the opponent's field. And inflict damage equal to the attack power of the monster with the highest attack power among the monsters destroyed. Chimera Grandiflora's attack power is 2500. 
so you will also receive 2500 damage. After activating the magic card, Peacock Dance also specifically explained the powerful effect of Harpy Phoenix formation again. And Jijun LP, 4000-1500. Chapter, 36. Ahem, it's indeed the Phoenix formation that will resolve the situation. Anji Kuen couldn't help but murmured as he felt the faint heat coming from his face. Oh, obviously as long as you equip the Harpy Girl with an electronic tights in your hand, the Harpy Girl's attack power can exceed that of the Chimera Flower. What a pity. Anji Kuen feels that it is a pity that Peacock Dance did not choose to equip the Harpy Girl with a magic card and then let her directly attack the Chimera Flower plant. Otherwise, I can probably win this round comfortably and watch the dramatic scene of the Harpy touching the Chimera Flower and then being slapped to death by the Chimera Flower. Due to the effect of the Phoenix Formation, I cannot attack this turn, so I cover a card and end the turn. Peacock Wu, who was unable to enter the combat phase due to the effect of the Phoenix Array, could only place the last card in his hand on the backcourt and then ended his turn. First is the Preparation Phase. I activate the effect of the Chimera Flower in the graveyard. I can retrieve a magic card from the deck and fuse it into my hand. Through the effect of Chimera Grand Flower, Ung Shi Kuen retrieved a fusion card from the deck and added it to his hand. After activating the effect of Chimera Flower, Ung Shi Kuen officially entered the card drawing stage and drew a card from his deck. I will activate the continuous magic card from my hand first. Pray Flower Pot the predatory plant pot effect is activated. Once per turn, it can only be activated during my main phase. I can select one predatory plant monster with a level below 4 from my hand or graveyard to special summon. I will summon the predatory plant in my graveyard. Squid Sundew is specially summoned to the field. Under the operation of Lord Anji, the Squid Sundew with extremely low sanity value appeared on the field under the influence of the sustainable magic card Prey Flower Pot. Predatory Plant Squid Sundew slash 2 stars slash dark slash plant family slash attack power, 800 slash defense power, 400. Squid Sundew. When did this monster enter the graveyard? Looking at the ugly monster resurrected from the cemetery on Ansigen's field, Peacock Wu asked with some confusion. After all, in his memory, Enshijin only used a scorpion, a snake, and a reflesia. This weird monster called the Squid Sundew has never been seen. Of course it's the monster sent in by the effect of the Orchid Scorpion before. Enshijin responded casually to Peacock Dance's question, and then continued to operate his predatory plants. Next, he was going to fuse and summon a big guy. Next. I first normally summon the predating plant glandular grass wasp on my field. Then activate the magic card fusion from the cards in my hand. Fusion of the squid drosera and glandular grass wasp on my field. Predating plant glandular grass wasp slash one star slash dark slash plant family slash attack power, zero slash defense power, 1900. What? Are you here to fuse again? Can it actually be possible to fuse? But there are no scorpions and snakes on the field that were used for fusion before. Could it be possible that these two monsters can fuse with something else? This guy. His dueling skills may not be too strong. Under Anji Kuen's operation, not only the people watching the melon eating, but also the peacock dance also made a sound of exclamation because of Anji Kuen's operation. But having said that, after seeing this, some people may want to ask, isn't this the operation of having a card and then watching the card effect? What kind of high-end dual technology is that? Just have some hands. But, before you ask this question, you have to consider the situation in Yu-Gi-Oh! DM Dual City at that time. In the original work, except for the protagonist group and the villain group, most of the card players basically only compete with each other against Ace. Compared with the predatory plant decks that rely on continuous fusion to quickly end the battle, doesn't the predatory plant deck appear to be quite high in operation? Come on. The fusion condition is that there are two dark monsters on the field. The two charming flowers that lure insects with their fragrance are now fused into one, and a new threat will be born from the hell deep in the petals. Fusion Summon. Egyo. A vicious poisonous dragon full of danger. LV8. A vicious and poisonous fusion dragon. 
Under the summoning words sung by Anji Kuan, which was full of the atmosphere of Chuji, a ferocious dragon with horns on its head, armor on its back, and a long hook-shaped tail appeared on the field of Anji Kuan with a roar. Hungry Poison Fusion Dragon Official Debut Hungry Poison Fusion Dragon slash 8 stars slash dark slash dragon slash attack power, 2800 slash defense power, 2000. It's a dragon. But. I have a question, how did a wasp and a broken tree stump merge to create a dragon? The appearance of the Hungry Venom Fusion Dragon made the audience present who had never seen the world express their own emotions, shock, and. Complaints. Humph. He is indeed a fierce and hungry poison fusion dragon. It feels so handsome. Not only the onlookers were greatly shocked by the appearance of the hungry poison fusion dragon, but even Mr. Anji couldn't help but reveal a picture of Brother Zhu who had never seen the world after summoning the hungry poison fusion dragon. Sample After all, the last time I saw the hungry poison fusion dragon appear, it was in the inner space of the fusion gem. The environment in the inner space was very dark, so I couldn't carefully observe the appearance of the hungry poison fusion dragon. And now I am outside in the bright light. What is observed is definitely much thinner than what is observed in the inner space of the fusion gem. Therefore, when Anjikuen summoned the hungry poison fusion dragon queen for the first time, which was more realistic, more majestic, and more handsome, he couldn't help but show a dazed look that he had never seen in the world. This was a normal reaction. The reason it's all because this monster is so good looking. Ahem. Let's get back to the point and do some serious business. Otherwise, I'll always feel a little embarrassed. After a while, in order to prevent the onlookers from noticing his unfamiliar appearance, Anji Kuen immediately put away his previous expression and continued with his business. I activate the effect of Hungry Poison Fusion Dragon first. This card can only be activated when the fusion summon is successful. I can select one specially summoned monster on the opponent's field. Let the hungry poison fusion dragon's attack power increase until the end of the round. That monster's attack power value. Of course I want to choose the three harpy girls on the field with peacock dance. The attack power of the three harpy girls is 2250. Therefore, the attack power of the Hungry Poison Fusion Dragon will also increase by 2250 points. Lord Anji smiled slightly, and then activated the effect of the Hungry Poison Fusion Dragon. With the activation of this effect, the Hungry Poison Fusion Dragon's attack power actually began to soar. 2800 2900 3000 All the way up to 5050, the Hungry Poison Fusion Dragon's attack power slowly stopped jumping. Hungry Poison Fusion Dragon slash attack power, 2800550 slash defense power, 2000. Chapter, 37. After the effects of the Hungry Poison Fusion Dragon are released, there are also the effects of the Glandular Grass Wasp and Squid Drosser that were just used as fusion materials. The first is the effect of the Glandular Grass Wasp. The Glandular Grass Wasp card can only be activated when it is sent to the graveyard. I can add a predatory plant monster from the deck to my hand, and I add another one from my deck. Add Squid Sundew to your hand. Then there is the effect of the Squid Drosera. It can only be activated when the face-up Squidward Drosera leaves the field. I can put a prey counter on all the specially summoned monsters on the field. As soon as Mr. Anji finished speaking, two black tadpole-shaped seeds emerged from the ground. With a powerful jump from the black seeds, both seeds successfully landed on the three harpies. On the sisters. Three harpy sisters slash prey indicator, one six star one star. What the hell is this? Looking at the prey indicators that were firmly attached to the three harpy sisters and could not be shaken off no matter how hard they shook them off, Peacock Dancer couldn't help but frown slightly in disgust. I will first send the squid sundew in my hand to the graveyard. And then I will directly enter the battle phase. Anji Kuen gave up and went straight to the battle stage without explaining to Peacock Wu or the audience what special effects the squid and sundew in his hand would have after being sent to the cemetery. Hungry Poison Fusion Dragon The target is Harpy Girl 1. Devour her. Fong of Hungry. On the field, the Hungry Poison Fusion Dragon, 
ordered by Lord Anji, immediately roared towards the sky. With this roar, the external armor that seemed to be a decoration behind the hungry poison fusion dragon actually moved. The middle of the external armor cracked open, revealing the extremely sharp fangs and teeth. Then, the cracked external armor extended directly from the back of the hungry venom fusion dragon, opening its bloody mouth. Attacked the shivering harpy girl on the peacock dance floor. Wait. At this moment. The trap card I covered in the backfield activates. Screen mirror wall. As long as this card exists in the magic and trap area, the attack power of the opponent's attacking monster will be halved. Seeing the menacing hungry poison fusion dragon, Peacock Wu, who felt very bad, immediately opened the cover card in his backcourt, the mirror wall of the screen. As the covering card was turned over, a polyprism appeared out of thin air in the attack path of the hungry poison fusion dragon. Under the wonderful power emitted by the polyprism, the hungry poison fusion dragon's attack power was inevitably reduced to half. Hungry Poison Fusion Dragon Slash Attack Power, 5050-2525 However, even if the attack power of the Hungry Poison Fusion Dragon is cut in half by the effect of the screen mirror wall, the attack power of the Hungry Poison Fusion Dragon is still much higher than that of Harpy Girl 1. As a result, the external armor of the Hungry Venom Fusion Dragon mercilessly chewed up the mirror wall blocking its attack route, and continued to attack Harpy Girl 1. Finally, in the crowd watching under the horrified gazes of everyone, the external armor of the hungry poison fusion dragon directly opened its bloody mouth and swallowed the harpy girl one whole. After Maru finished swallowing the person, the external armor burped in a humane manner, and then retracted behind the hungry poison fusion dragon. Three Harpy Sisters Slash Attack Power, 2250-1950 Peacock Dance LP, 1500575 Ha! You escaped a disaster. Peacock Wu slowly breathed a sigh of relief with lingering fear. Fortunately, the screen mirror wall had the effect of reducing the attack power by half. Otherwise, he would have been basically destroyed by Njijun's hungry poison fusion dragon's attack. The score has completely returned to zero. M, do you really think you escaped a bullet? Peacock Dance. Did you forget something? Just when Peacock Wu was glad that he had successfully escaped, Lord Anji suddenly made a sound. And Lord Anji's sudden words also made Peacock Wu's gradually calm mood suddenly jump again, and a very ominous premonition also climbed into Peacock Wu's heart at this moment. What is it? Of course it's the squid sundew that I sent from my hand to the graveyard just before entering the battle phase. Could it be that you forgot? What? Does that thing actually have any other hidden effects? Listening to Anji Kuen's words of explanation, Peacock Wu couldn't help but be surprised. She really didn't expect that the turtle thing that looked like a dead tree stump not only had the effect of stacking prey counters on the enemy monsters, but also had hidden functions. Other special effects. That's right. In addition to the effect of stacking prey counters when leaving the field, the squid sundew also has another effect. And this effect can only be activated and a card is sent from the hand to the graveyard. I can make a monster on my field move toward all opponents' monsters with prey counters on the field attack once. And Jijun smiled knowingly, and then slowly told the effect of the squid and sundew that had been sold for a while. His previous sell-off was to leave people in suspense just to give Peacock Wu a scare that was enough to kill people. Surprise! That is to say. After the hungry poison fusion dragon finishes level A, it can attack each of the two Harpy Sisters monsters on your field once again. And the difference in attack power counts. Needless to say, you should be able to figure out the peacock dance. You're lying, right? I actually lost. And lost so completely. Seeing this scene in front of her, peacock dance was stunned and began to mutter to herself. She can easily calculate such a simple arithmetic problem without Anji Kuen asking. Her basic score will be completely reset to zero under the first attack of the Hungry Poison Fusion Dragon. This duel. She has already lost. Then. Continue the battle phase. Launch a fatal blow to the two harpy monsters. Devour them. Then turn them into the nutrients needed for creatures to thrive. Hungry Poison Fusion Dragon. 
Anji Kuen didn't waste any time and directly let the hungry poison fusion dragon on his field attack the two harpy girl and three sisters monsters. The two rear armors on the back of the hungry poison fusion dragon immediately detached from the main body. Opening the bloody mouth that had been hidden in the middle of them, and swallowed the two harpy and three sisters monsters whole in just one bite. The two swallowed harpy girl and three sisters monsters will slowly flow along the esophagus at the joint of the rear armor to the magnificent dragon body of the hungry venom fusion dragon. And eventually turn into offerings to the hungry venom fusion dragon. Nutrition of Dragon Body Peacock Dance LP, 5750 Chapter, 38 That's how Junuchi and I met and became friends. After telling Kongkul all about how he met Junuchi and became partners, Enzijin slowly exhaled a large breath. As soon as the duel with Kongkul ended, Enzijin was hurriedly pulled out of the crowd by Kongkul, who was full of curiosity and taken to another hidden place with fewer people to tell her the story of meeting Junuchi and becoming partners. Ha! Huh. So that's how it is. After listening to Anzijin's story in full, Kongku breathed a sigh of relief. If there's anything else you want to know, I suggest you ask Junuchi directly. I have something urgent to do, so I'll leave first. I still have to find another opponent to duel and grab the puzzle card. As Anzijin spoke, he stretched out his hand to Kongkwu. Kongkwu looked at Anzijin's hand stretched out to her with some confusion. Liaka and puzzle card. For Liaka, I don't ask for much. I don't need any monsters. Just give me the feather broom. And Jijun smiled and said what he needed. You are really good at choosing cards. After hearing the card and Jijun needed, Kong Kei Wu was obviously stunned. She wanted to give Jijun a card to deal with it. Anyway, she didn't use her rarest Liaka Harpy Feather Broom in this duel, and Jijun certainly didn't know she had this card. But the final result made her never expect. And Jijun seemed to know that she already had a Feather Broom. Even though he had never seen her use it in a competition, he still chose the Feather Broom as a prize. Here you are. Junichi Gai. What a big mouth. Finally, Kong K. Wu could only sigh helplessly, and then took out her puzzle card and feather broom and handed them to Nji Jun. At this time, Peacock Dance had already blamed Junuchi for all the things that Nji Jun knew about his feather sweep card. Junuchi who was innocently caught in the crossfire. JPG. Thank you, you are such a good person. After getting the harpy feather sweep, Nji Jun immediately thanked Peacock Dance with great joy and gave her a good person card. After all, when the fusion gem gave him cards, it didn't give him any general purpose clear cards, but only gave him a bunch of his own monster magic trap cards, so. If he wanted any general purpose clear cards, he could only rely on himself to find ways to get them. Then I'll leave first, see you later. And Jijun put away the Rhea card and the Jigsaw card, said hello to Peacock Dance, and then left straight away. He still had to find someone else to duel and take the Jigsaw card. Although the plug-in is a fusion gem, not a system, and there is no strict requirement that you must win the dual city championship, but as a time traveler, you must be a little ambitious, right? Otherwise, as a time traveler in the future, if you do nothing but fish, you will lose face for the previous time travelers. And Jijun strolled for a while, and finally met AI at the corner of an unknown black alley. No, it should be Xiao Hei at the corner. Under an Jijun's sight, Two black-robed men who were obviously Guru's hunters gathered in the black alley in a sneaky way, and no one knew what they were doing. With the grand belief of seeing injustice and helping others, Anjijun decisively stepped into the black alley and prepared to have an impassioned duel with them. While dueling, he also got some small money from the two Guru's hunters to rob the rich and help the poor. Two Guru's seniors, how was your harvest today? How many liakas did you get? And Jijun walked silently behind the two Guru's hunters who were gathered together and asked. He he today I snatched five Liakas from five weak duelists. Isn't it amazing? Among them, the rarest Liaka is an emerald dragon with an attack power of 2400. What's that? I snatched a holy knight dragon with an attack power of 2500. How about it? I'm better than him. 
After hearing what Njijun said, the two gurus hunters who were gathered together took out the liakas they had obtained without even turning their heads, and began to show off to Njijun. Oh, oh, oh. The two seniors are really amazing. After handing these two cards to the boss, it will definitely not take long for you to get promoted and get a raise, become the general manager, become the CEO, marry a beautiful and rich woman, and finally reach the peak of your life. When that time comes, please be sure to take care of me. And Jijun cooperated very well and pretended to be full of admiration, loudly praising the two gurus hunters. That's for sure. But, brother, you are also a capable person. Tell me your name, and I will take you to eat delicious food and drink spicy drinks in the future. The two people in the guru's group were obviously a little carried away by Anji Kuen's flattery, but when they turned their heads to see the appearance of the capable man behind them. They were stunned. Already. Because of the people behind them. He was not wearing the standard black robe of a guru's hunter. That is to say. The man behind them is not the same as them. Who are you? How did you know that we are from the guru's group? That's right. Tell me quickly. Who are you? Otherwise, don't blame us for being rude. The two gurus group jumped up in shock, jumped to the side, and asked Anji Kuen loudly, one on the left and the other on the right. Well, you are the fourth group to ask me who I am. Don't you know that asking my name like this triggers a death question? Forget it, you probably won't understand what I'm telling you. Just know that I am an ordinary duelist passing by, here to defeat you. Anji Kuen scratched his head, and as he spoke, he took out his dual plate and motioned to the two gurus hunters. Humph. Fooling Xuanxu. No matter who you are. Since you are here. Then don't even think about leaving. Leave your liaka behind. I don't know what kind of rare liaka you will have. Ha. Ha ha. We gurus hunters are not people who follow the rules. Next. You are going to beat both of us by yourself. Ha ha ha. After saying that, the two gurus hunters laughed loudly. From their point of view, no matter how sacred Lord Anji is, he cannot defeat the two of them with one person. This duel. It must be a victory for both of them. Oh. Two of them beat me up. Are you so conscious? It saves me the trouble of raising this opinion. Anji Kuen couldn't help but feel a little surprised when he heard the Gruss Hunter say this. He originally wanted to fight two Gruss Hunters one by one to avoid wasting unnecessary time. Then. Let this massacre. Start quickly. The predatory plants are eager to devour fresh flesh and blood. As he spoke, Anji Kuen, who had reawakened his Chinibu attribute, couldn't help but reveal an evil smile Yen Yi. After all, I am using the most representative deck in the game, Predator Plants. How can I justify this without some showmanship? Chapter, 39 The duel between Anji Kuen and the two Gruss hunters soon began, and the virtual projection devices popped out of the dual plate and were distributed in the four corners to start working. Guru's Hunter 1 LP, 4000 Guru's Hunter 2 LP, 4000 In the following dual plot, the two Guru's Hunters will be called separately, Guru's Hunter 1 and Guru's Hunter 2. There is no need to randomize the dual disc, you can just attack first. Anji Kuen waved his hand with a disapproving look on his face, and directly gave the initiative of this round of duel to the two Gurus on the opposite side. Humph. You actually chose to attack first. Ha ha ha. Are you scared to death by us? Okay. Then I'll show you how powerful our Guru's Hunter is. Gruss Hunter 1 looked at Mr. Anji's disapproving look and thought that Mr. Anji was frightened by the two-on-one operation of their Gruss Hunters, so he laughed out loud with joy. Stand up. Then let me start first, and then come to you. Okay. Guru's Hunter 1 first said something to another Guru's Hunter next to him, and after getting a nod of agreement from Guru's Hunter 2, he immediately started his own operation. Okay. Then, it's my turn to draw a card. I'll first summon the Hell Highway Patrol from the card in my hand. Guru's Hunter 1 first drew a monster card from his hand, and a demon monster riding a motorcycle and wearing a horn helmet appeared on the field. 
Hell Highway Patrol slash 4 stars Dark Demon Attack 1600 slash Defense 1200 slash Effect Activate when this card destroys a monster in battle and sends it to the graveyard, inflicting damage to the opponent equal to the original level of that monster x100. Then I activate the magic card from my hand. The Mischievous Twin Demons. They are actually twin demons who love mischief. Hearing the extremely familiar card name from the mouth of Gruss Hunter 1, Anji Kuen made a rare sound of surprise. He really didn't expect that what he saw in front of him was just an ordinary little Gruss Hunter, and that he would actually have forbidden cards like the mischievous demon twins in his hands. So, really it is indeed the era of DM where banned cards are everywhere. The effect of this card is that I can pay 1000 points. Randomly discard a card from the opponent's hand, and then the opponent chooses to discard a card from his hand. Guru's Hunter won thought for a while, and finally chose to discard the third card on the left of Anji Kuen. Guru's Hunter won slash LP, 4000300000. Oh, my perfect hand card. Looking at the predatory plant B Orchid Scorpion in his hand, which was selected by Gurus, Anji Kuen smacked his lips in displeasure. He didn't expect that the other party's selection was so accurate, and directly selected his own B Orchid Scorpion. Although he was very reluctant to part with it, under the influence of the effect, Anji Kuen could only throw the B Orchid Scorpion in his hand into the cemetery. Ha ha ha, it seems that I have chosen a pretty powerful monster card. Then. It's up to you to make your own choice. Although Gruss Hunter 1 did not know what kind of monster the Bee Orchid Scorpion that Anji Jun had just discarded into the graveyard was. Through the unhappy expression on Anji Jun's face, Gruss Hunter 1 felt that he had probably discarded it at random. The opponent has a very powerful or useful monster card. Oh, it is indeed a banned card. The effect is disgusting. Anji Kuen looked at the card in his hand, and after thinking for a moment, he decided to discard the squid sundew in his hand and enter the cemetery. Next, I cover two cards, ending the turn. Gruss Hunter then covered two more cards in his backfield before ending his turn. Then, it's my turn. Draw a card. After the operation of Guru's Hunter 1 is completed, it is the turn of Guru's Hunter 2 to operate. I activate the magic card from my hand first. Pot of Desire. Through the effect of this card, I can draw two cards from my deck. At the beginning of Gruss Hunter 2, he took out a Pot of Desire from his hand and drew two cards from his deck. Immediately afterwards, I activate the magic card codex in my hand to kill. Players on both sides send two cards from their hands to the graveyard. After that, each draws two cards from the deck. After the Pot of Desire, Gruss Hunter 2 activated a Codex Kill from his hand. Checking cards so frequently. Could it be another old E card set? Anji Kuen couldn't help but guess as he threw the two cards of the Predatory Plant Dupine Hydrozoa and the Predatory Plant Cordyceps Sinensis into the graveyard, and then drew two more cards from the deck. If it was really what I thought, one of the two Gruss Hunters was using the Exodia deck. Then I would have to get rid of him quickly. Otherwise, Lao AI's five parts would be overturned in a dramatic way. Very good. I got it. Next. Stupid mortal. Let you experience the power from God. Wait. Kami. No, according to the character of a three-year-old, it is impossible to hand over the God card to an ordinary little guy, right? And Ziju initially thought that the kami mentioned by the other party was the winged dragon of the sun god, one of the three illusory gods. But after thinking carefully for a moment, Anji Kuen still gave up this unrealistic possibility. How could a three-year-old Malik give the real god card to a little kid? At most it's a copy of Zhang Shen's card. I will first summon the imperial seahorse from the card in my hand. After checking the cards twice, Gruss Hunter 2 seemed to have drawn the cards he needed. He was very excited, and then summoned a handsome looking humanoid monster covered in blue armor to himself. On the monster area. Emperor Seahorse slash 4 stars light sea dragon type slash attack, 1700 slash defense, 1650 slash effect, when a light attribute monster is summoned from a higher level, this card can be released as 2. Immediately afterwards. I will activate the double summon of the magic card from my hand. 
through the effect of this card. This round, I can perform two normal summons. I thought the Imperial Seahorse on the field was a sacrifice. Wake up. My Kami. Superior Summon. Creation. World. God. Following the loud shout of Grus Hunter 2, the crazy Grus Hunter 2 slapped the monster card in his hand onto his dual plate. As several bolts of thunder exploded in the center of the dual field, a tall orange figure walked out of the bolts of thunder in slow steps and arrived at the monster field of Grus Hunter 2. Creation God slash 8 stars light thunder tribe slash attack, 2300 slash defense, 3000 slash effect, select one monster card in your own graveyard. Send one card from your hand to the graveyard, and the selected monster card is special summoned. This effect can only be used once per turn. This card cannot be special summoned from the graveyard. Chapter, 40. Creation God. Oh, it turns out it's this one. Anji Kuen couldn't help but let out a breath. Which God did he think it was, but it turned out to be the monster creation God. When it comes to the monster of the God of creation, you may not have heard of it, and it is not very popular. But when it comes to the other vest of the God of creation, you may be quite familiar with it. Popularity, the other vest of the God of creation that's the chaos creator, which is often widely included in various decks related to chaos, and is quite popular. But. What is the effect of this monster? I only remember the effect of the chaos god of creation. Anji Kuen gently patted his head and began to recall the special effects of the rather unpopular monster of the god of creation. However, after thinking for a long time, Anji Kuen only recalled that the effect of this monster was related to the monster pull from the cemetery. Ha! Huh. This is the power of Kami. I hope you are trembling with fear. Next. Let you see the great power from the card. The God of Creation effect is activated. I can choose a monster card in my graveyard. Send a card from my hand to the graveyard, and send the selected monster card to the graveyard. Special summon to the field. Resurrection. Diamond Dragon in my graveyard. Fortunately, it didn't take long for Guru's Hunter 2, who looked crazy and fanatical, to cooperate and activate the effect of the God of Creation, resurrecting a long dragon made of bright diamonds from the cemetery. The effect of the God of Creation is no different from what Anji Kuen recalled in his memory. It is indeed an effect like pulling monsters from the graveyard. Diamond Dragon slash 7 stars light dragon family slash attack, 2100 slash defense, 2800 slash introduction a dragon whose whole body is made of diamonds. Its dazzling light can confuse the enemy. How about it? This is the power of the god of creation. The power of a god that can easily resurrect life. After activating the effect, Grus Hunter 2 still boasted excitedly to Grus Hunter 1 and Anji Kuen about the powerful god of creation on his field. Well done. Man. I didn't expect you to have such a powerful card secret. Well, yes, yes, it is indeed a pretty powerful card secret. Compared to Guru's Hunter 1's sincere words that were full of admiration, Anji Kuen was more perfunctory, talking expressionlessly. Ha ha ha. My round is over. Next. It's your turn. Enjoy your last time. Because in the next round. You will be completely defeated by my Kami. My Kami is invincible the presence. Grus Hunter 2 ended his turn directly. It may be because Kami was present and he felt that he was invincible, so when Grus Hunter 2 ended his turn, he did not even cover a backfield card. Then. It's my turn, draw a card. Looking at the three monsters standing on the field of the two Grus Hunters opposite, Anji Kuen drew two cards from the deck without any panic. The two Guru's brothers opposite us should be considered two versus one, right? Just after drawing the card, and Shiba suddenly asked an unreasonable question to Guru's on the opposite side. Of course. Guru's Hunter 1 nodded first. Then I should have the right to enter the combat stage and fight this round. Anji Kuen continued. Yes. This time, it was Grus Hunter 2 who nodded in affirmation. Do you still want to fight to the death? Do you really think you can defeat the powerful Kami on my field? What a joke. Then just feel free to struggle. 
Guru's hunter too said disapprovingly, he was not worried at all that Anji Kuan could fight back in such a desperate situation, and then kill the kami on his field forcefully. Turn defeat into victory. Oh, okay, thank you for your answers. Anji Kuan ignored Guru's hunter too's provocation, looked down at his hand card again, and began to prepare for his own operation. Anyway, his ultimate goal has been achieved, and he has learned that he can enter the battle level this round. In other words, if you operate it properly, you can kill two Guru's hunters in one round. And Anji Kuan, who is well aware of the power of his predatory plant deck, is 80% confident that he can achieve the feat of killing two Gruss hunters in one round. Then. It's time to start accelerating. I activate the magic card in my hand first. Angel's Alms. Through the effect of this card, I can draw three cards from the deck, and then discard two cards from my hand. Card. After muttering the classic second sentence of a certain priest who drank pure oxygen, Anji Kuan first activated one of the forbidden cards from his hand, Angel's Alms. Yes, sure enough, everything is inevitable for a true duelist. I choose to discard the monster predatory plant Glandular Grass Wasp and the permanent trap card Predatory Planet in my hand. Looking at the cards drawn through the Angel's Charity in his hand, Anji Kuan almost laughed out loud, because the cards drawn this time were so useful. The effect of the Glandular Wasp is activated. It can only be activated when this card is sent to the graveyard. I can add one predatory plant monster other than the predatory plant Glandular Wasp from the deck to my hand. I will the predatory plant be Orchid Scorpion is added to the hand card. Through the effect of Glandular Grass Wasp, Anji Kuan retrieved a bee Orchid Scorpion from his deck. I normally summon the Bee Orchid Scorpion. The Bee Orchid Scorpion's effect activates. Discard the predatory plant Sundew Lizard in my hand, and special summon the predatory plant Fongtooth Pagoda Flower in my deck. Following Inji Jun's operations, the Bee Orchid Scorpion that was often summoned by Inji Jun appeared on the field again. Along with the Bee Orchid Scorpion, there was also a Bee Orchid Scorpion whose whole body was covered with eyeballs and a big mouth. Exotic Plant, the Fongtooth Stupa Flower. Predator Plant B Orchid Scorpion slash 3 stars Dark, Plant Type slash Attack, 1200 slash Defense, 800 slash Effect, when this card is summoned or special summoned successfully, it can only be activated by sending one monster from your hand to the graveyard. Special Summon 1 Predatory Plant Monster from the deck except Predatory Plant B Orchid Scorpion. Predatory plant fanged fish pagoda flower slash six stars dark plant family slash attack 2000 slash defense 100. Predating plants. X2. The predatory plants appeared, and the two grus hunters immediately let out exclamations that they had never seen before. This is a card I have never seen before. But. It has an attack power of 2000. It must be a very rare card. I must get it. My path to promotion and fortune. Depends on you. After exclaiming, the Gruss hunter looked at Anji Kuan with aggressive eyes. Or rather, the predatory plant monster on Anji Kuan's field. They are bound to win the predatory plant deck. Chapter, 41. I activate the effect of the continuous trap card catching planet in the graveyard. I can banish this card from the graveyard. Send the fusion material monster determined by the fusion monster card from my hand or field to the graveyard, and send that one fusion monsters are summoned from the extra deck. I fuse the two plant predating monsters I have on my field, the bee orchid scorpion and the fanged fish pagoda flower, as fusion materials. The corners of Anji Kuan's mouth raised slightly. He had sent the predator planet to the cemetery just for this moment. Even if he didn't have a fusion card in his hand, he could still fuse it. The fusion condition is two predatory plant monsters. The evil seeds that have appeared since ancient times. Provided ferocious and greedy beasts. Now. Reveal your majestic body from that petal hell. Fusion summon. Got it. Level 5. Plant eating pineapple insect eating wandering whale. The fused vortex appeared on the field as usual and the figures of the two predatory monsters were constantly intertwined in the fused vortex. Soon, a giant beast with a huge carnivorous pineapple plant on its back emerged from the fused vortex. 
showing his grandeur. Predatory plant pineapple insect eating grain spirit wandering whale slash level 5 slash dark plant family slash attack power, 1000 slash defense power, 2500 slash comments from the author, this name is really long. Is it actually a fusion? But the attack power of this fusion monster is only 1000? Ha 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 ha. What kind of weak monster did you summon? Guru's Hunter 1 was worried at first that Anji Kuen would fuse some powerful monsters, but after seeing the monster that Anji Kuen fused with only 1000 attack power, he immediately put aside all his previous worries and began to be ruthless. Lord Anji laughed at him. Don't you know the truth? The lower the attack power of a monster, the harder it will hit people. Especially those monsters with zero attack and defense, they are basically monsters. In response to the ridicule of the Gruss hunters, Anji Kuen just turned away helplessly and murmured words that the two Gruss hunters could not understand. The effects of pineapple insect eating grain spirit wandering whale and fanged fish pagoda flower are activated. The first is the effect of the toothfish pagoda flower. This card can only be activated and it is sent from the field to the graveyard. I can place one prey counter on each of the face up monsters on the opponent's field. Hell Highway Patrol slash Prey Indicator, 1 quarter star 1 star. Creation God slash Prey Indicator, 1 eight star 1 star. Diamond Dragon slash Prey Indicator, 1 out of 7 star 1 star. Then there is the effect of the Pineapple Insect Eating Grain Spirit Wandering Whale. This card can only be activated when the fusion summon is successful. I can add one prey plant monster or one prey magic or trap card from my deck to add the card to my hand, I chose to add the magic card predator activity in the deck to my hand. Through the effects of the two monsters, and Shiba not only put a prey counter on all the monsters on the opponent's field, but also retrieved a magic card from the deck. The effect of the glandular grass wasp in the graveyard can only be activated when there are prey counters placed on the opponent's field. This card in the graveyard can be specially summoned to the field. Predating plant glandular grass wasp slash one star slash dark slash plant family slash attack power, zero slash defense power, 1900. Another miscellaneous fish monster. I really don't know what you are going to do by summoning so many weak monsters. The Gruss Hunter once again let out a ruthless laugh. You'll find out later. The highlight is here. The effect of the pineapple insect eating corn spirit wandering whale is activated. I can activate it by targeting a monster on the opponent's field that has a prey counter placed on it. Liberate that monster, and from my deck special summons a predatory plant monster. I release the Hell Highway Patrol on your field. Special summon the predatory plant Nepenthes Pterosaur in my deck. Anji Kuen stretched out his finger and pointed at the Hell Highway Patrol on Gruss Hunter 1's field, and gestured to the Bromeliad insect eating corn spirit wandering whale on his own field. The understanding pineapple insect eating grain spirit wandering whale also immediately let out a fierce roar towards the Hell Highway Patrolman on the Gruss Hunter 1 field, and with this roar, the predator indicator on the Hell Highway Patrol responded immediately. Start working harder to absorb the power from your host's body so that you can thrive. In a short time, the extremely hard-working prey indicator grew to the size of a football through the water, energy, etc. In the Hell Highway Patrolman's body. In the end, the Hell Highway Patrolman was directly sucked into a human body, and he fell upright together with his motorcycle. On the ground. And the predator indicator that grew to the size of a football also jumped onto Anji Kuen's field. As soon as the shell came off, a fat pterosaur like pitcher plant monster appeared. Appeared on Anji Kuen's field. Predatory plant Nepenthes pterosaur slash three stars slash dark attribute slash plant family slash attack power, 300 slash defense power, 2100. I actually used my Hell Highway Patrol as a sacrifice to summon a monster with an attack power of only 300. What is the use of this weak monster? Guru's Hunter 1 mocked Anji Kuen mercilessly like Guru's Hunter 2 before him, and Anji Kuen also did not argue with the other party as always. You'll find out later what this weak monster can do. The effect of the predatory plant Nepenthes Pterosaur is activated. Once per turn, I can activate it by targeting one monster on the opponent's field that is lower than the level of this card. I can gain control of that monster. 
What? You can actually gain control of the monster. Hearing Anji Kuen's next words, Grus Hunter 2 instantly stopped his taunting words and exclaimed loudly in disbelief. Teammate, don't panic. The level of Nepenthes Pterosaur is only 3 stars. And the two monsters on your field have levels as high as 7 stars and 8 stars. No matter which monster is higher than that monster. Guru's Hunter 1 immediately comforted his teammates beside him and told them not to panic. He had just glanced at the dual disc. On the dual disc, Anjikuen's pitcher plant wing named Nepenthes was clearly displayed. The dragon monster's star rating is only 3 stars. Well, please take a closer look at the levels of the two monsters on your field. Lord Anji thought he was very kind and gave the two Gruss hunters a little reminder. X2 After hearing this, the two Gruss hunters slowly looked at the data displayed on their dual discs with a very ominous premonition. Diamond Dragon slash 1 star. Creation God slash 1 star. Your card secret. My Carmel and Diamond Dragon. Why did the star rating suddenly become one star? X2. The two Gruss hunters screamed hysterically. They really couldn't believe what they were seeing. M, it seems I forgot to mention it. Predation counters are more than just decorations. The level of monsters contaminated by the predation counters will automatically change to one star. Anjikuen scratched his hair and told the real reason why the monster star rating changed with a smile on his face. Chapter, 42 So. Come to my field, God of Creation. Saying this, Anjikuen also raised his fingers at the God of Creation standing on the Gruss Hunter 2 field. Although the God of Creation does not have the attribute of God like the three illusory gods, the monster's name does have the word God in it, so its B-level must be higher than that of ordinary monsters. But under the influence of the regular effect of Nepenthes pterosaurs, the god of creation only struggled a few times symbolically, and then walked slowly to Anjikuen's field without looking back. Kami. Why did you leave me? My Kami. As soon as the god of creation left the scene, Gross Hunter too immediately cried for his father and mother, with a look of grief on his face. People who don't know the hidden meaning may really think that something happened to his family. However, there is one thing to say, the appearance of Gruss Hunter 2 is strangely consistent with the setting that the people in the Gruss group are not very normal. M, um, I'd better get on with my business. I activate the magic card in my hand. Anji Kuen selectively ignored the crying Gruss Hunter 2 and continued his operations. This round, he had to find a way to kill the two Gruss Hunters in one round. The task is very heavy. For fusion, I choose to fuse the Glandularia wasps and Nepenthes pterosaurs on my field as fusion materials. The fusion condition is two dark monsters. The two bewitching flowers that lure insects with their fragrance are now fused together. A new threat will be born from the hell deep in the petals. Fusion Summon Yidakuyo Full of the deadly and dangerous ferocious poisonous dragon. LV-8 the Ferocious and Poisonous Fusion Dragon. Anji Kuen slammed the fusion magic card in his hand onto his dual disc. In an instant, the large whirlpool symbolizing fusion descended on the field again. As the figures of the two monsters continued to blend together in the whirlpool, a ferocious dragon with horns roared and appeared in front of Lord Anji. On the field. Hungry Poison Fusion Dragon slash 8 stars slash dark slash dragon slash attack power, 2800 slash defense power, 2000. The effect of the Hungry Poison Fusion Dragon is activated. This card can only be activated when the fusion summon is successful. I can select one specially summoned monster on the opponent's field. The Hungry Poison Fusion Dragon's attack power will increase until the end of the round. The monster's attack power value. The monster I want to select as the target is naturally the diamond dragon you have on the field that was specially summoned to the field through the effect of the god of creation. Come on. Hungry poison fusion dragon. Absorb nutrients. Grow strong. Lord Anji shouted loudly towards the hungry poison fusion dragon. After hearing the words of his operator, the hungry poison fusion dragon immediately launched the two external armors behind him towards the diamond dragon. 
During the flight, the external armors revealed the sharp points that they had been hiding. With sharp teeth, he then opened his bloody mouth and bit down hard on the diamond dragon's dazzling body made of diamonds, and began to greedily suck up the energy in the diamond dragon's body. Moreover, every time the ferocious hungry poison fusion dragon absorbs a bit of energy from the diamond dragon's body, its body will grow larger, and the diamond dragon's dazzling figure will become dimmed as a result. Don't ask me why the hungry poison fusion dragon can absorb the nutrients and energy from diamonds by biting them, because. I don't know why the hungry poison fusion dragon can do this. The diamond dragon's attack power is 2100. That is to say. The hungry poison fusion dragon's attack power will increase by 2100 points of the diamond dragon's attack power. It will reach 4900 points. As soon as Anji Kuen finished speaking, the hungry poison fusion dragon on the field, which was absorbing the energy from the diamond dragon's body, was almost full, so he stopped continuing to absorb it and retracted the two external weapons he had extended. Armor At this time, the body of the hungry poison fusion dragon is already a generation larger than its original size. As for the diamond dragon on the field in Gorilla's Hunter 2, it no longer emits light, the entire dragon is extremely dim, and there are even cracks on the surface. Presumably the diamond dragon cannot squeeze out a drop. Hungry Poison Fusion Dragon Slash Attack Power, 2800 Attack Power 4900 X2 The two Gruss Hunters looked dumbfounded when they saw the Hungry Poison Fusion Dragon Queen with an attack power of nearly 5000. They had never seen a monster with such a high attack power. You think this is the end? No, no, no. You are wrong, I still have a lot of things to show you. Next, the magic card predator activity in your hand is activated. After improving the effect of Hungry Poison Fusion Dragon, Anji Kuen activated the magic card predatory activity from the card in his hand that he had just retrieved through the effect of Pineapple Insect Eating Grain Spirit Wandering Whale. The effect of this card is that I can special summon one prey plant monster from my hand. After special summoning the monster, I can also add one prey card other than predation event from the deck to my hand. Card I special summon the monster in my hand to prey on the plant Saracenia ants, and then retrieve the trap card preying plan in the deck. At Anji Kuen summons, an ant monster with a Saracenia plant on its back appeared on the field. Predating plant Saracenia ant slash one star dark plant family slash attack, 100 slash defense, 600. Then the God of Creation. The effect of God of Creation is activated. You actually activated the effect of my card. Why? I feel like my heart hurts. His monster was bullied by the opponent and its effects were used. Gruss Hunter 2 suddenly felt a very difficult feeling of myocardial infarction. Maybe you have myocardial infarction. After the injection, remember to go to the hospital to see the cardiology department. Ah. Uh. After you finish the cardiology department, remember to go to the psychiatry department. Dr. Zhang in the psychiatry department is very skilled. Mr. Anji looked after the Gruss Hunter 2 opposite him in a very friendly manner. He was definitely not being petty to avenge his previous ridicule. The effect of the God of Creation. Select a monster card in your own graveyard, send a card from your hand to the graveyard, and the selected monster card is special summoned from the graveyard to the field. I discard the predatory plan in my hand and special summon the predatory plant in my graveyard, the Drosser Parasol, to the field. Although it was not his own monster, Anji Kuen was quite skillful in using it. He directly specially summoned the Drosser Lizard from his graveyard to his field. Prey plant sundew lizard slash two stars dark plant type slash attack, 600 slash defense, 200 slash effect, as long as this card exists in the monster area. You must place it as a fusion material with a predator counter the monster's attributes are treated as dark attributes. Chapter, 43. The effect of sundew fly lizard is activated. During the main phase, I can select the fusion material monsters including this card on the field, which are determined by the Dark Fusion Monster card, from my hand. Field, and the monsters with predation counters on the opponent's field and send them to the graveyard, and then fusion summon that fusion monster from the extra deck. 
In other words, the diamond dragon with a predation counter on your field. It will also become the material for my fusion. And Jijun slowly said the effect of Sundew Fly Lizard. In simple terms, the effect of Sundew Fly Lizard can be completely understood as an alternative Albus monster. Well then. Let's start. I will use the Drosra Lizard, the Pitcher Ant and the Diamond Dragon on your field as fusion materials. The fusion conditions are three dark attribute monsters. The flower of the end of the world born from the hell deep in the petals. Now, wake up from the dark underground. Prey on everything in front of you as you please. Destroy everything in front of you. Make this world a mess. Fusion summon. Got it. Prey on the plant spike vine three-pointed prison flower god. The huge three-headed dragon monster slowly flew out of the fusion vortex under the extremely high summoning words of Njijun and came to Njijun's field. Predatory plant spike vine trident flower god slash nine stars slash dark slash plant slash attack, 3000 slash defense, 3000. My diamond dragon. Is gone. I don't have a single monster on the field. I'm counting on you. Teammate. With your two covered cards, we can definitely survive this turn. Gula's hunter too didn't have time to feel sorry for his diamond dragon, which had become the fusion material of the fusion monster summoned by Ansigen, and immediately looked at Guru's hunter one beside him for help. He didn't have a single monster or card left on the field. In other words, as long as Ansigen commanded the monsters on his field to attack him. Then. He would definitely die. Don't worry. I have a trap card in my backfield that can directly end the battle phase, attack disable. And super Leah card. Explosion armor. We can definitely block the opponent's attack. Noticing the look of help from Guru's Hunter 2, Guru's Hunter 1 immediately comforted his companion in a voice that only the two of them could hear. And. I still have a magic card black hole in my hand. As long as we survive until the next round. The opponent will definitely die. That being said, Guru's Hunter 1 actually had some doubts about whether he could hold on to this wave he was too low-key. For some reason, he always felt that things would not end so easily. Then I'll leave it to you. Teammate. Hearing this, Guru's Hunter 2 immediately breathed a sigh of relief, and turned to look at Njijun with a very proud look. The effect of the pitcher plant ant that was just sent to the graveyard is activated. This card on the field can only be activated when it is sent to the graveyard by an effect. I can add one predator card other than predator plant pitcher ant from the deck to my hand, and I will fuse the predator tyrant into my hand. And Jijun silently left a foreshadowing for his next operation of killing two gurus hunters in one turn. Then. The effect of the trap card predator plan in the graveyard is activated. When this card exists in the graveyard, if you successfully perform a fusion summon on a dark attribute monster, you can exclude this card in the graveyard and activate it with one card on the field as the target. Destroy that card. I destroy a card in your backfield. And Jijun stretched out his finger and casually pointed at a card in the backfield of Guru's Hunter 1. The thick green vines instantly rose from the ground, and the vines shattered the cards in the backfield of Guru's Hunter 1 with a flick of the vines. The covered card also showed its true face at the moment of being destroyed, attack weakness. My attack is disabled. Damn. At this point, Gullus Hunter 1 finally reacted and felt that this matter seemed a little different from what he imagined. I almost forgot to say that the attack power of predatory plant spike vine trident flower god will increase by the total value of the original attack power of monsters with predation counters on the field other than this card. Predatory Plant Spike Vine Trident Flower God Slash Attack Power, 30005300. Next, enter the battle phase. Hungry Poison Fusion Dragon Attack. The Gullus Hunter on the far left. Hungry Poison Predation. And Jijun directly entered the battle phase and directly selected Gullus Hunter 2 on the left as the first battle target. Teammate save me. Seeing the bad situation, Gullus Hunter 2 immediately called for help from his teammates, hoping that his teammates could activate the explosive armor in the backfield to save him. But the truth is. Impossible. 
If it is activated, I will be the one who dies. Guru's hunter one changed his face in an instant, and did not choose to turn over to save his teammates, because he knew that if he activated the explosive armor to destroy the fierce hungry poison fusion dragon at this time. Then the opponent would definitely command the monster with an attack power of 5300 points to attack him. Once 5300 points are hit, he will definitely die. So he absolutely cannot turn over to save people at this time. Moreover, as long as he can successfully defend the monster with an attack power of 5300 points by exploding the armor next time. All that's left is the 2300 points of damage from the god of creation. I can still survive with my 3000 base points. Anjikuan is a pineapple insect eating corn spirit wandering whale summoned in defense position. Damn it. You did it. You did it. I curse you. I curse you. After hearing this, Gruss Hunter 2 immediately wanted to curse the filthiest words in history at Gruss Hunter 1, but just in the middle of his words, the attack of the hungry poison fusion dragon arrived. The external armor with fangs spread out mercilessly hit the Guru's Hunter 2, instantly knocking him into the wall behind him, and then the Guru's Hunter was directly helpless. Crumbled to the ground. Guru's Hunter 2 LP, 40000. The first Guru's. Solve. Next. Let the three pointed hell flower god of Sui Yi Ting launch a direct attack on that Gruss Hunter. This time, choose the Z move of this series. Let the gorgeous flowers bloom. Don't even think about it. The covered trap card activates. Explode the armor. Just when the three pointed hell flower god of Sui Yi Ting cooperated very well to prepare a wave of moves that met the user's requirements and then attacked. Guru's Hunter 1, who saw something bad, immediately opened up his backcourt, and again it's the explosive armor that can't kill anyone. It actually exploded the armor again. It's pretty good, right? Looking at the last covered card on the opposite side, Anji Kuen was slightly stunned for a moment, but he quickly reacted and silently placed a magic card in his hand in the magic trap card area of the dual disc. Guru's. There is only one reason for your failure. That is. You used explosive armor that can't kill anyone. Quick attack magic card. The predator fusion treasure is activated. It can only be activated when there is a predator plant monster on the field. Choose the dark fusion monster card from your own field or your opponent's field, including two dark attribute monsters on your own field. Send the fusion material monsters including the above to the graveyard, and fuse the one fusion monster from the extra deck. I fuse the Hungry Poison Fusion Dragon, Pineapple Insect Eating Grain Spirit Wandering Whale, and Arrowleaf Vine Three-Pointed Hell Flower God on my field as fusion materials. Anyway, it has been summoned once, so there will be no more summoning lines. Reappear. Come back to my field. The Three-Pointed Hell Flower God of the Predating Plant Spike Leaf Vine. On the field, just when the three-pointed hell flower god of Sui Yi Teng was about to violate the law of explosive armor and was about to be blown to death. A purple fusion vortex appeared, directly sucking all three behemoths on the field into the vortex. As the figures of the three monsters in the whirlpool continued to intertwine, they were almost the same as before. The predatory plant, Early Fine, and three-pointed hell flower god appeared on the field again, and the perfect gem exploded so that no one could be killed. The Law of Armor Predatory Plant Spike Leaf Vine Three-Pointed Hell Flower God Slash Nine Stars Slash Dark Slash Plant Type Slash Attack Power 3500 Slash Defense Power 3000 Slash Effect The Attack Power of this card increases. There are other cards on the field other than this card. The total value of the original attack power of the monster with the prey counter placed on it. Next, let's continue the attack. The three-pointed hell flower god of Sui Yi Veng. The gorgeous flowers are in full bloom. As Anji Kuen shouted out the same move a name that was copied from an unknown anime, a dazzling bright light struck, followed by intense pain. The scene in front of Guru's Hunter 1 gradually turned into pitch black. Chapter, 44. Phew, Shu Chang. I hit two people with 7,000 blood in one round. As expected of me. Anji Kuen said with a proud face. 
This was the first time since he came to this dual city that he had performed such a soul-stirring operation. As the saying goes, a game of soul makes the whole day happy, and the happiness of soul players is so simple. Next, it's time to collect my spoils. Lord Anji slowly walked towards the two Guru's hunters who fell to the ground, preparing to take some of the trophies he deserved from their hands. But just when Anji Kuen walked up to the two fallen Gruss hunters and was about to start touching the corpses, something strange happened. The two Gruss hunters who had fallen to the ground actually stood up straight from the ground like zombies. At the same time, along with a dazzling golden light, a pattern of eyes also appeared on the foreheads of the two Guru's hunters. Eye of Horus. A three-year-old is here. Anji Kuen recognized that pattern at a glance as the famous Eye of Horus. The appearance of the Eye of Horus on the forehead of the Guru hunters also shows that Malik, the mastermind behind the Guru group, has controlled two Guru hunters through the Millennium Scepter, one of the thousand-year artifacts. Who are you? Why do you want to hinder our Guru's group again and again? Guru's hunter one twisted his body strangely and asked Anji Kuen. Hey, this is the fifth time someone has asked me this question about death. Am I just an ordinary duelist passing by? Anji Kuen wiped his nose and answered the question raised by the three-year-old Malik. Passing by? Not necessarily. I'm afraid you have been eyeing our Guru's group for a long time, right? Malik continued to use the power of the Millennium Scepter and continued to communicate with Lord Anji through Guru's Hunter. It would be fine if it was just the Gruss Hunters who accidentally found each other and were defeated. After all, their group of useless, ineffective, and easily ruined subordinates provoked each other, and then being beaten to death by the other party is a reasonable thing. However, today's Anji Kuen can no longer be said to be a mere chance encounter. Anji Kuen is clearly looking for the Guru's hunter for a duel with a clear purpose. Although I don't know your true identity yet. But it doesn't mean that our Guru's group will never know your true identity. As long as you dare to continue to fight against our Guru's group. Then our Guru's group will eventually find out your true identity. And then let you remember the fear of being controlled by the Guru's group. Malik threatened Anji Kuen with a threatening tone. Ah, I'm so scared. I'm so scared that I'm about to cry. What should I do? Should I kneel down and apologize immediately? Anji Jun read it with an expressionless face. Even if the three-year-old Malik threatened him no matter how much he threatened him, he would not panic at all. Instead, he would like to laugh. Humph. You are not a flattering guy. Then just wait for me. Wait until you are caught by our guru's group. Then you will step on your feet and be tortured continuously. Seeing Anji Kuen's unfazed expression, even wanting to laugh, the angry Malik could only choose to say another harsh word to him, and then directly cancelled the communication ability of the Thousand Year Scepter and left directly. As Malik left, the Eye of Horus pattern on the forehead of the Guru Hunters also disappeared. The two Guru Hunters continued to fall straight to the ground, smacking their heads on the ground, and made a sound. I know it's a good voice. I'm being targeted by a three-year-old, but that's okay. Maybe I can play with the winged divine dragon, but I don't know if I will get hacked if I use the winged divine dragon. Forget it, forget about those things for now. Let's talk about it later. Let's continue touching the corpse. Anji Kuen, who knew that Malik had left, shrugged helplessly, and then continued the corpse-touching operation that had not officially started before. The sinful hand slowly touched the black cloaks of the two Gruss hunters. After some time passed, Mr. Anji hummed a pleasant song and walked out of the black alley with his victory trophies at a leisurely pace. His harvest this time was quite good. Not only did he get powerful forbidden cards such as the mischievous demon twins from the two Guru's hunters, he also got two puzzle cards. The most important thing is. I also got a lot of small money. Now you can spend some time. Now the two puzzle cards he got from the Guru's Hunter plus the one he got from Ryazaki, Peacock Mai got two first, and the one he already had in his hand. Six just collected all the puzzle cards. Qualified to participate in the finals. Now that all the puzzle cards have been collected, Anji Kuen has no interest in dueling with others anymore, for no other reason than Anji Kuen's laziness. 
Since there's nothing else to do now, let's go find Yugi, Junuchi, and the others and watch their duel. With this in mind, Anji Kuen was ready to watch their duel in the game city and enjoy the show. In Anshiba Kuen's memory, the game seems to be played in the dual city of the original work with Guru using Lao E, Pandora, Malik's doll, Guru using Mask, and the castle controlled by Malik. Pass a duel. On the other hand, Junuchi had dueled with the super-powered Yuba who used artificial humans, the insect feather moth Nabi, the Yutai who rode a tiger shark, and Yugi. Now that they know the person they are dueling with, it will be much easier to find that person. For example, if you want to find Junuchi, you can just go to the aquarium where Yutai is. Okay. Then let's go to the aquarium for a walk. Just as he said, Anji Kuen immediately walked in the direction of the aquarium in his memory. Fortunately, Anji Kuen had already been familiar with this childlike wild city in his spare time, so he naturally knew the aquarium where Yute was. Which direction is the museum located in Tongshino City? Wait. What is this sound? While walking, Anji Kuen suddenly heard a very eye catching sound of a propeller turning, and this sound seemed to be coming from the sky. Ever since, Anji Kuen immediately followed the voice and looked towards the sky. I don't know if I can see it. Shocked at first sight. A helicopter happened to be flying over me. Is that? KC. The logo of the Kaiba group. And the sharp-eyed Anji Kuen also discovered the word KC on the fuselage of the helicopter, which is the logo of the Kaiba group. Anji Kuen who has been exposed to various products of the Kaiba group in the past few days, cannot possibly admit his mistake. Is it possible that the duel between Junuchi and Yugi is about to begin? An extremely terrifying thought suddenly appeared in Anji Kuen's mind. Chapter, 45 I didn't expect that this butterfly like me didn't change this thing. I still let this happen. I have to go to the dock to help them. Anji Kuen scratched his hair in distress. He really didn't expect this to happen so quickly. He originally planned to go to the aquarium to find Junuchi, but actually he wanted to change the plot of Junuchi, Kyoko, and the others being captured by Malik who was pretending to be Namu. It turned out to be good now, but it was too late, and there was no chance to change this not-so-good plot. As a time traveler, I was a bit embarrassed by the senior time travelers who also traveled to the world of Yu-Gi-Oh! But then again. The pier seems to be quite a distance from here. You have to get a means of transportation first, otherwise you will have to walk on your legs until you reach the end of the year of the monkey. Saying this to himself, Anji Kuen slowly looked at a child riding a bicycle not far away as if he was thoughtful. Sigh. The little money I got from the guru's hunter's wallet. Seems like it will be wasted. Lord Anji silently took out a bunch of small coins from his pocket that he had previously collected from two Guru's hunters, and sighed helplessly. Just when Anji Kuen successfully exchanged a bicycle from the child and rushed to Tongshai Pier, the helicopter that Yugi and his party were riding also successfully found Junuchi who was at the pier after a period of time. The roaring helicopter landed from the sky, causing ripples in the harbor. Yugi, Kaiba, and Kepiai stepped out of the helicopter one after another. In front of them, controlled by Malik's thousand-year scepter, was a blackened city exuding a murderous aura. I've really been waiting for you for a long time, Yugi. As the blackened Junichi spoke, he stared at the game in front of him with his extremely cold eyes. Junichi. Have you really been brainwashed? After seeing the ferocious-looking Junichi, Yugi, who was temporarily the master of controlling the body, secretly sighed that something was not right. Junichi, he had indeed been brainwashed by Malik. Junuchi looks like a completely different person. Kepi also expressed his emotions after seeing Junuchi who was brainwashed and controlled by Malik. The cold blackened city in front of us, exuding a chilling aura, is really hard to associate with the careless, rough and tumble god of gambling city in the past. Is this Malik's brainwashing? Seeing this, Kaiba couldn't help but mutter to himself. Junuchi, wake up quickly. The game first uses the voice calling method, hoping to wake up Junuchi who is brainwashed and controlled by Malik with the call full of strong friendship. Awake. I am very sober now. Sober enough to knock you down completely. 
But it is obvious that Yugi's voice calling method seems to be of no use to today's Junuchi. The corners of Junuchi's mouth began to rise slightly, and then he showed a terrifying smile and said to Yugi. No more. He has been completely controlled by Malik in the city. Yugi. You can't escape the duel with me. This is a duel where one person must die, and life and death are the bets. During the conversation, Junuchi immediately raised the dual disc on his arm and gestured to Yugi. Nissan. What is going on? Feeling that something was not quite right about the current situation, Kepi asked Sito Kaiba next to him. As a duelist, regardless of whether he is a companion or something else, as long as he stands in front of you, you must knock him down. This is the fate of a duelist. If you don't do this, you will not be able to move forward. The fate of a duelist. Regarding the very noble-sounding words from his Nissan mouth, Keihei had only a partial understanding and could only mutter to himself. The friendship and cooperation you always talked about seem to be unworkable now. This duel is your biggest test, Sa. Game. What exactly would you do? Let me see your answer. Kaiba looked at the two people confronting Yugi and Junuchi in front of him, and he understood that there must be a good show to watch next. Junuchi, listen to me first. I look forward to another fight with you in Duel City, but the premise is that we have both become real duelists. After that, we will have another real duel with each other's self-esteem at stake. I have always believed that the reason why we were able to win all the way was to keep that promise, but this duel was a trap designed by Malik. This was not the real duel we had promised. Wang Xiang's words were full of sincerity, and he once again tried to awaken Junuchi with his sincere words. But even so, Junuchi remained unmoved at all. Come with me, Yugi, the death duel arena is right there. Junuchi turned around silently and said gloomily to Wang Xiang. After saying that, Junuchi went to the so called death duel field without looking back. Within the city, just when Wang Xiang, who did not believe in evil, was about to speak out again to find a way to wake up Junuchi, Malik's voice came from behind. It's a useless game. No matter what you say, this duel cannot be avoided. Upon hearing this sound, everyone immediately turned their heads and headed towards the source of the sound. I saw a girl walking slowly from the stairs of the ship. The person who came was none other than Kyoko, who was controlled by Malik. Kyoko's eyes were dull. It was obvious that she had been controlled by Malik and completely lost her self-awareness. Kyoko. Yugi shouted in disbelief. Junuchi is my puppet, and he is being controlled by the hateful memories I have he 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 he. Has Kyoko been brainwashed by Malik too? Kyoko was also controlled, which Yugi didn't expect. At this time, Yugi's expression became increasingly ugly. Okay, Yugi. Come on, Junuchi is impatient to wait in the death duel arena. Kyoko, who was controlled by Malik, followed Junuchi at a slow pace and walked towards the death duel field with him. Seeing this, Yugi could only choose to follow Junuchi and Kyoko, while Kaiba and Makuba also chose to follow closely behind and go with Yugi. The death duel field is a rectangular field surrounded by rafts, and there is a bottomless lake in the middle and around the rectangular area, and directly above the field, there is a huge iron the anchor hangs. Is this the death duel field? Looking at the surrounding scene, Yugi said to himself. Chapter, 46 Before the duel begins, put on these shackles. Kyoko, who was controlled by brainwashing, spoke in Malik's voice, and threw two rusty shackles at Yugi and Junuchi. The shackles again. Junuchi was the first to cuff the leg cuffs on his legs, and Yugi also cuffed the leg cuffs with a look of helplessness on his face. Junuchi's and my shackles are both connected to the huge hanging anchor. Yugi, who was handcuffed, looked along the source of the chain connecting the shackles, and soon discovered the huge anchor hanging in the center of the dual arena. That's right. This anchor weighs 300 kilograms. When one player's health points return to zero, the anchor will detonate in 30 seconds and then sink to the bottom of the sea, so that the loser will sink into the depths of the sea. The bottom of the sea. Then, look at your feet. That box is connected to the opponent's health recorder. 
and inside the box is the key to unlocking the shackles. Only the person who returns the opponent's health to zero can get the box the key. In other words, only the winner can unlock the shackles within 30 seconds to avoid sinking into the bottom of the sea with the anchor. Malik began to explain the rules of this death duel to Yugi and others, that is to say, between Janucci and Yugi. One of them must be buried at the bottom of the sea because of the heavy anchor. What? There is no way I can engage in such a dangerous duel with Janucci. After hearing the cruel rules spoken by Malik, Yugi couldn't help but clenched his fists with anger. What Malik did this time was really despicable. But you have no way out. Kyoko, who had been selectively ignored by everyone, suddenly spoke at this time. Everyone immediately looked at Shinzi, not knowing the result. Shocked at first sight. At this time, Kyoko was actually sitting on a chair, and this chair also had handcuffs and leg cuffs, cuffing Kyoko's entire body to the chair. The explosive device connected to the anchor has been activated. Even if you stand there and do nothing for 40 minutes, it will still detonate automatically. In that case, you will be buried under the sea together. But, if you must save Cheng and Ei, it's not that difficult. As long as you lose. He 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 he. Malik continued to control Xingzi and spoke to everyone, using his strength to explain to everyone what it meant to be beaten. Malik. I will never forgive you. After Yugi heard Malik's words, the flames of anger in his heart couldn't help but grow stronger, and he gritted his teeth and said to Malik. Yugi is going to have a life and death battle with Janucci. He actually wanted them to engage in such a cruel duel. Malik wanted to avenge some stupid revenge from 3000 years ago. Really planning to kill the game. Hearing this, Kaiba Sido's eyes suddenly changed. From the previous joking expression, he became nervous. He panicked a little. Hurry up and stop them. Nissan. We can't let this duel continue. This can no longer be regarded as a duel. Kepi also began to remind his brother extremely anxiously and asked Sido Kaiba, the organizer of the game, to stop this death duel. I absolutely cannot accept such a duel. Let Malik do whatever he wants in this duel city. After a complicated inner struggle, Kaiba finally couldn't hold it any longer and immediately shouted loudly in Kyoko's direction. He wanted to use his rights as the organizer to stop this duel. But just when Kaiba finished speaking, a crane carrying a huge iron box suddenly drove out of the container with a huge roar, and drove straight to Kyoko, landing the huge iron box. The position was placed on top of Shinzi's head. Kyoko. Malik, what on earth are you going to do? Hearing the huge roar, Yugi immediately looked in the direction of Kyoko. After seeing the huge iron box parked above Kyoko's head, Yugi couldn't help but froze. Then, Yugi immediately turned his head and asked Malik loudly. You guys should take a closer look. There is also an explosive device installed on Kyoko's head, that is, on the huge iron box hung by the crane. What? Yugi, Kaiba and Keihei were shocked. Humph. If you dare to mess around. I will press this button. Detonate the huge iron box. Then this huge iron box will fall on this woman's head. A very cunning looking guru's hunter poked his head out of the cab of the crane, showing off the detonator button in his hand to the gamers with a proud face. How despicable can you be? Malik. This despicable move completely angered Haima, who immediately scolded Malik loudly. Kaiba, you better stay aside obediently. Don't hinder Yugi and Januchi's duel. Enjoy this wonderful death duel. Malik set this up to prevent Kaiba from intervening in the revenge battle he designed against the unknown pharaoh. By the way, it's rare to have such a wonderful duel, so this woman should also watch it. Ha ha ha. Saying this, Malik unblocked Kyoko's brainwashing with great interest and allowed Kyoko to return to normal. Yugi. Junuchi. Why am I here? Yugi. Junuchi. After Kyoko returned to normal, she couldn't help but turn pale in shock and cried out helplessly after seeing the miserable situation in which her hands and feet were now handcuffed. By the way, I almost forgot, Yugi, it doesn't matter if you are buried under the sea, 
but the sky dragon of Osiris cannot let you be taken to the bottom of the sea. You have to keep the sky dragon of Osiris. Okay. Let's take sky dragon of Osiris out of the deck. After Kyoko went offline, Malik took control of Junuchi again. He used Junuchi's body to speak to Yugi, asking Yugi to take Sky Dragon out of his deck. When the pharaoh dies, he dies. God's card one of the Sky Dragons of Osiris cannot just disappear like this. The God card is here. With a serious look on his face, Yugi took off the belt that stored the cards from his slim waist, and threw it directly to the ground aside. Whoever survives will get the God card. So. Let's start quickly. The Black and Junuchi continued to talk to Yugi. Having been brainwashed and controlled by Malik, he couldn't wait to obliterate Yugi. No solution anymore. Now the only option is a duel. A-I-B-O. I understand, then I'll leave it to you. Another me. We must wake up Junuchi. Wang Yang and Biao Yushi had another inner exchange. They were forced to have no choice but to challenge the city. Then. Let's have a showdown. Within the castle. Stop talking nonsense. Let's start shuffling the cards. Game LP, 4000. Junuchi LP, 4000. Chapter, 47. E game, it's up to you to attack first. Don't say I didn't give you a chance. The gloomy looking black Junuchi spoke first, nonchalantly giving Yugi the right to attack first in this round of the game. Yugi didn't speak, but silently drew a card from the deck. What should I do, how should I duel? Anyone whose health points return to zero must die. Such a cruel duel. Now the dilemma game has reached an impasse, and hesitation has begun. What's wrong? Yugi. Send out your monsters quickly. Junuchi looked at the hesitant Yugi and immediately spoke to urge Yugi. I summon. The Phantom Beast King in defense position. The round ends. Urged by Junuchi, Yugi first summoned the Phantom Beast King in defensive position on his own field, preparing to use defensive tactics for a period of time, and then think of ways to wake up Junuchi during this period. Fantasy Beast King slash 4 stars, Earth Orcs, Attack, 1500 slash Defense, 1200 slash Introduction, a beast that runs too fast and looks like a phantom. Black Castle smiled grimly, drew a card from the deck, and added it to his hand. Here it comes. I summon the Great Axe Raider from the card in my hand. And activate the magic card from my hand. Shield Break. Through the effect of this card, I can destroy a monster in defense position on your field. Destroy it for me. Phantom Beast King. Junichi first summoned the Noble Axe King on his own field and then activated the magic card shield breaker from his hand, directly destroying the chimera in defense position on the game field. Great Axe Raider slash 4 stars, Earth Warrior type slash attack power, 1700 slash defense power, 1150 slash introduction, an axe wielding warrior. The one-handed axe attack is quite powerful. The author complains, the noble axe with 1700 attack power. Then, Giant Axe Raider, launch a direct attack on the game. Under Junuchi's order, the Noble Axe immediately raised his axe and struck Yugi hard, quickly reducing a large amount of Yugi's base points. Well. Yugi couldn't help but groan in pain. Game LP, 4000-2300. Ha ha ha. How about it? Yugi. You're nothing special. But my terror doesn't stop there. Don't think you can escape by just defending. My turn is over. The Black and Junuchi laughed triumphantly, and then ended his turn directly. Then. My turn, draw a card. I summon the giant shield guardian in defense position. The turn is over. Yugi looked at the cards in his hand. Although he could summon two monsters, the Black Magician and the Black Magic Girl, in this round, thus reducing Junuchi's health to a very dangerous level. But, considering that this time the opponent was Junuchi, Yugi couldn't make up his mind to summon the Black Magician and the Black Magic Girl, and then launched an attack on Junuchi. He didn't dare to go all out. The game still chooses to stay first and end its turn directly. 
Giant Shield Guardian slash 4 stars, Earth Warrior type slash attack power, 100 slash defense power, 2600. My turn, draw cards. Game. You still choose to defend like a shrinking turtle. Escape. How ridiculous. After drawing a card from the deck, Junichi began to mock the game mercilessly. Next. Let you taste the power of this card. This card is coming to visit you. The magic card is activated. Fireball. Saying this, Junichi held up the card he had just drawn from the deck. In an instant, the card burst out with an intense red light, accompanied by a red current that shot straight into the sky from the card. Immediately afterwards, a huge fireball appeared in mid-air and hit hard. On the game. Ah. Yugi's body was directly surrounded by blazing flames, and Yugi felt that his body seemed to be burned by the flames and let out a wailing sound. Game LP, 32002700. Game. What? This tournament clearly prohibits the use of magic that can directly attack players. Why do such cards still appear in the deck in the city? Seeing this scene, Kaiba's eyes widened in an instant, and he shouted loudly in disbelief. At this moment, a drop of cold sweat slowly flowed down from Kaiba's forehead. Ha ha ha, the deck in the city has a lot of forbidden cards that Gurus has stopped. People with only ordinary cards in the deck will never win. It is also your wish to be killed by your friends. Hurry up and give it let me die. Hateful Pharaoh. In a very hidden place, Malik, who had been paying attention to the dual situation in Yugi through the power of the Millennium Scepter, began to murmur to himself. While Malik was talking like this, it was as if he suddenly remembered something very unbearable, and instantly showed an extremely ferocious and terrifying expression, and cursed the unknown Pharaoh very viciously. How's it going? What's your intuitive feeling about the forbidden magic card fireball that can directly attack the player? Ha ha ha. My turn is over. Let's continue the useless struggle. Game. The Black and Janucci once again taunted the game. Under Malik's control, Janucci's ferocious face looked so terrifying. Within the city. Yugi endured the pain caused by the magic card fireball, and looked at the Janucci that had become extremely strange to him with great sadness. Huh, go ahead and kill him. Kill Yugi. As a friend. Let's kill each other. Junuchi. The doll that has completely inherited my consciousness and memory of revenge. Ha ha ha. Feeling that it was not enough, Malik began to add fuel to the fire. A death duel with the unknown pharaoh as a friend would definitely be more interesting than an ordinary death duel. Malik can't wait to see what choice the nameless pharaoh will make. Will the unknown pharaoh choose to sacrifice himself with great righteousness to save his friends? Or will you choose to ruthlessly abandon your friends to save yourself? This is really exciting to think about. Thinking of this, Malik laughed even more wildly. I really don't want to duel, this is not the duel we expected at all, but I can only continue to duel. The game once again fell into a state of inner monologue. The duelist flame in Janucci must not be completely extinguished yet. I will definitely awaken your heart as a duelist in Janucci. Wait for me. Janucci. Thinking like this, Yugi's eyes were filled with determination again. Full of so called determination. He will definitely find a way to wake Janucci up. And he will definitely succeed in awakening the city. Yugi shouted, drawing a card from the deck. Chapter 48. But, what method should be used to wake up Janucci? Yugi looked at the several cards in his hand and fell into brief contemplation. There is only one giant axe attacker with an attack power of 1700 on the field in the city, and there is a giant shield guardian with a defense power of 2600 on my field. Although the giant shield guardian cannot defeat the giant axe attacker. But there is a skilled black magician in my hand who can defeat the giant axe attacker. Then, let's first summon skilled black magicians to destroy the giant axe attackers, and arrange a lineup of monsters that can suppress the city. I summon. A skilled black magician. Thinking like this, Yugi immediately summoned the skilled black magician in his hand to the field. The idea of the game is very simple. 
First summon the monsters that can suppress Janucci to ensure your own safety, and then think of ways to wake up Janucci who has been brainwashed and controlled by Malik. Skilled Black Magician slash 4 stars slash dark slash magician type slash attack power, 1900 slash defense power, 1700. Finally, I summoned a decent monster. I won't continue to be a turtle with a shrunken head. Game. Seeing the magician monster appearing on the game field, a ferocious smile suddenly appeared in the black city. I'm sorry. Junuchi. Skilled black magician. Attack the giant axe attacker. After quietly apologizing to Junuchi, Yugi was no longer confused and directly ordered the monsters on his field to attack Junuchi. The skilled black magician dressed in extremely mysterious clothes immediately raised the scepter in his hand. Silently reciting an unknown spell in his mouth, and launched an energy ball attack at the giant axe attacker on the field in the city. The launched energy ball attack quickly hit the giant axe attacker. With a loud explosion, the giant axe attacker was directly blown into particles of light that filled the sky. Junuchi LP, 4800. My turn is over. After commanding the skilled black magician to attack, the game ends its turn. My turn. Draw a card. Junuchi glanced at the card he had just drawn from the deck and immediately let out a wild laugh. Ha ha ha. I have drawn another forbidden card that can directly harm the player. Game. Feel the power of this card. Activate the magic card. Fiery hell. Junuchi smiled ferociously and directly placed the card in his hand into the magic trap card area of the dual plate. Through the effect of this card, the opponent will receive 1000 points of damage, and you will receive 500 points of damage. Fiery Hell is a standard card that damages the enemy by 1000 and damages itself by 800. Although it can cause the opponent to suffer up to 1000 points of health damage at one time, while inflicting health damage to the opponent, you will also receive backlash from the Fiery Hell. As this card was activated, Raging Fire suddenly burst out from under Junuchi and Yugi's feet, drowning the two of them in an instant. Ah! X2. The fire burned their bodies, causing them severe pain, causing Junuchi and Yugi to howl in pain. Game LP, 1800800. Junuchi LP, 3830300. The fire burned the two of them for almost tens of seconds before slowly dissipating. Ha ha ha. How about it, Yugi, such severe pain. The brainwashed black Junuchi was the first to recover from the pain. After showing a very ferocious and happy face, he slowly stood up from the ground and continued to taunt Yugi. Within the city. Yugi half knelt on the ground helplessly, looking at Junuchi with eyes full of bitterness. It was clear that Junuchi had experienced severe pain like himself, but under Malik's crazy control, he turned into a person who knew no pain and only knew revenge, a doll that has completely lost its humanity. It was very difficult for the game to stand up from the ground, but judging from the shaky body of the game, it is difficult not to worry that the game will suddenly fall. A skilled black magician effect. As long as this card exists in the monster zone, every time you or your opponent activates a magic card, you can place a magic counter on this card. Yugi held on to his weakness and activated the effect of the skilled black magician, placing a magic counter on it. Game. Stop doing those useless things. My deck has been greatly improved with banned cards. Even if I can't defeat your monster battle line in a short time. I can still bring you huge damage. And that boundless endless pain. Wait for me to completely wipe you out. I cover a monster card, next. It's your turn again. Game. Looking at the extremely weak Yugi, Junuchi's words were still full of sarcasm. Junuchi. As a duelist, do you really not feel the slightest pain in your heart? TCH, duelist's heart. Who knows those things? Junuchi. The pain I feel all over my body now does not come from the burning of that card, but from you who have lost the heart of a duelist. So. Wake up quickly. Within the city. Don't be bewitched by Malik anymore. Hearing this, Yugi couldn't help but clenched his fists, and then used the little strength he had just recovered to shout loudly towards the city. 
Ha ha ha, what you said is so touching, I was almost moved. But. There is absolutely no way you can restore Janucci to its original state. The memory of my revenge is implanted in the city. Now it is just a puppet that only obeys my orders. I will kill you. Malik, who was far away in another place, saw the scene of Yugi and Janucci's deep relationship through Janucci's perspective, and the corners of his mouth almost burst into laughter. Game. I will definitely kill you. Janucci was once again affected by Malik's dark power, and the darkness in his eyes became even deeper. This still can't wake up Janucci. Yugi sighed helplessly, and it turned out that he still couldn't wake up Janucci just by relying on this. Another me. Before the only hope comes, we must continue to fight back. If Janucci continues to be suppressed, even saving Janucci may become a luxury. At this moment, the thousand-year brick around Yu Yu's neck began to shine, and the voice of Yu Yu reached Wang Xiang's ears. I know, Ibwa. I will never let Janucci die here. Wang Yang slowly closed his eyes and began to communicate with Biao Yushi in his inner world. The other me. If you can. Please leave the next duel to me. Please let me have a duel with Janucci. I should be able to help you share half of the pain. Or rather. I want to help you share half of the pain. In his inner world, Biao Yushi, who had always been very upset, suddenly seemed to have made a decision and said to Wang Xiang with a very serious expression. Chapter, 49 Please. Another me. Please let me duel with Janucci. Before. The timid me asked Janucci to be my friend, but every time, Janucci protected me without hesitation. Every time, Janucci helped me through one difficulty after another. So. Let me do it this time. Let me help him. In the inner space, Pyo Yugi and Wang Yang stood face to face, staring at each other. Aibwa. But. This duel is too dangerous. Wang Yang looked at Pyo Yugi's extremely sincere eyes, and knew that Pyo Yugi must have made up his mind to save Janucci when he said this. But out of protection for Pyo Yugi, Wang Yang was reluctant to let Pyo Yugi wade into this muddy water and step into this extremely dangerous duel. I know. Another me. But. I remember you once said that I can have so many good friends not because of the power of the Millennium Blocks. But because of my own power. And I also want to be in this duel. Prove this one thing. Pyo Yugi's eyes were still as firm as ever. If. If I can really win back Janucci's heart. Then I can prove that I really did it with my own strength. I can also hold my head high and proudly say those two words that I care about so much. The word called friend. I understand. I will leave this duel to you, but. If I sense that your life is in danger, I will appear immediately. Yes. At this point, the wife protecting devil Wang Yang can only leave the next duel to Pyo Yugi. In the real world, along with the dazzling light emitted by the thousand-year-old building blocks that Yugi hung around his neck, Wang Yang went offline, and Pyo Yugi replaced Wang Yang and dominated this body. Junuchi. Next, let me be your opponent. Pyo Yugi went online, and the amazing momentum that was automatically generated by Wang Yang as the dominant personality also changed dramatically at this moment. Becoming harmless? What? That's Yugi as a container. Damn Pharaoh. He was replaced. Damn. The container is just a container. Even if the container is destroyed, if Pharaoh cannot be defeated, I still cannot complete my revenge. Malik, who was hiding in the dark, naturally felt that the opponent might have replaced Yugi through the change in Yugi's momentum. He instantly became like a young child and began to stomp his feet as if to vent. In that case, then Janucci, beat this container Yugi to death. In this way, Pharaoh will definitely not remain silent. Kill him. Kill the container, kill Yugi. And then force Pharaoh out for me. Malik raised the Millennium Scepter in his hand and began to convey orders to Janucci. And Janucci's eyes became more and more terrifying after receiving Malik's orders. It's my turn. Draw a card. The watch Yugi shouted softly and drew a card from the deck. 
I will activate the magic card from my hand first. Pot of Greed. Through the effect of this card, I can draw two cards from the deck. At the same time, the effect of the skilled black magician is activated. As long as this card exists in the monster zone, every time you or your opponent activates a magic card, you can place a magic counter on this card. The hideous pot of greed instantly appeared on the field of the table game, giving the table game the right to draw two cards from the deck. At the same time, the appearance of the pot of greed also increased the magic counter on the skilled black magician by one. Experienced black magician slash magic counter, one two. Are these two cards? Fusion and hand swap. Fusion. Allows beast king and baphomet to fuse and summon the winged beast chimera, but. I don't have beast king and baphomet in my hand right now. And swap. Allows one of my hand cards to be swapped with one of my opponent's hand cards. Looking at the two cards he drew through the effect of Pot of Greed, Yugi was slightly surprised. These two cards probably won't be the opportunity to wake up Chinuchi but, next, I only need to use another magic card to add another magic counter to the skilled Black Magician to summon the Black Magician sleeping in the deck. Thinking this way, Yugi was ready to use the hand swap of the magic card in his hand first, and randomly exchange a card from Jinuchi's hand. So as to stack the magic counter of the skilled black magician and summon the black magician to stand on the field. But just as Yugi was about to insert the hand swap in his hand into the magic and trap card placement area of the dual disc, Wang Yang's phantom suddenly appeared next to Yugi. Wait, Aibwa. Don't use that card yet. The sudden appearance of Wang Yang directly stopped Yugi from activating the magic card hand swap from his hand. What's wrong? Another me? Although Yugi was a little puzzled, his trust in his partner still made him temporarily stop activating the magic card. Aibwa, don't use that card yet. We only have 800 LP left now, so we must be careful, so don't rush to summon the black magician. Or choose to summon the elf in the card first swordsman. And. I don't know why. I always have a feeling. The exchange and fusion of these two cards will be a key opportunity for us to awaken the city. Wang Xiang said in a dazed manner, and he couldn't explain why he suddenly felt such a strange feeling. I understand, then I will summon the elf swordsman from the card in my hand to attack and summon. Yugi nodded, put the code exchange in his hand back into his hand card, and then placed the cannon fodder swordsman in his hand on the dual plate. Elf Swordsman slash 4 stars, Earth Warrior type slash attack, 1400 slash defense, 1200 slash introduction, an elf who has learned swordsmanship. Trick the enemy with quick attacks. The author complains, the elves who have learned swordsmanship will receive lunch at the speed of light every time they are summoned. Okay. Next comes the battle stage. Skilled Black Magician. Attack the covering cards in the castle. With a wave of his hand, Yugi directly ordered the skilled black magician on his field to launch an attack on Gaika in the city. The skilled black magician immediately fired a series of energy bombs at the unknown Gaika. The unknown Gaika was directly destroyed by a skilled black magician. An ugly monster with a big hole in its belly and only a huge mouth on its head emerged from the destroyed Gaika. And this monster, with a big hole in its belly blasted out by a skilled black magician, was bound to die. But just when this monster was about to turn into particles of light and scatter in the wind, this ugly monster suddenly burst out with very strong power and pounced directly on the elf swordsman on the game field. When he was on the verge of death, he bit off the cannon fodder swordsman's head and pulled the cannon fodder swordsman with him. Got into the water. Poor cannon fodder swordsman, he only appeared for less than 10 seconds and didn't even attack. He died miserably due to the monster's effect. It's so pitiful. Chapter, 50. Man-eating insect. Is this card actually added to Jinuchi's deck? Fortunately, I didn't choose to summon the black magician first. Otherwise, the black magician would be affected by the man-eating insect. And be destroyed. Watching the two monsters on the field slowly turning into light particles and disappearing, Oyo Yugi and Wang Xiang's expressions became a little ugly. Humph. Yugi, you are really lucky. You chose to let a skilled black magician launch the attack first. 
Black City smiled sinisterly. In order to avoid taking the 1,400 points of attack power directly from the cannon fodder swordsman, he deliberately let the man eating insects destroy the cannon fodder swordsman who had not yet launched an attack, instead of the on field attack power. The most skilled black magician. Juchi. I will definitely wake you up and end my turn. The look Yugi looked at Junuchi was filled with sadness, but soon, this feeling of sadness was suppressed by Yugi, and he returned to his determined look. Then it's my turn. Draw a card. Oh, it's not the card I need. Junuchi looked at the card he had just drawn from the deck and muttered with disdain. Forget it, just make do with it for now. I activate the magic card in my hand, scapegoat. Saying this, Junuchi immediately pulled a card from his hand and placed it in the magic card and trap card placement area of the dual plate. Through the effect of this card, I can summon four sheep tokens in defense position on my field. As soon as he finished speaking, four little sheep tokens in yellow, pink, blue and orange appeared out of thin air on the field inside the city. Sheep derivative slash one star slash land slash orc slash attack power, zero slash defense power, zero. A scapegoat. Looking at the four sheep tokens that appeared on the field in the city, Yugi couldn't help but a drop of cold sweat slowly flowed from his forehead. For sheep tokens mean that he must attack four times before he can attack the city protected by the sheep tokens. And it needs to attack four times. Even if the game can summon other monsters in the next turn, it can only destroy two sheep tokens at most. In addition, Junuchi may also summon monsters by himself. In other words, he has to take at least two rounds. Only then can we truly attack the city that is protected by numerous monsters. In these two rounds, Junuchi is also very likely to activate various forbidden cards that can directly attack himself. And now he only has 800 health points left, which he can only barely eat. The next magic card is Fireball's attack. If there are other forbidden cards. For example, the fiery hell that damages the enemy by 1000 and damages himself by 800. Then he will die. Undoubtedly. The other me. I'll be in trouble next time. Now the game can only pray that Junuchi will not draw any forbidden cards that can directly attack the player in these two rounds. Just when the ruthless duel between Yugi and Junuchi temporarily reached a stalemate. What is our protagonist and Shibakuen doing there? Next, let us first turn our attention to Anjikuen and see what happened to Anjikuen as he rushed to the dock in a taxi. The screen changed, and a yellow taxi was speeding through the streets of Tongshino City. Due to the start of the dual city competition, most roads were restricted by traffic, so the taxi Anjikuen was riding in could only choose to take a detour. Head to the dock. Driver, can't you go faster? I'm really in a hurry. Anji Kuen put his head into the front passenger seat and spoke anxiously to urge the driver who was driving. This was already the fifth time Anji Kuen urged the driver to drive faster. I know. I've stepped on the accelerator. I'm going all out. But after all, I'm just a taxi. No matter how fast I am, it can't be faster than those racing cars. So please don't stop. Keep pushing. It's already the fastest speed. You can't make this car go any faster. After hearing this, the driver responded very depressedly. I had come out happily to solicit customers, planning to have a good meal in the evening after soliciting customers, but who would have thought that I would attract an uninvited guest? Not to mention going to Tongshai Pier, which is a long way away, I kept urging myself along the way. He was so worried that he thought he could add more money if it wasn't for this uninvited guest. He won't pull this one, whoever wants to pull it will do it. Oh, I understand. I'm very sorry, I'm really in a hurry. I won't rush you anymore. Asked, Anji Kuen quickly apologized, then withdrew his head from the front row and sat back in his seat. He propped up his chin with one hand and stared blankly at the scenery outside the taxi that kept passing by because of the speed, and stopped making any reaction to urge the driver. Oh, you are so young now. But don't worry, we will arrive at Tongshai Pier in ten minutes at most. The driver looked through the rearview mirror, looking at Anji Kuen who finally became quiet, and breathed a sigh of relief. Um. 
Anji Kuan hummed slightly, and then fell into silence again, looking at the scenery outside the car window as if in a daze. On the surface, Anji Kuan seemed to be just in a daze, but in fact, Anji Kuan directly entered the inner space of the fusion gem. Fusion gem. Fusion gem. Anji Kuan walked in the inner space filled with darkness, unable to see the fusion gems, and began to call for the fusion gems continuously. Maybe it was because Lord Anji kept calling for the fusion gem. Not long after, a purple gem, the fusion gem, appeared out of thin air in front of Lord Anji. At the same time, with the appearance of the fusion gem, the dark surrounding environment immediately became extremely bright. I need your help. Fusion gem. Looking at the fusion gem that appeared in front of him out of thin air, Anji Kuen didn't think much and directly placed his hand gently on the fusion gem. I need the fusion gem. To give me the ability to block Malik's dark power. Or help me get rid of the dark power in Malik's control of the city. I want to help the city get rid of the control of the dark power. And I am 100% sure. I am sure that as one of the six gems, the fusion gem, you have the ability to resist or even eliminate the dark power of a six-year-old. After feeling the confusing message conveyed to him by the fusion gem, Anji Kuen immediately revealed the purpose of his visit. He needs the help of the fusion stone. Help him get rid of the dark forces that Malik controls in the city. Chapter 51 I know you may not understand why I asked you for help with the fusion gem. Obviously in the original work, Yugi and his team also relied on their own strength to help Junuchi get rid of the control of Malik's dark power and save within the city. Feeling the puzzling message from the fusion gem, Anji Kuen first smiled at himself, and then slowly told the reason why he did this. But after all, I am a butterfly that affects the direction of this world. I helped Junuchi from the beginning and changed the fate of Junuchi's true red-eyed black dragon being snatched away by the Guru's hunter. Also it made Sido Kaiba get a card that he could not have at this time due to the constraints of the world. And also made Dinosaur Riyazaki escape from the unbearable insect feather moth and help him avoiding a series of tragic experiences that may occur in the future. I have only been in this world for about a week, and so much has changed. I will definitely change more things in the future. Anji Kuen, who said a lot of words in one breath, paused, took a breath, and then continued. I'm not sure whether the game without the red-eyed black dragon, which symbolizes the friendship between Junuchi and Yugi, can successfully awaken Junuchi. Maybe. As the destined child of this world, Yugi can still awaken Junuchi even without the card red Ice black dragon. But after all, it's only a possibility. I can't be 100% sure that Yugi can really successfully awaken Junuchi. I really don't dare to bet on this wave I bet that my butterfly will not affect the game. This extremely tragic episode in the Awakening City. The butterfly effect is always something that is difficult to explain. Maybe, your intrusion really changed the occurrence of some tragic plots. But. There is a great possibility that there will be another a new tragedy occurs somewhere. I already regard the game and them as my only close relatives and friends in this world that is so strange to me. Although I only got along with them for a short period of about a week, in this short period of time, I felt their true friendship from the heart. That it's definitely hard to come across in reality. So. I don't want to sit there and wait for this episode to pass. I rush over in a hurry. I don't want to cause Yugi and Junuchi to experience other, heavier pain because of my butterfly flapping its wings. Because, I have regarded them as friends. Anji Kuen looked directly at the fusion gem suspended in mid-air in front of him with a serious look on his face. Coupled with the noble words coming from Anji Kuen's mouth. Anji Kuen's overall image instantly became taller. Phew. But soon. As Anji Kuen spoke the next words, the noble image that Anji Kuen had just established collapsed instantly. Ah. Uh, I'm really too sentimental. I really didn't expect such disgusting words to come out of my mouth. Ahem. In short. Please help me this time, Fusion Gem Boss. Please. I know you will definitely help me. Otherwise, why would you give me a powerful deck like Prey Plants in the first place? Please please help me again. 
Saying this, Anji Kuen simply lay down on top of the fusion gem, and began to ask for the fusion gem, regardless of how inconsistent it was with his young image. Nausea and numbness. Even the author himself can't stand it anymore, why the protagonist in his novel has such no sense of dignity. Perhaps because he was disgusted by his chosen host, Anji Kuen, the fusion gem immediately sent a large number of messages to Anji Kuen, and all of these messages revealed the same meaning, I will help you. Stop making me sick. I'm really going to vomit. Okay, I knew you would help me with the fusion gem. That's interesting. After getting the answer he needed from the fusion gem, Anji Kuen immediately left the fusion gem excitedly and stood upright beside him. Seeing that Anji Kuen no longer disgusted him, the fusion gem breathed a sigh of relief as if he had been saved, and then began to send different information to Anji Kuen. Ha! Huh. Are there any prerequisites? But! Even if there are prerequisites, it's not a big problem. Let me take a look. Anji Kuen closed his eyes and carefully felt the large amount of information sent to him by the fusion gem. Basically, this information is the prerequisites that you must meet when fusion gems help you. It is probably the fusion gems it printed a series of cards for itself last time, such as Ferocious Hungry Poison Fusion Dragon and so on. Finally, there is not much energy left. Although there is not much energy left, the fusion gem can still temporarily overdraw its own energy and give itself the ability to block the power of darkness in advance. But there are prerequisites for fusing gems you can't just overdraw the energy in vain. And the prerequisite is that you must obtain any one of the 7,000-year artifacts in the future, and then fuse that 1,000-year artifact. Gem For the fusion gem to absorb the power contained in the 1,000-year artifact. Then Then it's gone. The prerequisite for the fusion gem is to absorb the power of any one of the 7,000-year artifacts. There are no other requirements. Is it that simple? If you want a thousand-year-old artifact, can't I just grab Malik's thousand-year-old scepter and give it to you? Anyway, I will definitely have a good fight with the six-year-old next. Anji Kuen said with some surprise. He really didn't expect that the prerequisites for fusion gems were so simple. He only needed a thousand-year artifact. The fusion gem flashed several times very frequently, as if asking Ansigen whether he would agree to this condition. I agreed, then. It's up to you. Fusion Gem Lord Anji did not hesitate at all and nodded heavily. As soon as Mr. Anji finished speaking, the next second, Mr. Anji saw that the fusion gem suspended in mid-air was flashing faster and faster. The brightness of the flash also becomes higher and higher. Finally, accompanied by a burst of dazzling white light, Ansigen couldn't help but close his eyes. And when Ansigen opened his eyes again, he was very surprised to find that the surrounding scenery had changed. Not the inner space where the gems were integrated, but the scene of the taxi he got into. Did I actually come back here again? Anji Kuen glanced at the surrounding scene with some strangeness, and quickly came to the conclusion that this was the taxi he got into at the beginning. It seems that it was kicked out by the fusion gem. Saying this, Anji Kuen subconsciously stretched out his hand to scratch his hair, but in the process of stretching out his hand to scratch his hair, Anji Jun suddenly felt that something was wrong with him. Why does it feel like something is being worn around my neck? With this feeling, Anji Kuen tentatively touched his neck. Sure enough, he touched something like jewelry hanging around his neck. Sure enough, there is something. Let me see what it is. Anji Kuen stretched out his hand and groped behind his neck, and soon found an iron buckle that seemed to be a connection. After unbuckling the iron buckle, the jewelry hanging around his neck immediately fell off. Anji Kuen caught it with quick hands and eyes, and then slowly put it in front of his eyes and looked at it carefully. The result. You don't know it until you see it. Shocked at first sight. Anji Kuen was surprised to find the jewelry hanging around his neck. It's actually a shrunken fusion gem.